Spanish log ears, Blaze Master and the Mysterium of the Universe. The Prologue. Not knowing you're dead or alive what does it make you, who are you? When you don't know even these essential things what is the purpose of live that is not bound with time, who are you? These are only few questions I could ask myself, who am I? HMM True Ellie this is the one thing I don't remember when I was born what was my status, who were I? These were things I already forgotten, because what reason would I have to remember this? No and bound, that am already bound these little things, but it's alright to ask yourself yes it's okay, to pose such questions the eternal mega civilization is the place I'm, in right now and civilization, that is so unique and yet normal a big metropoly futuristic utopia, that crosses the entire galaxies yes it's a thumb set in space to think civilization would go. As that far to reach the stars was obviously not an auto don't ask me about a year don't give me such questions. This does not matter I'm immortal I won't age. An eternal darkness night without any day is how life in space looks like how can you live in space? Well obviously someone found out how to do it scientists these that like to waste their time to develop such mathematical concepts. They knew the formulas to make this a reality they knew how to approach these problems and turn it into our reality the reality that is my present day and the demon which means immortal the word demonos means that all thought in some third graded world demons are usually understood as being the soldiers of one of the hellish lords my world is called by them as the afterlife or the netherworld hmm well we know how to bring back dead for real that sure this is the world I live in cosmic metropoli, where immortals live a civilization of the highest technology known in the universe. The mega civilization what is it? It's an intergalactic metropoli and federation which is divided by THOW intergalactic states, also federations heaven and hell, that are at perpetual war called the eternal war the classic good versus evil battle short summary the heaven are the good guys the hell are the bad guys okay so we know that. It's simple isn't, or maybe it's not quite that simple you see people, and especially demons, or even angels, which actually are also demons according to our understanding of the word, demonos, from where demon comes well they have a tendency to go gray all of a sudden or change colors from white to black after all even here we exist in a world where society is present. We have media's politics, and all other things present in so called modernized worlds and boy isn't that annoying. Now let me tell you how it looks from a perspective of an outcast yes that's a good word, why don't we keep it not just an outcast, but the one deemed by the society, as a monster a freak, as a very dangerous criminal insane maybe, but don't worry I won't kill you not, yet anyway how so why am I a criminal did I do something bad? HMM may be a but you don't need to do bad things to be cast out by the society sometimes standing up especially to the ones that hold or offer the end money a lot of it pressed at you yes it can actually make you a criminal that's how the world works of course I raped and killed and generally deserve that title I deserve to be a criminal. So that's who I am and definitely not a hero but sometimes evil can be beaten by something worse or sometimes it's the only way sometimes. It's how the world works. Atlas the one I live for witness after all I'm a monster to boot, but this too can have its advantages the ultimate freedom that it gives, but also the responsibility a man immortal judge that judges and decide, and sometimes by decisions can have consequences for an entire galaxy or planet especially if I decide to destroy it. So I need to take responsibility for every action and life I take that's what makes me special, but also kinda ordinary I look ordinary but am not ordinary however I won't allow anybody to recognize me unless it's all the part of a plan, or my game. Because life is all a game and illusion of perception we live in a world that is actually a game programmed by a very high entity be the ancient being we know and refer to as God the almighty philosopher or more exactly the source of everything we know the source to which I have access conveniently. I told you already that the world as we know is merely an illusion of Perseprian but did you understand what time and by it did you comprehend the full meaning of it we live in a world that is an interface in which we write our own stories we are the authors of each and every one life is a stage on which we play for our audience no more exactly spectator God is our spectator a witness to our will and desires and to our stories. I'm also a witness but I do not spectate I take part in some stories and sometimes rewrite it for my own convenience to make a mark in here I do exist that Blaze Master is here and exists so that others will know that someone called Blaze Master exists 
and lives that he is here everybody wants to be noticed to exist to be seen to be acknowledged in a structure we call society we all want to be labeled by this structure. I however like to be so I do label myself and label I created myself that's who I am the one I create is me of course the question is is this message being transmitted to others do others see me in the way I want them to see me do they see me in the exact way I want them to see me yes that's very important how successful am I in drawing this what I am do I do a good job do they understand what am I acknowledge accept so who am I I'm still asking myself this question because still all revolves around the image I make is because of who I am so who am I in walking now walking without moral purpose or real direction and moving forward everybody tells me and themselves how important it is to move forward you need to go forward or you'll be left behind is what they say move go go and hurry they say these things too so in moving forward yes that's what they say and say so in walking forward and observing others as they walk to somewhere they want to go it's an unending metropolis so there are unlimited possibilities where these people and demons want to go and they usually go there. People and demons they all differ and can be interesting some of them are angry some happy others are calm and there are some who cry they're different cause their lives are different these are all different stories that could be told and interpreted in different ways after all understanding and interpretation is the most important. It's dark, but there are many lights from different neons and banners advertisements HMM advertisement industry is bumming in the entire universe everyone has something they need to show the world and need to advertise us about it a cream and energy drink or others are just examples of it. Society is full of advertisers and advertisers whose main purpose is to advertise us and fill our heads with all that knowledge that we need to know in order to buy the right the best products so we will be sure our lives are were branded and what are brands by the way they are labels we pay others so we can be labeled in a way we like we drink we use what is labeled because of the same desire so in walking and going to where I'm not exactly sure there's no need to be sure I'm on a bridge of sorts but there is no water below just depths unlimited and ended I look into that deep to see how below many spacecrafts are going in their own way they go very fast with speed of lights. They became light and that's why they go so fast so fast to go there where they want to go but sometimes some don't make it they die cause of that speed. Yet they still do it in haste die quick life quick they're always hurrying and going of somewhere to schools fairs works and many other places they go in reality they do the same I do they go somewhere and hope to reach it but my question is where do they go? It's noisy because of that, because many things happen in the same space people and demons talk others advertise there was even a giant TV screen on one of the buildings, and the news reporter was just telling the news, the main body of the mega civilizationally senate meet today in order to discuss recent happenings on the planet Trayugnot, as we reported earlier its governing body was attacked by an unknown individual known only from using the name Blaze Master. The mega civilizationally senate has expressed its condolences for the victims of that tragedy and have condemned the actions of this unknown individual who is the world's best known and yet unknown criminal. There are no sources or photographs that exist of him despite how highly advanced and digitally his world blaze master was able to hide from any such detection it is an own fact that he does not swear any allergy and to any magi or terrorist or criminal organization and is thought to work alone who is he, why he does that is the questions that fill the head of every citizen of our world. Blaze Master is an ancient demon that has committed all known offenses and is considered highly dangerous and armed despite this there is no image or description that we could issue not many of his victims do speak up and almost none can remember or recall him this yet proved how horrible and hideous he must be. The TV attacked me despite the fact they knew nothing or more exactly decided to hide the hideous with the biogenetical inquiry because it was too inconvenient to one of their sponsors that was involved in this bus they choose the easy way out to attack the one that dared to speak up. Because these that speak out despite the conventions should be punished that's how the society thinks and does this is how it works it's all a lie. Good thing I'm not here in that show sitting and being asked by two incompetent fools that are paid to attack and show me as a monster with prepaid witnesses that will state everything that's written in a script the glory of modernized television which is used to wipe out all emotions and subdue the population. However it does not always accomplishes this goal cause there are many who actually think and decide to check the facts by themselves but I'm not as that interested in all of this. 
The society is not what I'm interested in. I do things I like and free to go wherever I want, and do what I want. I'm a blaze master, the architect of the universe, the count of chaos, the minister of paradox, and the witness to the source I've seen at, and spoke with the dad that granted my wish, and allowed me to observe it. Also created Alpha and Omega Girl, that is my servant, and the interface to the real visioning. And the end a girl I can use in any way I like cause she exists for me and I'm allowed to do what I want while well, there's no need for repeating myself well anyways she's not here and alone now so. Why I'm thinking of her there's no reason for it at all. And still I'm going somewhere I don't know where I left the bridge a while ago, and now I'm heading forward. It's dark, but there are lights I look in the sky, but there is no sky instead I see galaxies and stars, where in space now we can breathe cause in an air chimney inside on a platform between the platforms and air chimneys there's vacuum I sometimes went through the vacuum space, to reach the air chimney, and other platforms on which other parts of the metropolis are located they're unlimited in their length and wideness they're incredible it's incredible. When you see two platforms while standing on the third one, it's an road of light, it's truly wonderful. It's yellow or red, and sometimes white. It can be so bright that it's hard to watch like a sun, a sunny road, that's how it looks like. And in front of me, far away, I see the same. Sometimes, as you will the view is obstructed by some buildings, and I go through different allies, and sometimes I'm even in a park. That's how it looks like sometimes in the sky I can see planets on which the worlds that joined the mega civilization are located sometimes I visit these worlds which serves as a vacation from these dark platforms because planets have blue skies water ocean and many other places that are not present naturally in the space. However it's interesting that our civilization made use of the empty space and built this intergalactic metropoli which is the center of the capital city, and the only city of the most advanced universal intergalactic civilization I ever known, and is the home of our world. This was possible by the god called Yaqua, by the creator, and the most influential ruler known to us the ancient philosopher the dictator, and just ruler of our world. He is the one that made it possible thanks to his will effort and research, his wisdom and love, that continues since the beginnings of our times, and lasts till this day that's why we live in such advanced world that gain power over death and ability to travel to other times and dimension. The ability to rewrite change world that's what our world is able to accomplish that kind of power can be scary and beneficial if that falls in wrong hands it can destroy worlds. If it falls in a right one it creates this is the power of magic and science, or more exactly the science behind the magic. So what is it that we call magic? What does it mean to be able to perform magic? It means that you know how to bend rules that are supposed to be invented. However it's only our beliefs we walk, because we believe we're being pulled down. No, we're being pulled down in order to make us believe we are. However if we want we can fly. Go up if we believe we can fly we will fly. Why? Because the world we live is a game that's why. Chapter 01 The Sexual Desires An online role play that's what our life is it's a simplification however but it's more easier to understand that way. It's all about simplifying things so others can understand it that's how it looks like. So who to not lose yourself in something like it's hard without the right perspective my kind of perspective. I was still walking, and I saw people and buildings, clubs, banks, places, where people work, and have fun. I was passed on the way by the people and demons, who were either working, or having fun. They all work so they could have fun later. This is how it works with them. Of course, different people work in different way. And while a young, obviously, bank manager was going to have fun with the hooker, the hooker herself was actually working, thought they both did the same thing. Interesting. Hookers called also prostitutes are usually described as being immoral girls without no honor and shame willing to sell favorite dignity for money that's the way the world labels them and understands them however while some do that cause they like it. There are other who are forced into doing that believing they can't live like others do that it's something they do not have the right the world and society binds them into sexual slavery sometimes they're young human girl 15 or 14 years but they're still forced and labeled as prostitutes the society and the so-called social status can't take everything away from that girl showing to her that these that don't do this are cool old fashioned and generally losers these girls are used and later on thrown out like trash that's how it is 
That's how humane civility and well-developed world treats them not that I should pity them, but sometimes I will that's how it is it sad to see these children being treated like that by these that are superior cause they have power and authority and money these think they're above the law and usually they are because the law and establishment protect these that can pay them that have the money the establishment wishes to have for itself actually it's all about the money these girls get the money and lose dignity the envious establishment harasses them and destroys them makes them feel unworthy that they're trash that the world is perfect but they're not cause they are weak the establishment tells them they need to die and when there's no one they can rely on they will kill themselves however everybody wishing to help them will be harassed as well their cowards actually it's mob against a weak fragile defenseless and uneducated life the mob has majority they can control everything and so destroying one or more life is not a hard thing, for if the mob is supported by these that are guilty who want to hide their crimes, and tell others they force them to make that crime their rich so their reliable people listen when money talks. That's what I see sometimes I take action in no hero not because I'm weak and not, but even I won't see everything even I can't save everybody so I don't try I save these that I begin to like or I'm convinced they deserve to be saved. Cause you need to deserve another chance in life know how to use it and be able to do it sometimes I may teach them help them find their happiness and this what I do all thought I'm not a hero and I can use them as well and then heal them in an attempt to pay them for it it's not repent because I do not care about my sins I do what I like and free to do what I like and man eternal plays master that's who I am and that's my story. I sit there down and took out my laptop from my bag the power of technology the information the web I entered it by turning my laptop and going into it I surfed the net looking for the information about something I could do an interesting thing that could be my next work give me money and generally help me I was investigating looking for some story that could interest me waiting for my entry into some game that is someone's life. This could come as I saw a woman that was hurrying somewhere. I turned off my laptop and hid it in my bag that I was carrying on my arm, and followed that woman to where she was going I was following her in order to get into her life have fun with her and find out what secret she held she was dressed in a red leather suit had blue hair she was one of these hookers knowing that you should know what ties she could have and what damn gears awaited me yes I intended to provost them to war with me that was my plan and my goal and I knew what kind of risk and chain of events I would unleash what hell will be released once these that control her will be provost they don't like these kind of games they don't like to be these cause they need to be feared and serious I was tailing this woman 21 human blue hair dressed in a provocative skirt that was inviting me to do my thing but I needed to know I need to pay and what if I decided not to then I would be punished but in blade master I can be punished the woman meet up with a man 45 years he could have been married HM a marriage law of humans that they promise to God that they will be with the person they vow and then ironically they don't obey this vow and why did they make it their interesting the man 45 and the woman 21 talked I didn't hear much but I knew what was going on after all I was the hunter in this situation it was amazingly funny to watch a 45 man trying to behave like some kind of punk thinking it makes him cool and worthy of her it was amusing because the woman while acting was not only unimpressed but in fact bored with him waiting only to the part where she gets to be paid and so this humoristic spectacle dragged for a while until she allowed herself to be persuaded into going with him to his house. I followed far away not wanting to be seen interested in the way the events might turn out. They went to some apartment area place, where some apartments, were located. People usually live in these kind of things feudistic block houses, that house up to one billion or more residents it's a fitting place for these that don't want to be left alone it creates an illusion of being a part of a bigger organization even if these neighbors don't really care about each other. Despite that however despite being there a billion people it's really a very long alley dark place, a place, where humans are few dead away. Like toys in their boxes they go there when they are needed by the system they go there because for now there's no need for them. It's like some entries with names thought here they get out occasionally and go to places they're currently needed. The hall where the stairs are located is a very gloomy dark place probably that's why most of them use elevators to get from one floor to the other one. Yes elevators always go up and down and down. 
and up they're always moving, and sometimes they're the only ones moving especially if the people don't come out a very grim place, like a tower structure, and dark this is the place human lives some of them these that can't afford to live in greater places this is where the so called middle class lives. The darkness of this place however is obstructed a little by some lights the old fashioned ones, where you need to change them once a while cause they die these light gives some light on this matter, but it's not a bright place to be. Occasionally some youths go out on the stairs to smoke cigars, or other weeds this is typical of these places they're always in that kind of places so it's certainly a rule to find them here. Of course it's not always wise to approach them cause they're usually very aggressive to strangers and ones they deem to obstruct their way of living they don't like invaders from other places that are not from Theron. Because these invaders differ very much from what they know, and value to be true it's the difference what they hate cause how can you be different where all has to be the same that's a rule youth smoke weed and cigars, so these that don't want to have to be eliminated that's how this blockhouse world looks so it's better to be unnoticed if you don't like cigars, and weed cause you might get punished for that. Of course it's a rule that to have fun and sex is fun so their youths do sex with each other however sex is not free contrary to the popular belief you need to pay and be on the right social status to get permission for it. It's dangerous to do sex without a proper social status the society doesn't like that it doesn't like pests so it eliminates it. Of course that's the main aspect of this event, so I followed my target couple the blue haired 21 woman and a guy of 45 as they left the elevator apparently the guy didn't want to wait and wanted to consume the relation too early however the woman 21 didn't like spoilers so he needed to wait hardly as until they enter the apartment. The man lead his guest inside the apartment I followed them in my ghost mode so I was unnoticed by them. The man decided to get some glasses and poured vodka in it everybody knows that it's much easier to get a woman when she's drunk after all his manly pride was on the line he couldn't afford to lose this one. The apartment looked like a family one with some broken toys and a lot of bottles empty bottles of alcohol child the woman 21 wanted to be paid first thought she was not that stupid to let herself be used for free after all she was here to work and not have fun so she needed to be paid. The man mumbled something, but paid her her price. After this the woman neared to him, and a short conversation took place. Woman 21, you're such a dirty old man man 45, you're so beautiful and like my dirty wife woman 21 oh thank you you man 45, she is a real bitch with these so breasts of hers I hate her, how long do I have to keep up with them I kill her dirty pig, she laughs, and laughs, and eats, like swine all this is my hard work, and she only sits watching that TV, how dare she am gonna kill that bitch, I'm sick and dying and that, Bitch sits, and sits, and buys food for her breath she should pay me fucking bitch. But she's not like you she's a fat and ugly cow not like you, be mine be mine I'll buy you jewels I have the money to buy you jewels, and other things be mine. The woman 21 obviously entertained by the hideous nature of the man 45 laughed at, and prepared herself to be taken. As the man 45 was getting ready to consume her he felt it was his manly duty to get the woman he viewed it was the most manly thing to do and that these man that can't do these things are unworthy of be man, and should be killed or raised from what he viewed as a healthy society. The girl obediently went to the bedroom and light on the bed she knew the place very well signifying the fact she was here many time invited by the man who viewed her more worthy from what he called his ugly wife which of course was not the truth cause from what I learned as blaze master is to never believe what humans tell you. The woman obediently lighted a light on the bed and for the man's 45 entertainment started to play with herself to increase his desires she was preparing herself for what she knew what was to come for what she expected to come and happen to her. The woman 21 provost the man 45 to make a move on her she was inviting him to start his thing on her she was expecting him but I and deferred and cut off his head and materialized myself revealing my presence in that feral apartment. The woman 21 was shocked and did not want to accept the reality that her lover who paid her for her job was already dead and blood was spilling from the corpse I decided to intervene and have fun with the woman 21 and sits down the bed analyzing my future victim. As I looked in her eyes I saw darkness of despair she was shocked and terrified on how weak human beings are and how simplest to destroy something that is so fragile. She knew that we demons exist she lived in that world but could not accept the reality that something like that may happen in such a down to ground life. 
She didn't think of nothing just chucked looked at me not knowing what will happen to her especially since my eyes didn't tell her nothing she didn't knew what I wanted while I knew what I wanted to do to her. I grabbed her and pushed down kissing her in the lips I pushed myself on her invading all the places that were supposed to be invaded by the man 45 who was already dead. She tried to fight and screamed a little bit as she realized what was to happen now however I wasn't the one who was desired or I was the pest so she didn't want me there and fought with all her power for her dignity but it was all in vain as she screamed in vain I kissed her in the lips and told her to be quiet and play along if she desired to be spared of the fate a man deserved. She wasn't dumb but not happy terrified of having something she was not paid to be done with her she screamed in vain not wanting that what I planned to do with her. She was lying in bed while I was lying on her conquering her defenses and joining her she screamed drastically as filled me inside when we became one she felt my warmness spreading inside her and then everything culminated in a flash soon it ended and it was time to say goodbye I killed her as well with two strikes of my laser sword and I used her blood and wrote my sign plays master was here and draw and pentagram. After all has been done I left the place leaving two bloody corpses behind that was my fun for the day. I returned to the dark platforms where all was the same despite the man 45 and woman 21 not being there. Cause nobody really cared. In reality they were only parasites for others like them who wished to take their place. So despite them not being any more the society was still there quietly minding their own business no one would intervene no one cared to intervene it wasn't their business to intervene and everyone knew their business. Life is a fragile thing that can be taken away by these that are stronger it's just morally a normal way of life. The stronger us usually are surrounded by supporters and they view themselves as being gods however if I would like I can very shortly prove them how wrong they really are. I was beginning to feel hungry so I sat on a bench somewhere far away from that blockhouse place. I sat there and decided to eat my synthetic food. Food made synthetically is the cheapest and easy way to provide nutrition to these infinitive billions that can afford real one cause this is space the distribution from planets is very insufficient and only rich ones can afford real natural food while common workers rely on synthetic or substitute food. Substitute food is a food made from leftovers yellow grease with addition of water and boiled can substitute a fine soup and with a very high quality of grease taken from the finest restaurants such soups may be a real delicacy in their own rights too. Of course such nutrition is a common thing in a such developed world where people travel to starts and between them. Synthetic food on the other hand is made by a Malusar engineering that allows rubber to become cheese yellow cheese for example such food is also a way to get our idea of industrial trash. Of course we can also at reach spoiled food allowing for its consumption even after its period already passed this is done by molecular engineering as well. Which helps the food industry as well I was just consuming synthetically made food where the soup I eat it before its engineering was use out motor oil however after engineering it became chicken soup with noodles a very tasty one by the way. So I eaten it all up not wasting a drop and hit the empty container for future use. As I ended my meal and went on my way I was beginning to think what will be the reaction to the things I done in that blockhouse place. I knew what will happen once the body will be discovered and how afraid these that have power yet not know who to attack with it are. Cause most of them know nothing of me I don't exist in their records don't belong in their social structures they create in just a shadow now the question is how to fight with a shadow that's a good question indeed. It's hard to fight with something that does not exist or has no right to exist and again with what threatens someone who has nothing, whose values can't be destroyed it's a very hard task or even impossible one for that materialistic establishment cause these that posse's rich spirits are hard to destroy even if they're the most hideous monsters like me thought physically I look very nice and attractive a 16 years old boy with glasses and white hair that's how I appear to them. Of course it too serves as my advantage who would think someone looking like that is capable of doing such things. Someone looking as me to have such incredible and dangerous powers the ability to rewrite one's life is the power of the eternal blaze master the count of chaos and the architect of the universe. That's what my powers are that's what they are. Anyways it was calm as I walked past these that were going somewhere. As well, they were talking between themselves, as I was passing them noticed by them they didn't even care to notice me that's what kind of people they are. 
not noticing, ignoring the facts they allow for their lives to be steered by others. Sometimes it leads them to say the death's cause. If you don't have a will to decide about your life, you will die. That's only natural, you know. When you can't decide, you stand still. That's how it is. I was walking through a dark tunnel, and there were some pipes which had boiling water. In it, the tunnel itself was very abandoned. The boiling water was being sent to these block houses and other places where humans and demons lived, so they could warm themselves in the deepest colds of the society and this black space. In a place where human hearts are frozen, they look for artificial means to get some warmth. Every body needs warmth. The desire of being loved is a natural pre-programmed thing since our childhood. But with being loved is a funny thing. Sometimes, just like in fairy tales, you're loved for nothing. And sometimes even if you're the most nicest person around you'll still won't be loved, and everybody will want to leave you, or erase you just because you're not wanted by the society that surrounds you. Life can be cruel for these that are unwanted, these that are outcasts, and are deemed to be parasites. Society can be racist not wanting to acknowledge good things, if it finds one tiny speck that somehow offends at purity, that it does not possess any way which is perhaps the most ironic thing, that is, this is the civilized world we live in where a thief can be treated in a better way than an honest worker just because the thief has a bigger supporting group, but what's forbidden is the most desired I should know something about it. Yes I should know something about it it's true that I know I picked this road cause I wanted to do these things that are forbidden that's what I desired that's what I wanted to do. That's why I'm Blaze Master that's who am I and I will be like that that's what it means to be Blaze Master. The pipes themselves were very rusty old blue billion eons years ago when these platforms were built. Obviously it was visited regularly by different organizations by youths and etc. Cause I could see graffitis on these pipes. Of course since they were old they were leaking in some parts where rust was so already eaten up by the boiling water that was able to get free. If the boiling water will eat too much of the rust the pits might explode which wouldn't be a pleasant thing which serves as an explanation why barely no one uses these tunnels. However it was a risk I needed to take in order to get to the place I wanted to get which possibly couldn't be reached by normal means well it could have been too expensive and maybe you're as key as it's better sometimes to simply disappear from places other people and demons can see you. Normally these tunnels are used for service people that go down once a while to check the pips and repair them if the boiling water eaten them too much. Of course they may cause some problems if they are meat here, but you can reason with them as usually and sometimes offer them help, which they may accept. However people are as usually not the biggest problems it's as usually the demons that constitute the problems. The immortals are often the main trouble I need to deal with as they feel and regard themselves to be something much more better than human beings. There's a need to show them how things really work, of course it's more entertaining when they're involved cause it's just simply so much more fun when you have to actually think your way out of a pecular predicament analyzing your weaknesses and these of your foe the rules of combat is to find your enemy's weaknesses and use them to your advantage however for now I peacefully walked in old cervic tunnels to my next destination for now there wasn't anything particular to be afraid of. In that area there weren't any demons, and I had my fun already in that block. Chapter 2 Test of Intelligence As I left the tunnel however my wish for being tested was granted, as I soon found myself being shooted once I gotten up from the tunnel. The world above the tunnels were abandoned, because it was being occupied by unknown force. Once the ship fall I quickly found some place to hide while analyzing my current situation I hid behind some old rubble of dirt caused by blasts. And through grenades hoping to hit these that I thought were attacking the place was deserted a facility of some sorts that were designed for some reason it could have been consumers or military ones while hiding by the rubble I hear the noise and saw a machine similar and designed to a driven lawnmower driving by itself while there weren't any humans or other creatures present. There was no sign of any enemy, but I could see his warfare equipment I read it myself, and rushed into battle. I quickly left my hiding and with demonic speed I rushed on the machine attacking it with my laser sword, and quickly destroying it, however soon I was attacked by four more so I needed to dispose of them to I destroyed each on one to one combat which took me 34 seconds. 
I slowly moved near the wall to not trigger in the meal arms, and walked up to some stairs I went on them only to be attacked by a flying machine that started to shot rockets on me. These were however insufficient to pass my demonic defense barriers, and with few electric attacks my blaze as I send it. To hell while still going up the stairs I found myself in abandoned staircase. In some kind of facility I was quickly shooted on with some machine guns, so I used my demonic speed and, and avoided the bullets, and got myself out of it I jumped on some floor, and with energy flash destroyed the machine guns burning them in my power. On the floor I found some bloodied corpses of people, who used to work in these facilities. These were scientists responsible for some kind of projects the society wasn't supposed to find out they paid their price for their loyalty and hard work they paid with their dreams lives and futures. Nobody was to know what took place in this facility and that's why I needed to find out. Near their bodies blood stained documents where lying I collected these hoping to clear them out I put them in my bag and walked into now defunct factory. I observed huge boilers and tubes filled with green liquids and I saw bodies inside of this I realized what was going on this was a hidden facility where genetic engineering was taking place dark hidden labs where humans were modernized to become better weapons where weapons been not made but born this however was not sufficient for me so I walked further observing analyzing and trying to get a bigger perception all this while still knowing I might be attacked by these that wanted to silence this facility by these who were desperate not tell this story to the world the factory and research area was huge, and it took some time to get out of this place on the floors. Soldiers and scientists were lying. These were the ones that needed to be forsaken so the bare truth won't get out to the public. I needed to be careful too thought I wouldn't be destroyed that easily. No, I cannot die. Very shortly, however, I was spotted and shooted at by the special military unit that was ordered to bring down this facility once and for all they were shooting from up and some units went down using stairs to hunt me down they shooted at me with lasers however were not a big deal for me to avoid it as I HIDD behind these tubes with green substance and bodies inside and attacked them with my four spikes which were more short faced bio energy created beams that could cut like needle and with using many of such bioenergy needles combined with the light speed they travel it was easy to rip one's body in the matter of few seconds then I went on the traps with my demon attacks and attacked them with my bare fists but with huge demonic power enhancement that made my attacks so possible they were ripped apart like sacks in matter of seconds with all the blood and favorite size going on the floor my enemies were human after all they on the other hand tried desperately to shoot me down but they laser guns couldn't hit me due to my demonic speed and my abilities to attack them behind by simply teleporting myself behind them technic humans can't master and use in these situations and I used my laser sword and cut it there's head of as many victims as possibly I could get it was a nightmare a true night aim for them as they frantically trying to defend themselves and running away some of them cried and screamed the soldiers were both male and female, but I had no need to play with girls for a while, after all it was merely few hours ago that I played in that block, so I simply swat heard all the soldiers leaving no one alive. Then quickly I went on stairs and killed, or more exactly massacred these that were hiding above and shooting on me suddenly it got awfully quiet. So I left the place. The soldiers wear a SPEC commando, and the only times these are sent is to erase secrets that the world should not see. However I had the desire to see I should see the mine needed to understand that was main reason for existence, to understand to know everything that transpired. There were some doors I opened them, and there were stairs that led up hopefully to some databases. I went on the stairs which were covered by blood of these that give their lives, so these secrets won't be revealed this desire however was hostile to me the one that needs to know everything I couldn't allow that was impossible for me so I went on these stairs that once were used by many but now were stained with blood and abandoned these stairs were cursed. The path I taken upon these stairs was cursed as well many of these that went by this path died. They died thought they thought it was gonna be their normal day at work their bodies still expressed the shock and unpleasant surprise when they realized that they need to die cause someone with higher authority decided like that suddenly again I was attacked by some androids that were some militar to humans however they were more demanding upon X one of them jumped on the stairs looked like young man with blonde hair and green jacket and white pants he took his hand forward and it soon transformed.
into a machine gun and started to shoot at me. Meanwhile, five others dressed in black suits just like bodyguards of these high-profile mobsters tried to stab me from behind with their hands transformed to knives. I quickly avoided their attacks relying more on my ears and nothing else. Androids, unlike living creatures, don't have auras which makes them annoying opponents. I was unaided in some karate duel with all six trying to avoid fair strikes. But I was hit down and thrown down the stairs. The three jumped on me and I used my force attack a giant wave of power which pulled them back while the remaining two started to attack. I was ready to counter attack and punched them well and jumped on some floor near some other bodies. Meanwhile four androids circled me and engaged me into an karate duel while the other two attacked me from behind. I pushed the two that was in my way the two from the encirclement team and attacked the two that distanced themselves I got the green jacket one cutting of its head and destroying it completely with my laser sword. However these that were dressed like bodyguards didn't plan to give and quickly engaged me into another fist fight while trying to cut me and stab me during its I kicked them very hard and give them a hard knockout but it wasn't enough for them as four of them were still standing and again attacking I used my teleporting technique and tried to attack from behind but was cut and instead so I needed to run away for a while I jumped on other floors and escaped. While the four was still pursuing me I hid myself in some office room segment centering one of the hallways. While they were pursuing me I hid in one of the office sectors. While they searched for me with their laser and heat detectors pooled and they rise. They constituted a problem and I needed to mask my energy. So I slowed my metabolism so minimal quantities of heat will be emitted so I can remain hidden and escape them as they were still pursuing me I was near the office computer so quietly I decided to dismantle it and get the hard disk while I was still hiding by my pursuers who with their logical and mathematical correctness were looking for any movement or sound that could lead them to me this was a true game of stealth. Androids never give up, they pursue its enemy until they destroy or are destroyed. Of course you can't negotiate with a computer, they're the best assassins. I quietly got the main body of the computer in the sector I was hiding while the androids could have been steps away. Then I got the hard disk which I retrieved and put in my bag and made a getaway alarming the four pursuing me androids that started to pursue me. I got a to an hallway of some sorts and then attacked them with a heat wave blinding their sensors and attacking their heads cutting them up and destroying what's left from them burning them with my energy. This was done my enemies were destroyed but it was unlikely that it was all what was in the facility. I calmly made my way on the hallway where yet another bloodstained corpses where lying the view was rather disturbing I saw corpses that had their organs eaten out by some animals probably these victims were eaten alive and probably screamed while dying in terrible agony. This terrible sight was to lead me to the real secret of this facility and the reason why so many were sacrificed to keep this quiet the dirty secrets of some illegal company or a person who was so bored with his life that he decided to play God. How many of such exist Richard Dietz that decide to take powers that they do not fully comprehend the power should be understand because if one does not know what is he using the one will die cause he will not be able to foresee the dangers that lie ahead with using that power. This was what happened here this was where one single ambition lead to and that person who had the ambition should be punished by me by Blaze Master that's my job. I walked the bloody stained hallways the indication of a bloody fight with some unknown beast the dark secrets that I was visiting now. I left the hallway and made it to the stairs with no intervention no one dared to interfere with me I entered the stairs and saw the same SPEC commando I was battling with they were wearing the same uniforms now however they were nothing more the bloody stained eaten out corpses they were putting a fight with something worse than me obviously I entered the stairs on which blood spilled down forming little creeks. It was fresh blood indicating that soldiers died not a long while ago. I entered the stairs slowly not being bothered by anything. The ones full of life very futuristic office that was a center and workplace for millions it had its own administration shopping centers. Dinners and the like usually these kind of buildings are full of different people or demons going to different workplaces ones are managers others clean the floor. Some are scientists others repair the elevators full of different individuals different stories but today it was dark the place was a grave mess to for billions that were killed by an unknown force beast probably by a failed experiment. 
bodies grotesquely eaten out cloth spared and bloaty chumps of meat. Without no human dignity it was shocking to see one's proud office people being reduced to less than human meat sacks who love bloody red liquids. Broken ripped and apart they lied waiting for their salvations, and probably wanting revenge it was for them that Blaze Master should get justice revenge, for letting them down and leading them to this horrible fate it was what was my duty. Because these people trusted their managers their authority they trusted with their life's loyalty duty as they putted their effort into this work and today they were nothing more than bloody sex filled with spilling meat was that the fate they deserved. No it wasn't the fate they deserved no it wasn't nobody deserves something like that and especially they didn't but that's how this cruel world apparently works that's how it is. So that's why Blaze Master is needed to get all things right even a virus has its place. I entered another floor in this dark, and blotted by complex with no future I could see the windows, and the world outside and light spacecrafts, that, where analyzing the area suddenly the light hitted me, and I was shut it out again with lasers I needed to run to a place, where there weren't any windows cause these that, where outside didn't want what was inside to get outside. I jumped on the stairs and rushed upstairs avoiding the lights, and being shot at I was able to escape to the probable distress of these that, were outside. I entered another floor with windows and careful avoided being hit with lights, as these lights from the outside were analyzing the inside I evaded them as well, as I avoided the bloody corpses who were my obstacle, as I didn't want to get dirty with their blood which would increase my chances in getting myself attacked I jumped through the bodies and avoided the lights it was like being a rat in a cage cause I couldn't get outside but unlike the rat I couldn't allow myself to be noticed inside. So I rushed on to the other office rooms, where I could get some more things. I entered the office room on my nails, as it had huge windows, and the lights, where penetrating the inside I got up and tried to avoid the everywhere going lights from the spacecrafts that were hovering next to the building I got safely to the desk, and retrieved the documents that were lying on it. The documents were titled, Project Valkyria. But I had no time to read them my HIDD, under the desk in the sector, and opened it to get documents that might have been inside. And I entered quickly the manager's office, where I wasn't bothered with lights, as it had no windows. I got all the documents the manager of this office section had, and potted them in my bag. I also took out the hard disk, and all computer-related storage devices I could use in my research. I carefully left the manager's office being careful not to be noticed by the lights I left the office room and avoiding the lights got to the stairs where I was attacked by some flying machines I quickly dispossed them but others started to flying so I had to destroy them while not being detected I used my laser sword and dispossed of these nuisances and got to the other floor where floor writing ones were awaited and started to shoot at me I needed to avoid the lights and get to the machines to destroy them as they were shooting them there were eight units and I had to destroy them while avoiding the lights. I tried doing that one on one so I jumped on one destroyed it with laser sword quickly avoided the lights as the seven remaining were still attacking me with their laser guns I could only shield myself with my demonic barriers while avoiding the CAMD light at the same time. I quickly rushed in the middle of the two that were the closest to me and released the power waves in two direction destroying the units and moving out from the detection of these light. I jumped on the third unit and hit it with my demonic stream only four more remained after I would dispose them it would be all free to enter the stairs again and go up. But I still needed to look and be careful not be detected by the lights I attacked the one that was the closest to me with my laser sword and then released an energy wave to destroying the other one and evading the lights. Only two more remained and I used my teleportation technique to get the two but couldn't avoid being hit by the light and I was shot at from the outside I rushed to stairs and got quickly up. I didn't however knew what awaited me on the upper floor I saw girls young girls who were eating the bodies. No all thought they looked like human new girls these were the genetic monsters the experiment that went bad the monsters who were so similar are to human and yet had nothing human. In them they were like animals eating the human flesh from the bodies ripped and them apart this was the Drethil experiment that gone so wrong the lights were hitting them and the spacecrafts were shooting at them but it had no effect as their wounds were quickly regenerating themselves they couldn't be destroyed. 
They were true monsters, the one that can't be controlled, so these that recklessly created them tried to destroy them with their human weapons, however this was nothing for them, as they could survive something trivial, as that suddenly the building shoki, and everything started to fall down the building was collapsing. The newly built futuristic skyscraper was falling down and collapsing everything was to change into dust destroyed and erased any sign of it any trace was to disappear from the world. That was the wish of these that tempered with creation's play god, and could have Thayer since exposed their wish was to make everything go away to say Pierre the building was collapsing and losing its structure, as I look into the eyes of these monsters created because of someone's ambition I needed to lift. I needed to lift the collapsing skyscraper, so I left, as everything disappeared I left into another place leaving the monster, and the collapsing building to its fate I using my power left this space. I went to a different place, where I could work it was according to my powers all was possible for me cause I knew this world in secret that's it's all a game and reality can be bend, to all my desires cause I have the ability to write in its source code using the true color of time and universe the powers to alter reality, that was the power of Blaze Master. Chapter 3 The Conversation with the Source what is the reality it is a game a dream that we're engulfed in its Morelia simulation a virtual thing. Yes we're dreaming even when we're awake the reality it's all just a big ancient illusion of sensations. Yes sensation signals frequencies electrons that are the source code we live in a world that constitutes the most well program ever written. The signals we feel warm cause we get the right frequency on our hands we see brightness cause the right frequency is being sent at all that's just like that like in a computer who written who is the author of such thing of course the one we refer to as God so who is God and how he looks he doesn't. He does not have any shapes no form he is a being who doesn't need that, you see shapes and forms are simplifications for our limited minds, so we can write our stories, and live. To play our roles we need a setting a background and that's what reality is a background for our stories. Knowing that I learned that everything is possible this power is not granted everyone can use it, but you simply need to know that this kind of option exists yes it's all about knowing the options. The road and path you want to take so in order to exit that situation I really needed to exit as I wish that I slowly put myself from that space, where that action took place, and transferred myself, to a new one a dark old mansion with beautiful red carpets and stairs I wasn't anymore in the skyscrapers I left it. I was standing in dark old mansion on the red carpet on the stairs a blue haired girl appearing to be 18 years old in a nice blue dress was awaiting for me the mansion and the world where the mansion where located where created by me it was my interdimensional mansion and the blue haired girl was Alpha and Omega my servant and accomplice. She was named like that because she is an intent as to the real Alpha and Omega to the real beginning and then she is his inner face that is used to contacting me of course she's just one of many inner faces that created for many purposes she was created for me she had her will and personality and was connected with the real God able to use his knowledge as well as being able to give me his messages she looked at me and went to me once she come near me she started petting my hair after all I was finally back you are turned blaze is there something you need she said with her nice voice while still playing with my hair, God how rude do I always need to need something to come and visit you I thought you might get lonely I said teasing her, you're lying you need informations that why you came to visit me the source you need informations about the case you were involved in. When you destroyed them on that planet you only destroyed one organization, however they worked an umbrella of organizations that were connected with each other she said it's still playing with my hair, then she stopped. But, before that you need to rest it was a hard day, for you, why don't you take a bath she said, and smiled, got a bath. I said it surprised, yes bath a nice relaxing bath come on I'll prepare everything for you she said it, and grabbed my hand pulling me on the stairs, and leading me to a room. So what's up? I asked while she was leading me, what would you like to know? Many things happen life is full of them she replied to my question. As we entered the hallway upstairs I looked at different paintings that were actually created for the sole reason to have my eyes lay on them. You are thinking about these paintings they reflect the nature of this world, the nature of their existence is to tell you and send a message you're doing a good job keep at it Alpha said while smiling, really do you really think so? I asked surprised with that answer. Yes I do as well, 
and he does not many people pick it, and does it so well, as you usually people would be depressed it's a hard thing a really hard and unawarding existence, she said while looking at me, you're wrong every existence and story I create is itself a reward I explained to her this very important matter. You're right you are right you know what's true Ellie important it's a good road you picked a hard one but very good you're okay she said and kissed me in the lips making me blush. She then let me go and showed my my room I entered it preparing myself for the bath while she went to prepare my bath. I laid on the bed a very exclusive one like the one's royalty sleeps on so soft worth of account and I was the count of the chaos. The mansion never changes it's always the same it doesn't matter how much time million or even more years pass since my visits it's always the same it's always like that a safe warm place where I can hide. If I'm tired or scared or need a place to escape that was its purpose. My only true home since at least Anion, or even more years of mine existence yes I don't remember anything before from this but I knew I created it at the beginning as a base of my operations it's a base for Blaze Master the interdimensional mansion is Blaze Master's home it's my home as in Blaze Master. Of course I use it only when I need to Alf and knock on the door. Blaze your bath is ready she said with her softly voice, in going and going I said it, and went with Alpha past the hall to a bathroom. It was a site of luxury I rarely could afford in the other dimensions. The bathroom was plated with gold. The bath which was a huge pool was full of warm water. I undressed myself and entered the warm water. The bathroom was an architectural pearl. It was made entirely from gold. And at the huge pool there were ten statues showing angels and devils in fair traditional designs. Golden statues in front of me there was a statue and classical description of blind justice. A woman blindfolded holding weight on which and could be weight. She was blindfolded so she could pass her judgments even if it was to hurt her loved ones. Would you like me to scrub your back? Said Alpha who was behind me. Hey what? I said it surprised with her proposition as she gently massaged my back which made me feel a little bit uneasy as I wasn't used to that kind of treatment. I think I'm bothering you too much I said wanting to release her from that duty. It's okay I exist only for the purpose of serving you and granting your desires whatever they might be said Alpha and started to kiss me gently but apparently I wasn't in the mood as I was lost in thoughts. What's troubling you? Usually you would use this situation, but you had your fun, so you're not hungry she said it calmly, but it's not what you think it's not like that I got embarrassed and tried to make my way out of that humiliating situation. It's okay I'm only here to serve you I accept it, and I accept your rest now it's important for you to rest once you rested you will have your strength to get to work and uncover the hidden plot said Alpha calmly in a very soft voice calming my emotions down and trying to give me some solitude and peace. So do you know anything about it? The thing that was being made in that compound. I asked Alpha she patted my hair and answered my question. In the inner face of the being that is omnibus and present everywhere in the witness to all that had, is and will happen the project Valkyria is your answer it's a genetic engineering research program which aim was to produce a better race of beings that were to be used in warfare. A race of suburb assassins connected to the artificial blood children development company headed by the 13 warlords of Hellbells Edda, Arachnal, Samuel, Zavbi, Mephisto Tellies, Lilith, Thayunus, Sapphires, Abaddon, Gatoral, Hors, Eliempio, Dantalian the project was to be hidden from the general populace and used to aid them in their military conquests and mega-civilization. The facility which you visited was headed by the one named Zyrinx. A rich lower lord that was connected to the, the company. He was killed by Dantalian when the research facility failed, and it was his forces that destroyed the facility during your visit there Alpha explained. Sounds like a serious matter I said it calmly not expressing any worries thought it was really the first one I faced such strong opponents. It is a serious matter it's your first time dealing with that kind of enemies you never fight one of these warlords. You can back down from it Alpha said calmly while washing my back with some good soap. Ah oh, that tickles now why would I back down? Place doesn't back down with any enemies it's not like I will die anyways I said sure of myself and confident of my abilities. After all there weren't many that had these of eyelights. Do not underestimate them remember they are lords of darkness fallen angels that know as much as you do they were once a part of God's army. But Red Belt wanting freedom they know how the world works and can use the same powers you can use they know about the source of your power and broke tougher than you. 
You need to be careful with them she said in a very serious tone, that made Mary think what I said. I will I will don't worry I said it after calming down, in your servant, but also an inner face, that shares God's knowledge with you and his experience. Your victory lies not in your strength, but with your strong beliefs these that sell themselves to. Darkness have nothing to believe and that makes them weak only if you truly believe you can make a victory she said lecturing me, and reminding how important self-awareness and strength of beliefs was I was gonna find out someday how important it is to never give up your faith in better tomorrow, to not allow yourself to be broken. By the strength of my enemy demons can do that they manipulate with you play with your emotions and hearts breaking you mentally and once you're broken you no longer have the will to go on and fight you give up and resign from it. Alpha brought me a towel and some new cloths I butted them on and soon refreshed I was led by her to a kitchen to a royal banquet just for me a meal fitting for the count of chaos the dining room was huge a huge table with many kinds of foods from different parts of the universe that were recreated in this dimension just for my pleasure. I took an orange fruit with a spiky hard shell, and broke the shell, as I eat the sweet inside of the fruit I was amazed how well it tasted it was so incredible to eat that kind of stuff. The universe is an incredible place full of many beautiful things, and different foods. I visited many strange and beautiful worlds, and I seen many interesting things yes my fate was not always grim and scary sometimes the same path allowed me to see things no one else ever could see I was sometimes the sole witness, to the glory of the universe to the complexity of the world we live in the reality that constitutes our modern day. Does anybody of you wonders what happens right next to you in the space you hardly ever notice there's life too there are stories that happen there too. Life is full of different shapes and forms, and the full complexity of the thing we call reality can be only understand when you wish to acknowledge a wider picture of it. I was eating my main course a little soury pink soup with different vegetables inside it. It was very tasty, as it was real natural food not synthetics, or substitute but real class well made home cooked meal with fresh ingredients this was a rarity for me a rare treat cause I was the outcast, and I wasn't tussually allowed to eat that kind of food but this was my own world here I could be what I wanted, and do what I want this world was mine. Alpha eated her meal to we were family, or at least just like family, and we knew each other very well. So what were you doing when I was gone? I asked her, there are many things to do I don't need to tell you about all of them said Alpha with her calm voice, I don't need to know all of them just some I tried to persuade her into revealing some of her secrets, I help people on the planet Karay brought faith in them, and help them realize what they need is the same what you do, but in a different form said Alpha calmly revealing to me what she wanted to reveal to me. After we eat at our meal she lead me to my sleeping chambers, so I could get some rest, before going back to the game we call our lives. I'd return to bedroom I was before taking my bath. The bed was already prepared for both us, as I always slept with her just like a little child thought sometimes it was not just sleep but this time I seriously didn't want anything perverted maybe it was me, or maybe it was her own program, that was sent to my brain cause she herself was not in the mood. I would never find out but it's not I cared I could still hug into her and stay there for a night. One night so different from these countless other where I sleep on the platforms, or in other places. This time I could rest safely there was no need to be afraid here in this mansion nothing could happen to me Alpha was always a bit mysterious she was God's in her face of being created by him to communicate with us however in order to be effective she had her own will her own soul she never said anything bad to me she always was on my side whenever I needed her assistance she would come. I was always wondering does Alpha loves me there was no way to check was she lying or not in fact I always consider it genuine but it makes me wonder is it really genuine or does she implant in me a special program that allows her to control me to make me obedient to her and believe everything she says. Still I wanted to believe she is in love with me that I made even someone so superior as God's in her face to fall in love with me and be able to score her it was probably my manly pride that told me thus I never wanted to read that obviously this was the one matter on which I didn't need any confirmation I didn't need to know that one thing it was necessary for me. The question is who is God what is he, he is the first entity ever born, as some scriptures say, born not created when he was born he was born in the time of the Bing Bang he is the first energy being ever created. Everything else was created by him slowly, and he evolved, and started to change. 
Since there was nothing that was around him he started to create something to which he could interact. He created our world, and consequently the life, as we know it which was detached from him. The world is a game and it isn't the world game is used, as a simplification for understanding purpose as games emulate the world on a very small tiny scale. However our world is more complex written in a more complex way with many languages, and by many authors each ones of us are the authors of the world our decision created shape we may be slightly pushed by him the eternal one, but it is us who make it into reality. Slowly step by step everything can become reality everything we want to see will happen eventually it's simple you need to believe and everything will be possible step by step it will happen as a self-realizing prophecy. That's how this world works. So believing in nothing is stupid, but believing in stupid things is stupid too. You need to know and be able to recognize what's truth and what is we that's important if you wish to live in the world we share whether it's mega civilization or something other a different exotic dimension. That's how it is. I slept calmly hugged into Alpha and rested when I waked up I was ready to go back. Alpha prepared me some food on the road, and some cloths I could take with me she prepared me something to drink, and checked with me is there something else I needed soon and off I was ready to leave I went to the chamber, that left outside the mansion. There was a pool, like structure from where I needed to jump to the ocean of light in order to go to the places I wanted to go the ocean of light was infinitive in its dimension, and reached for there and I could see this was how I could go back a simplification for me to make it interesting. The sky in this dimension was orange it stretched as far, or even further I could see no it wasn't the sky it was the color of the space. Well I'll be going and see you later I said my goodbye to Alpha putting my traveling back on my arm. Have a safe trip said Alpha I jumped from the cement platform into the ocean of light thinking that him gonna go back to the platform soon I was at the busy platforms in the mega civilization the color of the space was black with many stars. The lights of the cosmic metropolis shined, and there were many spacecrafts, above us people were going to Thayer places I was back. Chapter 4, The Dead 8 The Web The Technology of Transmission It's one of these things that can be useful cameras, and recording devices are currently available for everyone in mega civilization, and are present everywhere making our daily lives easier, and allowing us to transmit our messages everywhere. This digital media transforms and globalizes entire galaxies It allows for people living on different planets to exchange their messages in merely few minutes. The electronic signals that travel with the speed of light, or sometimes even faster allow our thoughts to be transmitted into entire galaxies It allows the entire galaxies to be connected with each other. I was sitting on the roofs of some buildings that were either some storage warehouses or something other I didn't care what were they but the signal of the web was good on them and that what was important for me as I turned my laptop and tried to hack into messengers servers to get to the video the bait the hellish warlords were having after some failed attempts and adjusting the channel I was able to get to the contents I wanted. I may assure all the participating that the matter was already dealt with said a man that was in white suit and had blonde hair looking as a 30 year old male he was Dantalian one of the most powerful hellish warlords the Duke of Hell that had billions of eons serving his will. His name stroked fear to many citizens of mega civilization and all bloody events that created crises for the government of the mega civilization were connected to him. I hope the guardians don't get a leak on this said another man that was appearing as a 40 year old Barry Webb booed with one eye and the other one hidden by the eye patch he was Abaddon and Hellish Welfalard that specialized himself in the illegal drug industry. Please do not be worried I personally dispossed of all unwanted evidence the facility was brought down said Dantalian who wanted to appease his comrades. Don't you think that it will definitely catch the eyes of that government? How do you intend to explain the destruction of billion based trade consortium? An only woman in the company she appeared as 23 was very attractive but not easy to get she was Lilith the most feared woman in the entire galaxy the warlord that was known from her brutal executions of these that dared to defy her orders. She had the pink armor like dress and pink hair was sitting in her base playing with her sword wishing to spill some blood with it. The blame will go to unknown terrorist organization said Dantarian answering the question Lilith gave him and playing with a nail polisher. The terrorists are an universal blaming device used in these occasions you can blame everything on them, and the public will always believe in it. 
It's because the society needs natural enemies to exist said a man that appeared as a well-built 87-year-old with a huge dark beard and had a golden cane with a skull on its top dressed in some kind of D.A.T.K. habit he was Belzet of the Master of Flies and one of the most powerful hellish warlords second to Antalian. Shut your trap we're not some fucking school of children Belzet of go fuck somewhere else said and black men appearing to be 23 dressed in punk style he was Lembo one of the most ruthless space pirates ever known. He weared some colorful clothing and had a very annoying attitude. My dear boy do not underestimate the power of knowledge only these that have it may be able to be victorious said Bells of trying to lecture the pirate, go put your purse in someone else's to him not your boy Pito said Lembo trying to improve his social rankings in the meeting, why don't you two bitches shut up? said Lilith that was annoyed by the conversation that in her mind was wasting her time as she only got on to get to know all the important details gentlemen please let's not get ourselves carried by sentimentalities like that allow me to ensure that safety to all involved is provided and that all that caused a threat to our operations has been reduced to ashes the Blood Children Company is a research facility that cannot allow its members to act on mere sentiments said Dantalian trying to keep the order of the meeting intact. TSCH sexist, I hate man, that are all dolly like What happened with the intruder? Said Lilith trying to break Dantalian's composture. Intruder. Asked Dantalian trying to pretend he heard nothing about me entering the facility moments before the destruction. My sources tell that you had a mo planted hours before the collapse said Lilith smiling to Dantalian. Even so there is none evidence the mole got out the last signals of an unidentified intruder came few minutes before the collapse of the structure from the final floor I assume whoever was there was killed and buried in the rubble and reduced to ash with the entire complex said Dantalian feeling sure that this matter was resolved. But still the fact that there was someone there might indicate the guards of meta-civilization might be informed and the secrecy of the matter was compromised said Belzet of giving a serious doubt to the logical structure that was the fundaments of Dantalian self-confidence. My sources in the guardians of meta-civilization didn't not send any such signals so I trust that it did not take place. I can guarantee all participating that the project is still in our hands and has not been detected by any third party in counting on all members and trusting that our deal will not be broken said Dantalian. I would like to use the opportunity to ask about a written paper record from that liquidation process said Elzet of requesting documented evidence that where to prove their key secrets remained unknown. As per your request documentation of the process will be delivered to all participating parties. As long as the deal remains in the progress you should not fear any consequences said Dantalian trying to act self-conscious and threaten little bit the members into obeying his orders. Threats don't work on us explained a man appearing to be 35 years happily a civil or happy human actually demon he was a fear as a well-known cyber criminal that was known to be able to hack into every computerized database ever built even I wasn't as good in computers as that guy was. He was responsible for many cyber crimes in the mega civilization the best known being wiping out savings from the commercial bank. In that incident more than 769 billions people and demons lost their digitalized savings including myself the incident took place 1,875,404 billion thousands years ago and forced the entire bank industry to change their digital security measures introducing real point balance system and the foreign requirements reforms into the banking industry to prevent such scale happenings. Also double providers were implemented where one of the servers plays a role of a checkpoint system always connected to the web and then passing through clients to the real servers where digital savings are stored assuming all necessary tests were positive these are no threats my friend just guideline we need to obey to said Belzetta while smirking. Belzetta was a well-known criminal figure nicknamed the anti-god or god of darkness he wants to take over the entire mega civilization. He was once a king known as Ball, who like our current brawler Yakwa discovered world secrets and how things really are he unlike Yakwa intended to use this power for himself and to establish an universal civilization under his tyranny the Scott him at war with our god Yakwa's civilization that resulted with Bell's head up losing the war. Since then he worked on the ground to restore his tyranny and has created an underground terrorist organization that main name was waging war with mega-civilization and its legal representatives. 
This was however it for me as safety res obviously cutted me out from the signal and I lost the connection. Still by the sneak preview I was able to wake as much I confirmed all the information gotten from Alpha. I needed to act step by step I turned off the laptop and HID in my bag. And I jumped down the platforms it was the beginning of this game, so I needed to be patient. I decided to move forward walking in a crowd and observing the lights of this metropoli. These people and demons that were unaware of dangers lurking in the darkness they all lived their lives not aware something, as that dangerous was hiding itself in the shadows I needed to not worry about it too, as it was only the beginning of everything so there was no reason to panic. I entered the park area, and walked to the food distributor, where I inserted one talent and good some synthetic ranman. I entered the park and sit it on the bench, and eat it to the ranman. The park was recreated on the platforms to me were the ones that are present in the planetary cities. A nice living place when one's worries made by this industrial utopia can go away a remake of DHA natural forests, with real trees ground artificially constructed lakes. The place where people and demons could reminisce about the paradise they lost the gardens that symbolized the glory of mythical gardens of Eden and botanic utopia in the world where night rules eternally in a never-ending cosmic metropoli that seems to be detached a little bit from what we call reality but still maintains our reality. The memories of the original world planets humanity, demons, and other species came to a malutation of the ancient worlds that's what's the main purpose of this cosmic metropoli as meteors hover in space, below I was sitting on a bench thinking how far the civilization needed to go to get where it was today. I was thinking this while drinking my soup and later eating my ramen noodles. I love this peaceful moments when there is nothing to be worried about when there is nothing to interfere with me, all thoughts sitting like that forever would be boring. I knew I could afford myself this time I watched at the lake, and the tries behind the lake, and at the ducks, and aquatic dragons swimming in the lake's a sight worth seeing the wonderful beauty of nature brought to this artificial world. And I bent my head a little back looking at the stars in distance and thinking about what happened I said did calmly allowing the time to pass and a 20 forward while I was sitting until I got up and went deeper into the park going forward in this dark forest. Being in the park and living in that metropoli may make one really forget where you are as you simply refuse to accept that this is no planet it's space people and demons tend to forget very quickly if they're bind to small fragments of it. Yet most of them is bind to it they are bound to certain areas they call home. Some individuals don't even leave the block houses locking their entire worlds in them. People choose to be locked in cage they tie themselves to the one place and stay there. They don't go anywhere they use such ideals as traditions family to justify the fact they're not allowed to leave certain social structures this is indeed how the society works it binds people and demons to roles that it defines. In however different I blaze master can go everywhere I want to I can leave and be in different place that's my pride lads that's because I'm really free beyond anyone's control I'm free to do what I want and to get what I want I decide about my role and my involvement nobody asks nobody cares. I walk my path alone as it's a very hard one to follow and as Alpha said unawarding, but still I don't care it's not about rewards it's not about any of this it's about sending a message plays master is here and it's me who decides him here to judge observe and analyze that's my duty my single responsibility. Him not God but him thanks to him and I do everything what I can to make sure everything won't go in vain the world is full of stories so I simply harvest these stories and analyze them. The thirteen hellish warlords plan to develop something that can threaten the stability of this world finally something that can match my power a troublesome issue that won't be easy resolved. This was what I was waiting the world will again go insane as Blaze Master goes to war I will use everything I can and reshape everything for my purpose and convenience. This is how I fight, and this was what I was thinking while I was walking through this park admiring the irony of natural landscape in an artificial world that was something that was interesting. Chapter 5 Club The clubs where music played one of the places people and demons gathered to have fun. Fold with many that danced to the sound of electric music in an attempt to make their worries go away in an attempt to know they live to visit mental states that they're not usually capable of it's not just a place where people have fun but also a place that very serious boys mistakes places his place where operate these that earn monies on one's desk airs. 
These that sell happiness and pills and fluids, these are always serious but smile to appear they're friendly to make customers feel safe and be reliable to them. This is what kind of boys mistakes place the one that sells artificial happiness made in two pills ready to use that works in a way that makes them want more happy pills just to be happy or not feel pain these that are consumed by these happy pills lose themselves it's all happens in an innocent place all are having fun these tragedies happen as others dance not noticing and DJ sings his song people dance not wanting to see pretend or don't acknowledge that something like that takes place among them trying to mask with laughter they or fear of being detected seeing cause these that are serious and sell these pills don't want to be seen and so they're ready to forcefully shut one's eyes if one happens to see something so it's better to not see anything and have fun as others have because that's cool and you need to be cool to be in cool places that's the rule of this world that is the music club it's a different world closed in its own reality with its own music with its own DJ singing or mixing up tune if one falls there there's no one to help cause everybody are too busy with dancing and looking cool and of course don't wish to notice that someone might need help they simply refuse to notice it. I entered this kind of world through the door eliminating these that didn't want to let me and I started the whole chain of new events to that and I needed to be careful in the forest of dancing man and woman and enemy was hiding ready to destroy me cause I dared to come here uninvited. Lembo the owner of the club was observing angry that I made a mess at the doors that I spilled blood on eyes of these that thought it's a safe place you can come party dispelling the illusion and obstructing his business. The guards of this place were revealed standing in the crowds they were observing me dressed in their black and some white suits I was supposed to never get out here since I entered this place in a such rude way. I decided to get something to drink I went to the bar making these that were standing behind the dancing crowd enter it. I went to have a drink to the bar sit down and ordered some lemonade paid and drink while these that were to capture me went a deeper and deeper into the crowd to pull me back and to raise me expecting their plan no an intrusion. It was ironic to look at them as they were the ones working while all the rest had fun. All right you're coming with us said the guard dressed in white suit coming with you where? I asked surprised, don't play dumb said the same guard, while two dressed in black suits sitted next to me on both sides, did you hear we're leaving said the same guard, can I drink my lemonade? I asked trying to act dumb one, of the dark suit sitting next to me thrown my lemonade on the ground, you're done said the white suit guard, while two others from behind grabbed me, and pulled me from the chair, you're so rude that's not nice I wasn't dumb yet I said it in the same manner, while being pulled by the man walking with them to some kind of hallway. The dark hallway was a place they realized they were buttons here they could eat up anyone who dared to defy them, and soon one of them punched me to the ground. Think you're funny B-I-T-H. Said the black suit guard that punched me down on the ground. It's not polite call people names they can't snap, and it might get rough I said once my eyes flashed. Oh a demon boy do you want to scare me? You pick a wrong place to pick a fight where demons do, we serve Lord Lembo said a white suit guard, oh that's good I'm here to visit him I said while analyzing my enemies, he is too busy to deal with shit, like you said one of the guards, while trying to strike me but it grabbed his hand, it's not nice to call people bitches and trash I need to teach you a lesson don't ever undermine my power in blaze master I yelled to them, want a shot at that come on? said the guard in white suit and tried to punch me but evaded it and hit it him in the face the remaining ones joined the fight I was kicked in the back and fall down to the ground something not going your way get up you were so taught said the one dressed in the black suit I grabbed his leg and burned him alive with my power and he was burning away I stand up wanna make it serious come on I said already analyzed my enemy they weren't the toughest demons Lempo was the newest member of the hellish welfare company I engaged them in a mockery battle. Stoping they rev re attack despite being surrounded by nine of them they tried to kick me and use their power attacks until I stopped move and started to be punched and hitted but was unable to give them back my body stopped to respond and they thrown me on the ground and started to kick me very badly with their demonical enhanced power. What's wrong out of energy already and you? We're doing so good too said one of the guards, in black suit, what's going on I can't move I said it shocked, as I come to tell he didn't count on my body refusing to cooperate with me. The white suit guard said it on me. You can't move that's not good said the white guard toying with me, bastard what did you do to me? 
I asked angered by the fact that something was not right, and I couldn't tell what, what's wrong can't fight you or not as taught, as you thought you, were said the white suited guard, and all of a sudden I started to punch myself hitting very hardly in the face. He got up from me so I standed myself, and throwed myself on the wall, and on the ground beating myself on the face. You're hitting yourself dude Matt's crow said the white suit, and then he kneeled above my face just to get punched by me in his nose. Neistrik controlling my powers I said it, as I got up, Neistrik for cowards, if you can't win you take control over the body of your opponents, to make them beat themselves for you HMM, how pathetic I stated to my opponents. Smartass said white guard as I punched him through the stomach, and burned him with my power until he disappeared. Weak pathetic I expected something more you know I said, and quickly dispossed the rest one by one. Leaving only bloody stains behind me I showed no mercy, as these weaklings never show mercy as well. I ripped their bodies one on one, and had their insides fall on the floor they died in agony. After I ended with them I went into the hallway, while being observed by Lampo's camera. The hallway was long and dark with a red carpet. It was a peaceful entrance to the lion's den, and, behind rusty doors the lion was sitting I entered the room. The king of this place the big boss was sitting on his throne observing everything, that happened from safety of his quarters. His carts being the second largest room in the entire music club his own modern palace, or at least mansion. Filled with different weapons high TEC, and ancient traditional one he was ready to deal with anyone daring to enter his safe hive he would show no mercy no mercy mercy was a sign of weakness, for him a sign, that you doubt in your own ability. Who the fuck are you? He asked while standing and getting the nun kick up. Shortly after the question came he came at me at trying to hit me not waiting for my response. I quickly evaded his attack, and he only smiled went back, and analyzed me truthfully, and then again attacking me with his nun kick I evaded, and made a pruit, above him trying to attack him from behind the room was three floors high, and 500 meters wide allowing freedom of battle movements, as I attacked him, however he quickly repelled my attacks, and hit it with his fist in my stomach, and then hitting my face with a hard kick making me fall good 10 meters away. This was no game this was serious he was planning to kill me I used my electric attacks, and released sleddings on the floor zapping him good. This wasn't an ought to make him paralyzed, and he rushed quickly, and kicked me very hardly while I was laying on the ground making me turn away for two other meters. When I stopped I quickly got up and rushed on him throwing him on the ground we wrestled for a while, until he kicked me off him and started to beating me again with his nunchak who I blowed an energy ball into him making him fall away from me, and then burn him with my force wave. This was nothing for him, as he summoned some kind of force whip, and made it hide itself to my leg pushing it, and making my fall I cut it with me force attack, and attacked him with my force ball, while getting up. As I got up I quickly rushed to beat his face up and as I was beating him I was hit by his eye lasers, and fall back. He then started to stabbing me with his sword, however I electrocuted him from the wound he made while stabbing me making him fall back I pulled the sword from my body, and regenerate myself making the wound heal itself. And I send massive blazes on the floors electrocuting him more, and he was sitting in shock, however soon he reversed them making them come at me and it was me who got electrocuted he then using my state of shock started to beat me very hardly. Once I snapped out of it kicked him very hardly in his stomach, and attacked with my head his making go back then I beated him on the stomach and chest a little bit, until he made fall again attacking my legs he then kicked me very badly. I started to bleeding very badly, but soon my blood started to gather around him and started frozen making him unable to move I then punched him on the ground. He made all the swords and other weapons that were hanging on the walls attack me and I was cut and threw be few of them. However I was amazed for Swave, and while he was standing up after the attack I quickly pulled all the swords from my body, and regenerated myself. And then went on him boxing him very hardly for a while then he repelled all the attacks, but I increased their speed, and beaten him very hardly, and throw him on some kind of gablot. Breaking. This gablot apparently made him very mad, and so he started to attack me with some four discs, that I evaded very quickly jumping in the air, and landing on his face. 
I then used my force needless to try to rip him apart, and got him seriously wounded then I jumped back allowing him to reach an hour 8 I didn't need him dead not, yet anyway. He wasn't as good in regeneration as me so he needed a little bit more time this chance allowed me to take a look at his room and battle collection it made clear to me that this was one of these guys that liked violence and took pleasure from hurting others because that made his masculine ego grow. He was a body lifter and had the wonderful black chest now somebody can call me a racist but this guy was bad and it wasn't his skin color that made him bad but his own character. The pride of the warrior that sometimes is good and sometimes might be bad Lempa was a classical example of so called street warrior the soldier of dirt that doesn't back down on anything and kills everybody who disobeys him. Probably it was this Pam made him a hellish warlord he was simply the best in what he does having no mercy no empathy he wouldn't allow sentiments influence his actions and these are the kind of people hell needs. People who are ruthless street soldiers can apply to that and they're born to take the dark crown someday and being kings of anarchy and chaos evil and darkness and all negativity that lives in our world this is what hell's purpose in existence is. He was slowly healing wanting and desiring to attack me and beat me to a pulp as quick as possible. He healed get up and started to run towards me I evaded his attack making him fall again and attack him with my force burning him a little. He blinded me with some kind of flesh and kicked me in my chest making me fall a few meters away he started to kick me very hardly. You think you're so touch bitch. He screamed and stopped kicking me for a while, you're not polite, you have very rude manners I said it, got a problem with my manners he said while kicking me in my face, they'll give you manners there's your manners freak said Lambo while kicking me in my face, why do you do this? I asked while he stopped his kicking, I enjoy showing his punks like you their place, you think you're caught now, he said and spitted me on my face. I whipped my face got up and punched him straight into his face, you feel touch beating weak you think you can teach my lesson maybe it's me who's doing the teaching here Lampo my name is Blaze Master remember that I said it to him in his face, I don't give a shit about your name, you're dead get a DE80 nobody messes with Lampo nobody said Lampo who was not amused seeing me right there and kicking, dead. You think you can kill an immortal. You're free to try it's quite entertaining you know, but let me say it there's nothing nothing you can do to kill me I won't die I said it smiling at him grimming, and actually scaring him a little bit, you think you're so hot you think you're so hot. You think you can come in my place and screw with me you think that smart ass well you're wrong I'm gonna kill you said Limpo trying to scare me trying to regain his position he lost in this battle. It would be so convenient to some people to make me die like that that you all would have something to threat me with. But Slip and the Slipple game tell me where is Dantalian hiding I have business with him I asked Limpo my question. What makes you think he'll tell you? Asked Limpo trying to show he is not threatened with my abilities. You'll tell sooner or later I said it very calmly and made a very evil grin. You're sick man. I don't know where Dantalian is you better go ask that bitch Lilith. I'm just doing the dirty work here said Limpo while regenerating his wounds. Hussa where is Lilith? I asked with my us you will come voice. Planet Hayunas said Limpo. Thank you I replied Mikeli. I'm putting a word out six grands for you dead said Limpo. Good luck it won't help you I have multiples bounties on my head. Nobody will want to kill me for such low price. Nobody has ever succeeded HAH I replied laughing very sarcastically. What kind of son of a bitch are you? Asked terrified Limpo, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure whoever my original mother was she wasn't a bitch please be polite I said while showing my eyes flashing, and my true nature, you're a fucking monster. Said Limpo, that maybe I am a monster immortal blaze master at your service I replied, and vote in a very devilish matter Limpo slowly looked away laughing, and he realized with what kind of thing he was really dealing with yes I was one of these crazy lunatics that can't be stabbed broken or destroyed that will stand up for the sick of standing up that that will make everything burn that was the kind of person I was and that was what Limpo realized in this short while. N.A.H. N.A.H. So who are you? I asked him politely, go fuck yourself I don't talk to freaks, like you said Limpo trying to show his disgust for me prove that he's still more superior being than I. I didn't care at all however it didn't make any impressions on me I simply ignored his rude remark I needed to find Lilith. 
Well, in leaving it was nice to meet you bye-bye, I said, and teleported myself on the dark platforms far away from this music club. I needed to find the planet Hagnus and find Lilith, assuming the information given by Lampo where true well it would be verified at some point. Eventually, I would verify the data I obtained from him, and so I made my way in the dark platforms and this futuristic metropoly. Chapter 6, The Darkness and Light The darkness and light evil and good to opposing each other fractions. They are like siblings who hate each other, and also cannot live without each other they are cursed into existence or disappearance whatever they do they do it together. Mathematical logic plus for positivity, for negativity a simple, yet effective logic. This is the language of our world the electrons positive and negative these two are and ought to write our entire world into existence. This simple thing governs the entire existence we exist, because we understand that some things is, and something yeah and he yes, and no two digital values, that make able to send all messages zero, and one. That's what it means, because in order to anything be written there must be someone, who will read it to writing, that has no readers is worth nothing more than just a human being, or a demon that existence is unnoticed might as well disappear become nothing zero, or become something one that's the choice we're given. That's our mission do something with your life give your life a meaning, and try to understand of the meaning behind the lives of others that's what we should remember. Then why is it that most of demons and humans forget about it, they choose to live without deeper meanings believing in hollow lives of the system trying to ignorantly fight everything, that could make them realize just how shallow their lives really is for such people Blaze Master is a criminal a very dangerous enemy I am an enemy also for these that govern that ignorance to these that you causally make wise knowing people and demons will believe in them. The world we live in is a lie and illusion falsely made propaganda that promotes ignorance and obedience the system rewards these that listen and that's why it has so many supporters. Ironic is however that even these that fight the system are in fact really controlled by it. What is the system it's the society that we live in it is not controlled by anyone even these that think that have power of it are really their puppets. However is turning away from the system really possible? Turning away from the society. At the end there is no escape, because the civilizations are made by the societies forsaking them completely would mean going back to ancient Stone Age time, where humans were merely animals. It's like it is said humans and demons are social beings, like every other species they need to be in a group, and being cast out it from the group always has mental consequences. If all humans and demons need to be in the society, why some of them are cast out it? Reason is simple society is not just in the society the will of stronger triumphs over the will of weak plus weak are crushed by these that are stronger and more superior. Since these superior are backed by the society the weak are outcasted left to die the cruel law of nature selection where weak are being killed even by their siblings or become prey for the enemies. The world being a good utopian place is a lie these that are weak will die. Of course the world and society are a good place for the strong popular cool these that are able physically and intellectually to become leaders and these that look to such leaders for protection and trying to adjust to have a sense of self-belonging being appreciated rewarded. These will do every command the leaders tell them to do just to get a badge and mentioning or a smile these will become steps for leaders to step for their glories and an barrier to separate them from the weak and unwanted. These will be the criteria's judges that will follow one rudest in which the strong smart and beautiful and destroy the ugly weak and stupid ones. They will decide and their judgments will not be contested as they work in the frames of leaders will. Has not this happened before? The leaders do not need to have qualification they're born from the blood that allows them to rule it and all that they were born after all babies of strong leaders are different from the ordinary ones and much more appropriate from these babies that should be thrown out and killed everybody knows what you to don't they after all the strong and strength itself can justify everything history is written by these that are victorious in wars that's why only crimes of the side that lost are to be discovered because discovering the crimes of the victorious side is a treason that should be penalted with death. The truth may be made appropriate in the world and society, there are truths that are appropriate to believe and that is not appropriate is a lie. Even if this lie is more thoughtful the appropriate truth it's still a lie cause it's called by that by the society and the appropriate truth has many defendants that will accuse anyone telling the thoughtful lies of being a criminal thus thoughtful lies are not worth of being mentioned in the appropriately thoughtful society. 
because if someone will mention that he or she will be classified as a criminal, as a disquisting criminal, because the society needs to add disquisting to the thoughtful lies to make appropriate truth more attractive. So how to tell things that really happen and not the things that should happen because it would be more appropriate. The big medias will tell appropriate things because they want to remain big the small ones don't want to be destroyed by the big and they will be believed to tell the same things big one do making an illusion that the situation really happened like that. So the only reasonable thing to believe is that wherever we go we will be still lied to so how to know the truth from the systematic lies. Lies are not logic, and having a fundamental logicized belief system helps having developed ideas and heroes. While they serve to promote system it also helps as symbols are this thing, that can be our parameter the system, that overly glorifies its symbols, or try to discard them lies the system that glorifies, and shares its symbols may be considered true. Heroes that promote violence and ignorance come from the totalitarian system, that lies, and uses, the heroes that acknowledge contributions of other systems in favor deed are representative of a system that acknowledges truth and is not destroyed in its culprits will use but the good systems give something in its falsified world that protects these that it uses and does not tell them that's the main and key fundamental difference. Sometimes lesser evil can actually be good after all it's hard to be thoughtful in the situation when you know a child is dying. Tell him he will die would be an barbaric act, and sometimes these at least representing the system can be the real heroes. But the ultimate truth shouldn't be discarded, and should be reminded to these that need to hide that they should at least be aware of its existence, of thought it will cause pain and suffering to the heroes it should be remembered for these that will die not knowing they're dying. Suffering can never be forgotten, and both the unjust system and individuals need to honor these that suffer, or were even willing to suffer, so others won't. There are many that picked that kind of fate, and never returned. These shouldn't be ever forgotten, and it doesn't matter, for what kind of system they worked being enemy or ally doesn't change their suffering. Ignoring the sufferings of our enemies we've become evil ourselves worth to remember that when in battle you need to understand the enemy's motives. That's a proper way of a warrior, ignorance is the worst evil mankind and demons are capable of ignoring someone is worser than killing him cause a dead person at least has a grave and ignored person has no signs of his existence to tell the world he cannot tell the world anything cause the world doesn't wish to listen. It's a cruel fate to know that nobody is listening to you to know that nobody cares about your existence and for beings that need the society to exist it's a deadly situation it's a true hell. A true hell ignorance creates every day the cold or the unwilling to do anything to others the desire to mind only your important weakness, and in reality the vulnerability behind the so-called grown-up behavior. Why is it a bad thing because of the silence of allowing the strong to do what they want with the weak while being only a mere witness no not even that they're not even there looking their bodies is the only things that remains but the soul is not looking it refuses to acknowledge the weak and ignores their pleads for help. Helping creating more sadness, and despair these that do nothing to stop strong destroying the weak are co-guilty of the strong's crimes that's what the truth is, but they will ignore it nonetheless. After all it's not the appropriate truth, so it doesn't need to be noticed they think, no else is seeing it, why do I have to they all think like that and that's what makes them evil they refuse cause they do not want to help knowing too well what may happen to weak they will simply watch. Everyone who interferes is the enemy of the society that's how it is. We are all puppets that live in the world of the puppet masters, that are morally puppets themselves, who is the real puppet man? Is it God? This might be your answer. This is what it means to live in a world of gods this is the true reality, but why people and demons need God what is God? What is his purpose for us? The God that is strong the strong that will protect us the weak were the same as these that hurt us we turn to protection to an authority no one can deny this is God. This is God's role for us, as envisioned by the society so doesn't it mean we use God as well as the great puppet master himself a puppet as well? It would seem all our puppets but there is no puppet masters because puppets use themselves so why inequality? Why some puppets want to be portrayed as puppet masters, despite the fact they are puppets as well? That's how the society is it's not equal the stronger will always battle for the title of the puppet master because they want that power to pull all strings that are binded to us one may try to cut all strings but a puppet without strings cannot move and is easily forgotten and abandoned. And yet this is what puppets are afraid of. 
They're afraid of being forgotten and abandoned it is what we're afraid of. So we will allow our strings to be pulled by other cause it's better than being abandoned. This is the illusion we choose ourselves to believe the darkness, that we enter from our own will all are entering it, and we do not want to be left behind. We do not wish to be forgotten we do not want to live in the world full of light. If it means living alone instead we will try to bright the darkness everyone is right now. That's what we do that's what ours reality. The universe and darkness of our desires that's something we're sometimes not even sure of. In the stupefied world where rules have no meaning breaking even the slightest one makes us afraid of being cast out but then again the fear is justified. As the system's controllers are out searching for these that break the rules wanting desiring to cast them out from perfect rule based society. This game can be played only with the rules you are given this is what we're made to believe. We are scared to believe that if we don't complete these rules even God will abandon us we do not want to believe in other things so we believe this cause it's more easier. That is also. Darkness that is us you will really not seen this is the ignorance that is evil. We need to understand this that's how our world and the system works. This is a game where all thought we can try bend the rules most are afraid of doing such things cause they don't want to be outcasted discarded it's a price for not obedience if you don't listen to the appropriate truth you're not useful not useful things should cease to exist that's how the system works. However we should understand we're the ones that decide about our existence we shouldn't make others decide about our existence. We should know what to do what is the right thing to do not the most easier thing to do but what should be done. Even if there's more reward in doing it. Of you or we should know where to obey and where not obey we should know the true value of live that is so forgotten now even if it's terribly boring to find out these that do not know will be forever lost. The value of one's life is something one decides oneself this is the true value of life. This is how it should be, and how it is sometimes when these that are to decide to know that this is what is decided by them and not by others the truth is seen only that way. The actions that may have consequences to them and others should be seen and foreseen analyzed and understand so the path can be picked to not allow tragedy to happen life and death choices sometimes just right the corner as it's all a game of actions and choices. Each action has its distinguished choice, and its consequences pattern the ability to foresee this is sometimes essential, but not always possible, as sometimes game is not meant to be won and losing can have its own. That's the truth we need to remember understand and acknowledge that sometimes the winner are the ones who lost, and the losers are the ones that gained. Sometimes these that are inferior can do more than the ones that are always in the light. Sometimes the truth is hidden there that others won't think to find it so they don't look for it and don't try to control the hidden truth. What is the hidden truth of conspiracy? No conspiracies are the tools of the system to make fun of hidden truth. There is no truth in conspiracies cause they're popular and the hidden truth is not popular so it's not not known so how can conspiracies be the truth? They're lies made so we can make fun of hidden truth and believe the appropriate truth fully thinking hidden truths do not exist or are silly or idiotic while appropriate ones are serious and ought and well documented made safe for believe as they can be shown and have reliable sources. Documented truths will be noted and encyclopedized so the appropriate well documented truth will be made available for general public while that that should not be revealed will be hidden buried in all of the lies and illusion world has to offer for its citizens. This is how it was and will be and is now this is the law of the appropriate truth that only it can be put for general audience to know a truth that is a celebrity that truth is a lie that plays the role of the truth in the game we call life. Real things are not highly tense so they cannot be ever seen and understood the truth is not out there it's hidden. It's for the one who seeks to understand it. To acknowledge its existence and accept it the choice should be made by the one who is shown the truth as it has no consequences on one's lives it can be discarded or accepted however accepting the truth needs you to be willing to share it with others that want to know it. Where is the truth in a place you yourself need to look that's where it is that's where it can be found. The truth the ultimate truth and ultimate freedom are not however easy to accept and there, as all pure things it has its own price the price that is the will of understanding and ability to comprehend these that cannot or are unwilling to comprehend cannot use it. This truth cannot be changed for value in money so this reason for looking for it is absurd it can change the one that learns it make him stronger or weaker depending on the ability to win with the darkness. 
that is inside oneself. Everybody has a darkness inside him a part of himself he is afraid of the ability to accept it and be able to comprehend one's own darkness is a good step to begin to understand the ultimate truth of how fragile and afraid we are how all our lives we were enslaved but not only understanding accepting this fact is necessary as well. However can humans and demons be allowed to pick in their darkest corners they will be alone there no one will help them no one can help there. Tyra enemy inside them is themselves their limitations, that they need to comprehend a real and scary journey the one with no barriers direct contact with the enemy. Close it is there it won't go away it will always be there it cannot be destroyed it must be understood. Acknowledge it's a true nightmare because this enemy knows well one's fear and will not stop at nothing to make one break. It's a very fearsome enemy which needs to be understood. This enemy will always have an advantage because he knows the one needs to know and only beating him can one understand what one needs to know beating limitations is the key. But how to beat it there are easy ways that will fail and hard that sucks. Enemy needs to be acknowledged and accepted merge the darkness as a part of one's personality limitations exist together with that person so they need to be comprehended and understood accepted. That's the only way for freedom and gaining the knowledge that might be scary and insane because it's an insane world to know the true truths are only the ones insane ones want to know paradically these insane are however more normal than the ones that think are normal while actually being made insane. The truth of the world can only be discovered that way however will it for you be the same as for me this is one thing I will not tell you. Play's master's role is to make others understand the truth of the world, but they will not see the same truths I as Blaze master see they will see the truths that are individual for themselves, because they will see themselves in that world something they don't want to see thought that's what they desire. Chapter 7 The Battle and Eternity The lights of the metropoli were shining, as I was walking in at the view of it was astonishing. This futuristic metropoli was my home and the place where all this action usually takes place. This is where I exist I was walking through thinking about all this complicated stuff walking, and thinking is what I usually do that's what am I supposed to do being Blaze Messer. Thinking is my role thinking, and analyzing, but I, as I was thinking lost in all of that and Lazarus I was observed by some soldiers, that were standing on the roofs of the buildings, that were located in this mega civilis ATN suburbs, near some pits with hot water. Soon other soldiers dressed in black armor started to run on these pips and jumped down to where I was walking a new battle has begun. The soldiers quickly surrounded me they were dressed entirely in some hard dark armor and they were demons as I could feel their power. The battle has begun as two of them enatered me in some kind of card fight and I was trying to defend myself from their punches as the rest which was gathering was watching I used my laser sword and cut it off their heads doing a circle while at it. Seeing that, the rest attacked me, and I found myself fighting with many of them prop at towels and in one-on-one -on -one combat everywhere I turned they came to attack me I was encircled by them. I was surrounded by them trying to defend myself as they came from every possible direction. I jumped on all the pips but were attacked by others, that where on the roof they had gathered in an entire sector, where I was, I was forced to fight them on the roofs I used my power to kill them, or at least throw them away however, as if they multiply they came in large numbers almost spilling from all directions including from up where meteorites, where hovering they jumped from the meteorite that's why I couldn't detect them earlier. Some of them started to shot at me from some kind of machine guns, so I was forced to evade the bullets and jump to other roofs making myself a path by cutting through enemies that were attacking. I stabbed them with my laser swords and created large explosions in their bodies so large it killed the 100 of them standing next to the one I exploded. However more of them came from behind and I was forced to push them off with my power and jumped on the pips run on them and jumped on some kind of bridge built between two buildings so the ones living in them could pass through it. I was attacked by these standing on the bridge so I quickly slaughtered them cutting them through with my laser sword and making a huge mess as they were sights fell to the ground and covered the entire bridge with their bloody remains I jumped up on the roofs that were going slightly down as they were vertical. I needed to fall to keep myself from not falling, and I slowly got on top of it where I tried to keep my balance as I was attacked by others with poles I avoided to being hit by it I grabbed the pole in my hands 
and pushed it into the one who was holding it dropping them like dominoes but shortly after that I was attacked from behind and jumped down on pips jumping down from them to another pips and down on another. Soon I was again attacked so I used a force attack burning them to dead and not leaving a sight as other zillion of them were jumping down to where I was standing. They attacked me huge combined wave so I quickly jumped up on pips that and platforms that were located higher. I run into a grove of civilians, while they pursued me in the crowd I entered a building a shop with cloths, and entered into a maze of corridors, while being pursued by them I jumped through a window, and flew to a window of another building flying over people heads. It was some kind of market center, and I entered the moving stairs was quickly going up while still being pursued by my assassins, that tried to kill me believing it was possible for me, however it was some kind of entertainment. I run down higher sectors of this building, but was intercepted by billions of them in front of me I made a D's in front of me and in back of me into a battle trying to defend myself from all of them in the same time killing all of them effectively cutting through them with my bare hands very quickly. I then again used my power to blow them up from my way killing these in my way, and demolishing the market center I was in at the moment. I jumped out the window and fly high in the sky making all of these soldiers follow me into the sky where I battled one-on-one. -on -one. Having the lights of these futuristic metropoli at my feet I battled them all killing each one in mere seconds. But soon was attacked by some flying machines that started to shoot rockets at me while I was killing the soldiers I also defended myself from these machines and as soon as I got some free hands I shooted power waves at the machines that were attacking me from above destroying them just to back to defend myself from the soldiers some of them started to shoot at me with their machines guns so I avoided the bullets doing effective periods. Yet again I flew up above all of them and created a huge power ball that I threw on all of the soldiers burning all that attacked me and destroying the metropoli on the platforms that wasn't destroyed in simulate our nature as a throwing of an atomic bomb would do everything was engulfed in the miasma of my power ball that exploded once it touched the ground creating a huge flash in the darkness of the universe and a whirlpool of air. It also destroyed the platform creating a huge hole 200 kilometers wide and darkness everywhere as energy was cut up because of my attack. I was however very quickly attacked by a fleet of flying machines that went on me attacking me with their missiles I created a barrier defending myself from the attacks and repelled with lightnings as they came down to attack me with themselves. I closed some of them but was cutted by others with their sharpening edges the machines were flat like flying knives. I jumped on one of them using it as a standing ground for myself while trying to destroy others that were attacking me with their missiles I was pushed down and fall through down through the hole I created while the machines were pursuing me I shot lasers destroying some of them while I was falling down I put my hand in front of me and made a huge circle sending out an spiral of bioenergy that was able to destroy the machines once it penetrated them inside. The machines exploded causing explosions of others that were around them. I fall on a platform that was below the platform I created the hole on and run into a surprise and not knowing crowd while machines above flew through the hole and were pursuing me from above shooting rockets in the crowd to hit me it made the crowd to panic. As made myself through the mosaic they created it was a huge help as it was harder to see me in that mosaic and for a while I was able to get out from the machines as they were shooting their rockets blindly into the crown however soon the crowd was infiltrated by some kind squid like robots that were shooting into it and were able to find me more easy in the crowd so I jumped on the roofs of the building but that made me visible for these that fly in the sky and they were starting to come down to me wanting to explode on my contact with them I was able to avoid the and jump on other buildings and run quickly as the machines were blowing away the buildings they hit it on destroying themselves by the way they quickly increased their speed and I needed to increase my speed jumping through the buildings I jumped down in some kind of abandoned alleys the machines started to hitting buildings around me and flew into allies I burned them with my heat wave these that were in front and these that were behind me both at the same time and rushed behind me and reality rushed forward as I made a turn while sending the heat wave. I quickly rushed through the allies while I was still pursued by them again I was morally erect in the maze I run while these machines tried to hit me I needed to get to an empty place a clear place where I could use my attack and destroy these automatic threads. 
I planned to do the same scale attack as I did before so I needed an opening. I rushed quickly through dark alleys, while machines were destroying themselves and everything around me I finally however got to an open place I put my hand forward and made a circle around me and then I painted with me and the entire sky. All machines that were up in the sky and around me exploded the pursuit was over the attacking me forces were destroyed. I could calmly return to my walk and get lost in my thought this battle was over at least for now. These kind of things happen very often if you're Blaze Master, after all I create troubles, and some don't like that these machines were obviously Lempo's he threatened he will send them out after me I must admit I wasn't expecting that kind of force, but it was nothing for me I had some fun thought. Since I was tired I thought it was a good moment to have my dinner, since there was nothing more that could endanger me so I went D.O.W.M. the stairs, that were near me that were leading into an another park. The stairs were rusty after all they have been built a billion eons of years at the times when this platform was constructed. It's a very ancient civilization, after all a civilization that doesn't change despite many billion years passing it simply a when Ellie gets older. I entered some grassy territory I sitted there and took the grass out real unsynthetic this could be used as food this was the cheapest and sometimes only way to get natural food. I had the metal bowl and bottled water I washed the grass from the dirt and potted the clean grass into the bowl and pured some bottled water. I had some synthetic fat that I pured in and some spices. I potted the bowl and heated it with my power allowing all the end ingredients to boil. It was one of the typical and most easiest way to get a meal all thought not so elegant. After a few whiles the soup was ready I waited while until it cooled down a little bit and then took the bowl and drunk my soup. How it tasted to water with fat, grass, and of course spices not the most tastes me land that's not what us you all public like that's how it is. After I drunk the water I eated the green pulp that was made through boiling the water with grass. I eated it all up and then hid the bowl. I got up and went on my way. Currently it was very calm there was no one that would bother me. The park was usually full of people, but currently it was abandoned it was quiet and dark. Probably the reason was because of our battle that was in progress few whiles ago. The local populace hid itself from the supposed terrorists that they believe were attacking the platform's media will be all over this event later. I however didn't mind the solitude and being alone as I walked through the park. I always wear alone so I was used to it. So has anybody of you been thinking how it is to have an infinitive life the one that does not end? This existence is freedom to these that know how to use it. Infinity means that something has no end no barriers no borders that something can exist the entire time just like this civilization. When time is no longer a barrier everything becomes simple. More oceanists these that are not bound with time live a more happier existence. For humans time is a cruel master, as it locks everything and a fine circle of dreams ideas do not matter once the one who thought them out no longer exists. All that it was because of this cruel master that this civilization exists after all culture the writing was thought out so people could be able to pass their ideas into other generations that won't be able to meet the person in their lifetime this fragility of human life was also an impulse to understand the laws that govern this world which eventually lead to understanding how immortality can be achieved and what are we in reality the ideas that our immortal thoughts were immortal and the civilization's food systems and rolling doctrines has became immortal as well Society has built it itself for many millennia becoming a system we all know now you might say then that the society is immortal as well Society is an construct of certain ideas the world of rules we live in, there are many rules that were made to adhere for example the rule that all people who are outstanding intellectuals are weirdos while in reality there are few eccentrics among these that are intellectually superior. That's because smart people know how to not stand out from the herd and in reality adapt themselves quite well masquerading their intellectual superiority instead of showing it off. However the world portrays all intellectuals as geeks, and this portray of immortal as well, as some social rules don't change, but are adapted to our modern times. Of course the darkness of space is infinitive as well space is infinitive and mega civilization is only a small percentage of it that's why even our infinitive mega civilization is constantly growing its growth however makes it constantly alive so our civilization is immortal as well.
At first immortality and infinity, we're merely mathematical concepts today they're in reality that's why we live in an infinitive world full of infinitive possibilities. Chapter 8 Media The commerce and its value the financial center that might be blown up. Trade and marketing most people assume business is only about money but sometimes money is not the most important thing discussed behind the closed doors. The conference room with its large table and many chairs are huge windows that shows the dark sky of mega civilization and lights of its metropoli. This huge room would always be a witness of a heated debate about salaries and money. It's where sharks decide the fate of little fish and they can have a whole eternity to decide even if this means that because of their indecision little fish can't work. But these big sharks don't care no these business people don't care about it because they're on that table should be discussed very important things. How much salary will the business people get who will have to pay others from their salary that's important serious things to these people. The room has a slightly brown panel-like floor and modern structure with holographs that can be used to watch holographic television, or rarely to present business models. That's how the great business people work they have the liberty to work while doing nothing, and still get paid because they're useful try not being useful and do nothing. But useful business people will be paid while and useful working people will not be paid while they will be forced to work two times as hard or even 57,778 times as hard and still not paid. But let's leave this grim introduction. This office cockraper belonged to Dan Talian and this time the heated conversation was not about business or how to cut the costs which is important for business people. Business people would like to have normal people work for nothing. Dantalian punched the huge conference table while talking to one of these soldiers that attacked me before. What the fuck you mean he got away said angry Dantalian who was wearing his SU all white suit that was in his mind making him above these that use dark black suits. My lord during the battle we lost track of him said the armored soldier Dantalian walked to the soldier and kicked him in the face throwing him on the ground and beating the soldier badly. My god this is just unbelievable. I just can't believe how fucking us less you are it's just one rat. One fucking brat what's the point of having an army that can't even kill one single person. Still it's not that he found anything during his little venture in the skyscraper but that doesn't mean I can let him go. I absolutely cannot let him afford creating troubles at this stage of development. We have made a far way to this point please making diets not so hard isn't it said Dantalian in a mockering tone and throwed the soldier on the ground and walked to the podium that was placed at the end of the room. Only a little way to go and my master will be reborn soon you will regain the authority you lost in that rebellion and slaughter all these hellish fools that dared to resent you. Said Dantalian in Annex has 6 8, My Lord Gallimoth both time will come for your return, it's time to pay back these fools that feared to take away what was rightly yours only one is the king of hell and he will forever be known as G-A-L-A-M-O-T-H exclaimed in an insane speech Dantalian, My Lord all the preparations for opening the gate of Achelian are in the way. We can assure you there won't be any further interruptions said the armored soldier. Splendid gentlemen splendid, imagine these fools surprise once they learn the true purpose of my research program they will be gathered for their final judgment and punishment said Dantalian Dantalian sat on a chair pick up the glass and poured himself some red wine from the nearby standing bottle he then took the glass up in a cheers jest and drank slowly his wine. The view from the window showed darkness mixed with light single light coming from single apartments or office rooms. United created a golden road that covered the darkness of the mega civilization's platforms up above you could see stars and a planet with three rings. The planet was blue a gas giant probably and was used as a mineral resource for many companies. Thought primary conquered by Dantalian and leased out for others that got their shares judged by Dantalian himself who was the one that decided how much shares anyone could have of gases from this planet. You see in business it's a rule that if you have something you don't give it out for free. It's a rule of this world that there is nothing for free to be given. Even if you help it should not be for free. You can't help others for free in the world where one should be paid for everything. Dantalian lived in that kind of world he was still drinking his wine and watching through the window. Fool said Dantalian and made an evil grim only a little bit more Dantalian was content with himself.
Meanwhile I was walking on the platforms between these demons and people Dantelian probably detested, or thought of them as only weaklings or worms that can be used to fuel his crazy ambition. I walked up to tunnels and stepped on the stairs that were to take me below. The stairs lead below into the darkness, as I entered them some people and demons were entering while others were going out. I entered the stairs that took me down. Into that seemingly unfinite darkness of this tunnel, a one-way ride to hell or to unknown all thought in reality I knew where would this path take me I was going down to board and spaceship that would take me to the planet Hades. As I arrived below I stand in a maze of QUEE. The QUEE was huge it lasted an entire kilometer from the place I standed. The people in QUEE were standing to get their tickets so they also could get aboard the spaceship. It was also my destination I needed to board that spaceship in order to get to the planet Hayden as it was the safest and less costly way to get to a planet. As I stand in the crowd on the walls of the tunnel I saw plasma TV monitors hanging on a where broadcasting the news. This just in a very tragic event has taken place on the platform 123XCV675 from what we may be able to tell you at the moment is that we're sure that the portion of the industrial sector 678 Levitas has been blown up. Now we're not sure whether this was an terrorist attack or some pipe failures we will continue this news as more information will come to us at our studio said the woman reporter. Witnesses of that terrible event tell us at our studio that they saw some kind of military personnel in the area, and we get some information that probably I repeat probably and demonic battle could have taken place in the said area we do not know who were the size fighting or what they were after. We're still unsure what has happened and what was the target of the unknown military personnel were after and whether they or the target is even involved in that tragic event. The witness report they saw an GIAN energy ball by an unleashed on the sector. Yes, you can see the video material. We can safely assume it was an result of demonical battle. We will still keep you updated as the story continues, said the reporter. Two hours has passed since the event has taken place, but in this unfinite space, assuming that these two platforms were different entities governed by different authorities, it was a rather quick for them to get the news of these events. All thought mega civilization is a huge federation different platforms are owned and financed by different economical entities rather than by the mega civilizational e-government. This allows a much quicker response in case of repairs or investment as the area called sector is governed by the entity that has the majority of business share in the area or was the one who used the most financial resource in building the platforms. This created an situation that two sectors were owned by enemy fractions for example Sector 1 could be owned by Archangel Gabriel and the Sector 2 could be owned by Belzebub thought it did then change the people's situations on the platforms as they could freely travel from Sector 1 to Sector 2 due to the fact that a civilization is a federation of combined economical entities, countries and planets. The information however could have been manipulated differently by different sectors, and some sectors may choose not cooperate with each other, or be on an antagonistic level, while still cooperating in the whole mega-civilizational scale. Information then goes through the friendly sectors to the friends of the friendly sectors to the friends etc. And at some points through different organization the information might get to the enemy of the information source sector. Meanwhile as I was thinking of these complicated stuff a giant spacecraft was just landing trying in a huge underground hall letting out its team. From its hydraulical brakes, the spaceship was a huge metallic building that has 700 kilometers wide it was a huge intergalactic spacecraft. The boarding platform started to rotate in order to connect with the space craft. Huge amount of coal steam was being released from above to color the spacecraft plasma navigational system. The engineers checked the spacecraft and their computers, and with plasma lasers repaired all the damages. Mission Control contacted the pilots on the spaceship and station system started to download the data from the system. Pot angers on the spaceship were preparing themselves to leave the spaceship. While we were still standing to buy our tickets the pilots contacted the station staff while the ship's engineers reported all the effects they could find and tried to restore the spaceship to its normal ability. Shooting sounds were heard as the platforms from the spaceships were being opened and doors unsealed. Soon a crowd started to leave the spaceship and were being checked by the security guards 
on the platforms with laser scanners. It all that happened while I was standing in this utterly long 2 UE hour Quee moved slowly so slowly that it annoyed me as I hated standing in Quee's. But there was no other way since I wanted to board that ship I needed to stand in the stand QUEE for some hours, or even days depending for the speed, and it did that look as it sends so fast so I had no other option. Of course I wasn't the only one preparing for a trip, Dantalian 2 was waiting for his ride. Where he wanted to go what was he planning this was something I didn't know yet. But it could only lead to trouble as Dantalian was standing on the roof of Earth like black spaceship came down hiding its wings. As it landed, it was shiny black 500 feet wide, and 400 feet high it opened its platform, and created stairs, so Dantalian could enter it slowly Dantalian metered the spaceship, and sat in a comfy red chair. Decorated with gold and having the most comfortable sitting you could find in the entire galaxy. The platform closed, and the spaceship went up immediately speeding up incredibly, as it opened its wings. It was of through the entire galaxy to a place that was unknown to me Dantalian secret would be something that might get essential for this particular storyline. Dantalian sitted in a dark small room aboard the spaceship and watched through a window, how lights, below on the platforms created a golden road due to speed. He was yet again drinking red wine which was probably his favorite since he adored its sweet taste. Dantalian was enjoying his luxury. Dantalian is the most powerful lord known in this side of the universe. He is worthy to be the member of the original 666 the association that incorporates the most powerful and original ancient tour lords. This association compromises from the exactly 666 original members that established the criminal hellish world as we know it. The origins of this organization are kept in secrecy and its members are feared in the entire mega civilization which is indeed a great accomplishment to be known in that higher mega-civilization, and they um, sadly I can only wish for that kind of fame. Blaze Master is not as that powerful. Meanwhile still I was standing in that very long and annoying 2 UEE. HMM it's interesting people always stand for different things. Some stand for breed others stand for money, but wherever you go you always find people standing at some kind of tradition that you stand in quiz. Interesting standing in quiz may be even an social event, as sometimes people befriend each other while standing in a QUEE. People socialize in quiz in order to shorten the time they're standing in these quiz. I do wonder people who do not stand in quiz must be very sad entities. They are not able to socialize well since they do not participate in the quiz they are left out from the entire process. Quays are a very complex sociological process that involves demons and people standing together and waiting for their returns. Sometimes it takes a significant amount of time before one can finally get to the place of destination in the QUEE. This time is then used by them to understand each other in some way. Quays make both races bond each other through a simple share of interest. Every body of us wants to get to the end of the line, and so we wait patiently until we get there. It's a painful and slow process that would be boring if you were to stand alone. But when you stand with others you can sometimes try to talk with them or overhear them talking about their problems. Imagine how their life really looks like. It's like being a witness to the lives of these people that are standing in the QUEE. It's an incredible experience, if one looks at it that way. It's something unique, a quite rare predicament. It's something that might be interesting by itself cause it's a self-closed reality, a rare opportunity to be a witness of a different kind of world, something that doesn't usually happen or take place in the world we usually know a transition of knowledge. People and demons learn and teach about themselves and quiz what's the truth and what's the lie you can find out if you're willing to listen. For slowly people and demons cut themselves out from such relationships, either it's because of the time or duty or importance, but in Quee's people and demons that are forced to stand in the QUEE for days are forced to understand each other, and to rely on each other it's impossible otherwise you need to get to know the persons closer yourself, and be able to help them, or use them to help you. Sometimes it's necessary to feel compassion for your newly meet companion, that shares the burden of standing in the QUEE. The QUEE world is sometimes a little bit better than the world without quiz, sometimes only by sharing something with others you can truly understand others, sometimes it's just that kind of rule, that is the reality. 
That's why standing in quiz can become something beneficial, as it helps to enlarge one's horizons and unites different races that believe in their respective different roots. So of course when I stand in that QEE I too taken apart in that social process all thought a man an outcast. There was no reason to rebel as it was a simple course this action and my show I lead too. Every action has its own consequences and logical occurrence. The way the world is constructed is defined by one's actions and consequences of the choices and events put in motion. That's why my world is slightly different from the worlds of others. I see a different unseen angle of reality that bounds me or encircles me. The difference is so unique that others put in the same situation are unable to notice it as it's something so extraordinary that it has no definition in their own worlds, in the reality as they see it, and that's why despite the fact I was standing in a QUEE with others, for me the QUEE wasn't the same as others viewed it cause I was able to view and participate in quiz hidden mechanics. Finally I bought the ticket, after a few days has passed, and I was able to get on that ship by its platforms it closed its platforms, and the huge structure that was the ship lifted itself up and flew straight out of a huge hole. It then lifted itself above the platform flying to our destination. I walked in the spaceship around people and demons even here I was lost in some kind of world and in some kind of society. Even here it was visible so I couldn't do anything about it. I simply joined the social structure which would exist only one day cause, once we land on planet Hayun as the social structure this unique world will be over as all participants will leave this place, and the new world will take over the continuity of the worlds. Chapter 9, Travel Why do people travel? What does it mean to travel? People travel cause they wish to get to places they have not seen, they want to be witnesses to things they don't know yet. Traveling is a very complex idea it means moving from one closed space to another one from point A to point B this is what travel is it's moving. Why do people and demons move why aren't they satisfied with what they already have? It's in their nature to be bored with constant similarity in their lives with stability all thought stability is ironically the thing most of them pursue. To be in stable relations and environment is and desire for many so how come travel all of a sudden how come change? Why change it's all about this nature, once you get what you want you want what you cannot get it has always been like that since the beginning of the time. People and demons living in peace are bored with it and desire war. And people and demons living in war desire peace both of these groups idealize opposing ideas. But if you look classily at all of this you understand that both living in peace and war has its own troubles and bad sides. Lives are filled with ordinary day-to-day -day problems each path has its own problems even mind thought it does not appear like that. So of course people and demons travel to other sectors only to find out that life in these other sectors is pretty much similar to the life in their sectors just the background is a little bit different and language may not be similar but overall the problems remain the same after all we're a part of the same global society of the same global culture and structure. The same world that surrounds us all thought the places are different, and we all also share the same ideas, then why do people and demons travel? Perhaps it's because we all need a scientific and fact-checked confirmation of this state. That's how our mind works about travels there is also another need we want to believe there is a place where our kind of problems do not exist we want to believe that pure ideas can become reality. However reality is complex and we refuse to see the gray color. In all of the specus we want to see things that stand out and are easy to understand like black and white. That's why wherever we travel we refuse to see the truth of the place we're in even if it's obvious. Instead we only wish to see what is bright and colorful and believe in false propaganda that shows to us all the positive aspects we want to believe in after all it's only our own place that is a mud hole all else is beautiful paradise but in reality this paradise is as false as the mud hole we come from. It's simply disguised in more colorful locations, and has some astonishing aspects but society even in the paradise remains the same. That's why paradise society will always be similar to the one in hell thought hellish society is more vulgar than the one in paradise. But then again what's his vulgarity? It's paradoxically truth about our world's ignorance and our own bad aspects, vulgarity, and there is just like it is it's no life. If we make fun of someone in vulgar way it's because we want to belittle him, but we are billeting and humiliating ourselves true. 
that vulgarity is truth as truth does not need any colorful bequises, nor any refined forms true may be there and nude all thought these kind of things are vulgar. So vulgarity could mean truth in a way, that's because for these deadly truth is always some kind of vulgarity. If you say that a king starveth his suspect you'll be called a person that is vulgar and forced to apologize, despite the fact it was true. So we have that interesting point people, who are vulgar are at least true to themselves at least if the vulgarity means truth. However stupid vulgarity means always ignorance. Ignorance are lines dress up in vulgarity that pretend to be some kind of true, but they're not vulgar but cool they do not offend. Which is the sole proof that it's controlled a lie, that acts, as a true we all know of these examples, and how many of them were forced to obey in the society. World is built on lies after all so it's only logical things are just like that. So why do people and demons travel the answer is simple they want to be lied to, that's why they do it. They want to be lied to, and believe that there is an other world, where only beauty and justice exists where people and demons possess some kind of ancient and forgotten wisdom. So they refuse to see their ignorance ugliness and corruptness all for the sake of preserving that false illusion. They deem to be real, or for the sake of believing in something, that might have no real value at all. However travels even if created from such deceptions are in fact a way of understanding ourselves, and our limitations. These can only be understand in situations that contrasts very badly to ones we know. The cultural differences create different situations that might not be properly interpreted by ones from other cultural circle. These situations often get a new meaning in another cultural circle all thought they mean something already in the one word from that's what's the most paradoxical one situation can have many meanings in different cultural circles. And this also is only understandable after one takes the effort to travel to a different cultural circle. Traveling however, as I said is a complex process and while I was drinking some red wine in my room caving lying in an comfy bed and watching television I was still traveling because the spaceship was traveling and I was aboard it. Despite me not moving I was still traveling cause the spaceship I was on was moving and heading to our next destination. The spaceship was a local pass anchor and merchandise carrier, that would always infinitely go the same path. Despite it going from May to be constantly its whole existence it was still traveling, as it was travel by definition. Me who was going to multiple places all the time was also traveling by definition, because the world travel means to go somewhere. In that meaning even these that go to work or schools are in fact traveling. So the path I walk is always full of travelers that travel to their different destinations they travel even if they go the same path always because that's what traveling is to go somewhere. To go to a place you are not in is the meaning and full definition of traveling. So once more what is traveling it's an experience of different the poetry of revelation. I was lying in a comfy standard bed on a standard room in that spaceship nothing to fancy and watching television. The television showed its programming some quiz show. I was again thinking about these stars, how they shine in the darkness of this entire universe. In ancient times people lived on planets, and could only travel on them that was how much their world was limited. They could travel only on the planet, that was it. Of course today people if they want to can travel entire galaxies, or even dimensions. As I do often, I thought normal people will need devices in order to travel in two different dimensions. While I do it at will isn't that something that's the true might and glory of Blaze Master? I traveled since I became Blaze Master all thought there were some breaks. But overall I always traveled it took me an entire eon already and chain of events which most of them I don't remember even. They all are blurred as if they were erased somehow you see my lifespan may be the infinite but my brain's capacity isn't so eventually I forget the things I don't think too often. That's why I no longer remember who I was originally now in Blaze Master cause that's the only name I remember, and I travel cause that's the only lifestyle I remember so I'm an eternal traveler Blaze Master. That's who I am in this reality that's what you can call me everything becomes dark after it's forgotten and it cannot be retrieved even the memories of yours emotions, or love it all fades away once you forget the reason why you are in love with somebody it goes away. However you cannot get bored with my life cause it always takes me to places unknown and always put it in very drastically different situations sometimes I can have a stable life and after couple of pound or years in a wanted fugitive on a run. 
Life that does not and doesn't have to be boring if it's not all and the same. Eternals often change places and travel are always living different lives I can be a great villain, and in few millennia I will become a hero that's how it is. Because different places interpret reality differently that can be also learned by traveling, so it's important to remember that what makes all things so different in different realities. Traveling always changed the reality of the one that travels it's essential to understand it. Of course I was used to it cause I was the eternal traveler. Few hours have already passed only few more and my trip would reach its destination. In traveling it's all about reaching different destinations that's how it all works. My experience wasn't supposed to be so different I needed to get to a place that was to be my destination. I traveled a long way to get here through the tunnels I got to that skyscraper. Where I discovered a plot that used genetics for something very sinister for power. I escaped to my safe heaven and from my safe heaven I started this new journey that lead me to Lampo's club and because of that made me be attacked by some kind of military and now I'm here. Flying comfortably on a bed in a spaceship going to Hayden this planet trialed by the hellish Queen Lilith I expected to land in the capital of the planet Historia and then plane to make my way to the castle that was located in the center of this metropoly. That was my plan how real it was to become I would find out later on. For now I'm really thinking about that and other stuff. Overall I'm always thinking about something calculating analyzing understanding it's always been my strong parts. I was the eternal thinker which could be my advantage or my disadvantage given a certain situation that could arise. When you travel you also have plenty time to think, so that's what I did I think using the time I had to do it, and resting of course. Resting is pleasant and necessary when you're traveling so you need to know when the time is appropriate for resting it's important and essential if all you know that. It's an basis of an entire well-made operation that is called traveling. Resting is essential in traveling, as it allows you to restore your energy consequently it makes you stronger and your mind becomes more clearer. So you need to know and understand the important value resting is in our everyday life as well as in traveling. It's always important to know that it allows you to gather the resources strategize your thinking allows you to rest to forget a while about all these important things you need to remember it allows you to go somewhere else it's very important in traveling it's very important. Resting is essential in everyday life all thought one may say that traveling is a form of resting. Indeed that is true as well people and demon travel cause they want to rest go away from the reality that binds them and makes them exhausted. It's their need to go away to cut the contacts with the outside and emerge themselves in their illusion. So they travel to places they don't know. To places where they're not known as well in order to escape from the brutal reality that binds them to much and slaves them to heavingly. They wish to escape from what binds them and slaves them to much. The people and demons want to abandon this reality leave it behind and yet paradoxically they want to maintain it as well. This creates an interesting paradox I meant on earlier. They wish to abandon something and yet they still want to maintain it. It's a paradox it's a paradoxical wish. Two things that are opposite to itself you can't have these two things you can have only one of these things. That's how it is that's how it was always because people and demons are complex and the complexity of them might be interesting. Travels or reasons for traveling are complex too they are complex and paradoxical as well. That's how it works in this world that's how it's always been. So why do people and demons travel what do they want to wake by it? It could have been the topic for this lengthy debate but how much we can talk about how much this can be analyzed the time flew past and suddenly I was arriving at our destination. The spaceship was approaching and beautiful blue planet. The planet that was known as Hayunas or Hayum as these two names were in use. We were landing on it very soon. The planet's ancient natural worlds from where both of our races begun their journey of evolution in ancient times we were confined to living only on planets on its land surrounded by blue masses of water. That's how our civilization originated from primitive tribes that tried to conquer different natural aspects to make their lives more easier and acceptable. The first was adaption of fire. Then came the wheel and that's how our civilization slowly started to take a journey to its current state many eons of eons after. The planets are our original homes places from which we all developed. 
So what are planets? Planets are places from where our journey has started this where humanity started to walk on their own planets are our homes. There were times when there weren't any platforms no demons etc. These were the times where human lived only on planets, and dreamed about leaving it, and starting a voyage to stars. Our civilization was born from these dreams that's why it came to be in the way we know it now. Because dreaming is as important as dreams that can change the world and create a better place it's our dreams that can break all the barriers. Today planets remind us about these dreams but they're also Eden's paradises we once abandoned cause we decided to travel between the stars. The mega civilization was created because people dreamed about traveling somewhere farther than they knew they wanted to break all the boundaries and that's how our world was created. This was indeed why it exists in the exact way we know now, but no one of them could foreseen how far this dream will go how far this will be developed into an reality. The reality we know is based on traveling after all the traveling done by people, information changed into electric signals that can sometimes travel with the speed higher than light join the entire galaxies, and a simple travel of products and ideas that's why our civilization is so great. The truth also travels and I'm not only talking ABOA these religious truth that mix some facts with corresponding political ideology. Everything travels distances, and everything is shared in our intergalactic globalized society. The world as we know was created because people and demons love traveling that's the whole truth. That's the fact in this matter so there is nothing else that can be said in that matter. Or maybe there is. Because why people and demons like to travel so much, but perhaps it's maybe an answer you yourself should find out. So ask yourselves why do you like to travel so much? Why do you travel? What's the reason behind these actions, behind the fact you're moving from one place to another? Do you know why? Can you tell us? Please do not be afraid your opinion matters. We finally landed, and I left this past as crap. Do you want to know what I saw? First I saw a beautiful blue sky full of white cotton like clouds. It was so blue like it was full of water. In fact I had an impression of standing above and upside down a huge water tank, a giant water tank, and I was even afraid a little that I might fall into that water from the ground I was standing. It was a truly shocking experience for one such as myself that usually lives in a world that is covered in eternal darkness. In the center of the sky there was a huge ball of fire shining incredibly white. It was the star that made it so bright here due to an diffusion of light through the planet's atmosphere, the thing that didn't exist on platforms. I was standing on an ancient natural world in front of me saw mazes of buildings white skyscrapers and typical lore similar our fashion you could find on mega civilizationally platforms however here they look differently in the world that was so bright. The view indeed was very different than the one I used to on the platforms. So many trees lakes and air that was different from the stable one on the platforms a cold breeze that might be a little unpleasant, a variety of windy sensations you cannot feel on always stable platforms, yes this world was so much different than the one shrouded in eternal dark sky. Here you could see brightness something that didn't exist in the world that was covered in eternal darkness. I entered the capital of planet Hayden as the planet where light made everything incredible beautiful. The eternal paradise some choose to abandon. It's an incredible question that needs to be asked why would you want to abandon a world that is so beautiful as the one I was in why was it happening? The short answers are the best people and demons love to travel. Chapter 10 The Gardens of Lilith What is the most scariest thing for a man? When he wants and can have it. Do you know what I mean? All of you should already understand what I mean. Yes, every woman or woman that can decide whether she wants it or not that is indeed a horror threat to all males cause then they understand that in reality they are the ones to be called the weakest sex as it's a desire they cannot don't want to abandon. That's why for ages independent women's were being portrayed as hideous which is devouring children or medusas that turn all adventurers who just coincidentally happen to be male into statues. That must be her right thing for all machos that's true reason why Lilith became a dark lord because she didn't agree to the fact that women should be beneath men strange we live in an equal society yet we still try to keep our womans under us it's really an interesting desire true her wish might have been selfish but was she really ultimately wrong? Lilith crime is not abandoning God nor leading humans into sin but in fact wanting equality with man as she was created in the same manner she was equal to Adam. 
Yet this right was not acknowledged because even by God she was sentenced upon creation, to be merely Adam's sex slave. If God sins, that would indeed be one of the examples, where God himself sinned. Because where feelings or dignity have role, to play cold logic cannot be the answer, and despite her reason for creation being that Adam should allow her to be equal or at least put in an effort to win her heart things must woman have for granted like what romantic feelings weren't there for Lilith, and yet we consider her a witch a monster, that eats children was her punishment really just she is one of the examples, that puts the entire morality. In doubt Lilith is the one that showed us God's lies yes even the mighty eternal and good father has things he lied to us or maybe simply Navelli didn't take Lilith feelings into an account as she was morally created as the thing for Adam. Naturally this made her feel disgust for all males she considers them weak and annoying and takes great pleasure devouring them and making them insane all by sex as like she says sex is good. She's perhaps the most feared independent woman as she knew how to make our weakness into her weapon she turned sex into real poison and love into toxic seduction. But she also has a different side males don't usually see Lilith loves all form of life and in fact loved Ian very much despite the fact she was thrown out from there that's why she decided to recreate the splendors of Eden on planet she lived on. Her mansions were always surrounded by beautiful well cared gardens. She was true Ellie the goddess of life sex and death as she loved all these things maybe that was why she is so feared the mega civilization because she has the strength to oppose males that is scary. Her gardens are well cared full of bright colors that symbolize life are also well built and have an easy to understand structure everything has a right place to be and is well equally exponated her main motto is indeed we all are equal one of the Strangest for Dark Lord however its meaning is that we all are equal sexually sounds scary I guess for many it does. Especially for these so called machos yes that's indeed something scary. So I entered this garden that was reminiscent of the mythic Gladen and I saw its beauties as well as something that could terrify an email. I saw bewildered males naked without their ruffial dignity they were morally beasts in this beautiful garden or males were reduced to being sex you all slaves for Lilith she treated them like they treated women's without dignity just like dogs probably just like they deserved. They already had no memories that were lost by them because of Thayer's sexual lust and because of Lilith's ability to drain their life force making her stronger and they were weak. All in garden that was filled with owls, owls, that were her guardians guarding her's position and informing her of an intruder myself as I dared to enter her sanctuarium without being invited that could be a crime that could have grave consequences as the queen of lust and life that didn't like trespassers but maybe I hid in her soft spot. So I was observed by these wise birds. Owls after all are considered to be the most intelligent among animals and that's why Lilith relied on them for protection as they were both faithful and wise and definitely more wiser than these males I saw. I ventured into this lustful garden a garden might look innocent, but it was a design trap to have males captured in their lustful dreams for eternity, as all fruits were created for the purpose of the lustful deception and increasing one's sex you all desires. These then took place of one's common sense and made him a servant that would do all orders given by the queen. The beautiful strong warrior of darkness that could have the heart fragile as child's one. The garden had another dangers, than just its deceitful nature it was full of serpents that occupied tries and were ready to attack anyone with intentions to hurt their queen they were also her true guardians ready to attack they would definitely never betray her these animals were true loyal protectors as she never trusted any humans or demons. This was the tree garden of sinners where among beautiful flowers sinners were exposed given a place for the equal among all the beautiful flowers made a contrast of beautiful nature and disquisting human nature. This was an exposition of human lust and beauty innocence of nature. Interesting comparison human degenerated lust and the beauty of innocent nature the sin and saved victim and the oppressor. A shocking comparison that was made to never forget about our own weakness and the one seeking the lustful queen should be aware of that should understand because that could be used by them it was no joke but a gentle warning if you're afraid turn back or face the consequence be ready for judgment be ready to face all punishment you deserve this place will not help you it will throw you to darkness beware of this deceitful but beautiful place 
guardians were already passing their judgments about me and my actions, and following me classily interested in my actions, as I was being shown how weak I was, because I was a male would I go insane, and run away seeing the corpses of these that were killed out of pity by the serpents, because that served to end their suffering. Because the queen was merciful to allow that. The serpents were dancing and they were dance showing off themselves they were not evil just creatures that just like their queen that wanted to live and enjoy their life they were also playing for the dead soul to rest in peace offering God what they could they were dance. Strange as these serpents knew the value of life they were taught to respect all living things by their queen. Strange cause they were being considered to be cursed even thought they still didn't mind praying to God that cursed them. These serpents were all males that died in the garden they workers to remain there and learn about the life anew from the most humiliating position created by God. Not just males actually all sinners that didn't treasure life that didn't understand these that excited became owls that had authority over serpents. If the owls learned more their souls were freed and allowed salvation and rebirth as humans who then lived according to knowledge they acquired in that punishment, so there was some hope even for these serpents someday their punishments will end they will be able to be reborn and that's why they danced along the corpse and dying one to give him this message of hope that someday this nightmare will make him more strong so this deceitful was effective because humans that entered here had closed their hearts, and in reality Lilith hated only these males, that punished woman for their mistakes she knew they were lying to themselves. This power was also really an apology from God, that understood his wrongdoing, and gave her power to judge these that make unjust things to woman, and she decided to honor his law and words. So Lilith was the one that was the victor despite being portrayed, as and which she stood up for what she believed was right not just for her, but for all women that women are equal to man everywhere, and don't have to beneath any man at all they have the right to choose that. Despite the fact this was maybe a selfish wish, or not appropriate one she decided to stood up for that as many of her followers now do they do indeed fight for justice. The Queen of Darkness and Lust HMM Interesting the Lady Queen of Lust was observing with her faithful white owl on her, she was wearing her blue and very revealing attire not caring to be modest. She definitely had no need to be modest she was the queen of this place, and could do, as she pleases. She watched me with enjoyment intrigued by the fact I did not fall into despair, like all the others that entered here before me she corrected her pink hair, and still wondered why I didn't fall into the darkness it kinda entertained her. As she thought I was probably out of my mind coming here she smirked evil thinking about something useful she saw a child in me she got fooled by my look and by my enough you all behavior my cariefness made her laugh because she thought how could I be so foolish to think there's escape from this there was no escape from this. I could only be let it go but only if you deserve that favor and would I be worthy or deserving to be granted such favor that would be showed and discovered as she smirked. Her owl flew in my direction, and flew a quiet distance it was her greeting and invitation to a lustful trap, from now on it'll be her thing her plaything, and will I be discarded after what evil tests has the queen of lust prepared for me? The owl circled above me few times, and returned to the queen, and suddenly she appeared in front of me and so she started to mock me, are you lost boy? She asked while standing in a blue attire, that revealed her nude body. I know where I'm going nice garden queen of lust I replied and looked at her as she grabbed my hand come now boy you entered a forbidden territory wanna dance let's dance boy she took me very closely to her body so I could feel her and then we started to dance a dance to no music or more actually we danced to music of the wind owls and serpents which made some noise so the queen could enjoy her dance with me as I danced with the queen I was not alone as serpents and evil owls were dancing in the way they knew owls flying in the air and serpents tickling us on the ground. The queen was embracing me not afraid trying to wake all my senses up make me being her slave. You're so cold she replied when it didn't go as she wanted I kissed her on the cheek and she smiled gently as we continued our dance. Aren't you afraid? I fear no man the queen whispered to my ear, and thrown me on the ground, and thrown herself on me, you like it rot I replied she hided my face, and got up laughing in an insane manner, it'll make you lose yourself in your lust boy, get up we did not finish our dance she pulled my hand, and again embraced me, and we continued our dance. And we continued our weird dance to the music give to us by this place the music made from agony of the sinners.
voices of the serpent Sandow, and the wind that played in the garden and was the solely witness to this unusual happening to this event that would scare anyone seeing it, or made him go insane, as it was a dance to a hellish music. But still I didn't mind, as I liked this strange dance with the queen not because I wanted to take her and make her mine, but because I never danced, and it was my first true dance, and I feel good with it all thought this was a weird dance. Owls were flying near my and her heads and serpents were encircling ours leg. that was the dance of the curse the one no one shouldn't dance if he's not ready to be punished this was how all thought it seemed and looked to be a paradise. She was touching my body with hers wanting to wake my lustful dance but it did then thought it got her impatient so she started to touch but it did not work as I was more interested in that strange dance. Ignoring the things she done to me she thrown me to the ground making serpents get out of my way. As I landed on the ground she looked at me, you're a wonderful dancer and a terrible lover she replied no it looked away for a while as I got up and started to clean myself. Cause you're rot. You're not gonna let me go. That easily do you? By the way you dance well my queen I replied she smiled gently and started to laugh to herself. Are you hungry? She asked looking at me with her blue eyes. She then took my hand and pulled me running somewhere. As I was pulled I was able to ask her where she is pulling me and she replied with we're gonna have a feast boy and so she pulled me along with her own maidening ambition. She was ready to test me to break me in any known way you can break a man I work or would stand that or be punished by the queen of lust. The green bush covered the dark secret of the gardens created by the dark queen it was a place where sinners were to be punished. That was the sole reason why now I was lead to her always dark mansion the palace and ancient temples Thailand dark temple of lust. The darkness and smell of blood was overwhelming corpses lying in their place to rot and everything goes back to nature here everything reused here. Paintings that were hanging on walls reminded that ancient legend how Lilith became the one she is and how it was the lust of man that pushed her in the deeps of hell, all was told in magnificent ancient paintings I was able to see while being pulled somewhere by the Queen of Lust. My ordeal was just to begin my test was also to start the Queen of Lust will now have some fun at my cost. It was nothing I could avoid it as I knew what I was getting myself into. Chapter 11 The Test After a while she thrown me down from the stairs and I not even noticing started to tumble down the stairs and fall into hard ground she was standing above on the stairs close to the door now boy make me a feast she yelled ordering me and left closing the doors and apparently locking me inside the cell kitchen combined with that basement I needed to look around as it was obvious I wasn't going out until I grant her request make a feast she says make it from what HMM I hate being forced to do these things I said it to myself trying to cheer myself to get to the work. Luckily I was a great cook so first I started to look around myself and analyzing the place I was just thrown into. It was a huge dungeon combined with a kitchen and a storage area it was full of different products and despite its gruesome atmosphere it had all the necessities. I looked at the boxes in which vegetables were being kept I saw potatoes. Now that's a good start I said to myself, so I walked to the place, where potatoes were being stored I looked at them all covered with dirt as they always are fresh. The queen knew where to get her ingredients the potatoes, were first class I needed a bowl, a knife, and another bowl and water, so I could cook the potatoes. I looked around and left the place, where potatoes, were being stored and looked for some bowls, and put the knife, and of course I looked around walking in this dark place that didn't allow me to see the things, before I bumped on them all thought due to some small light, that came in from different places I could discern general shapes of the object and understand what they are. So I walked slowly looking for anything from the things I wanted to find at first I found at a fireplace this was an useful information. The fireplace was a small creek, like hole filled with always hot Ferrelli magma, in which I would fall into if I couldn't see it from distance. Once I came close this dungeon was as wide as the entire mansion was and full of mace-like corridors, so cooking in a place like that was not easy, as it had in reality many rooms all thought it didn't seem like that from the place I entered it was a maze of corridors and rooms. The rooms that were covered with darkness, and invisible corridors that I would always bump into an and in that way discover if they were existence I walked in them blindly not knowing where I'm going and I finally found some huge water containers full of water here water was stored 
However again it wasn't the place I was looking for, so I left it, and went looking again in this incredible darkness. Looking for the thing I wanted to find. In the darkness and invisible corridors that were supposed to make me go insane I was to lose my mind in despair knowing that I can't go back to the place I came from. It was supposed to create that kind of illusion to me, but I was prepared I was used to different mazes, and I was not afraid to venture in them even entire eternity. So I slowly walked hoping not to bump on the walls I walked to find the bowls and pots, and to get all next easier things I needed to perform my task I even conducted a plan of what I will do. Yes this was not a problem for the Eternal Blaze Master, as I knew what exactly to do in that kind of situations. I was an outcast so I wasn't bothered by the fact I was lonely here I was used to be Lonelli so I didn't mind that fact. I walked and finally I got to another storage area this time with the exact things I was looking for multiple kinds of pots knives and bowls I entered the storage area and looked at the impressive arsenal of metallic bowls, pot knives and other accessories used by chefs it had everything out these things were dusty and unused. I however didn't mind that fact I just simply looked around and was analyzing what would be useful to me from that arsenal. The variety of metallic objects was astonishing there were small, huge, spiky, and even some weird. There were gold objects and normal metallic all not used from a long time and a little bit dirty. Of course there were many that were dangerous so I needed to be careful not cut myself with anything. I was deeply in my thoughts about which one of these metallic objects would be the best choice there were even flat metallic rectangulars that didn't seem to have any use all thought maybe could be put to use or there were secret necessities to use. Of course that's what it was really and having in mind that magma creek I took one medium sized so I could put it over the magma creek like bridge. And I went closer to look at the pots and the bowls I needed two pots one which I would use for peeling potatoes and the other one I could use to transport the peeled potatoes I looked very carefully. I analyzed them thoroughly and picked two medium sized pots and one red bowl I put them on that metallic rectangular and was analyzing and searching for some knives. I picked three knives that looked okay and left the place went into these corridors the darkness that fills them was the only witness to my struggle to my fight. Why was I doing what was the reason I complied with all of that instead of getting away and forcing Lilith to help me? Maybe because it was the right thing to do, that was also I played her game walked corridors and found the room where water was being stored I enter it opened the bottle and washed all the things I needed to the knives, bowl, and pots and even that metallic rectangular I was planning to use I didn't mind to do that. I washed them completely a few times making sure they were clean all of them and once I finished made my way through the dark corridors to reach the place where potatoes were stored I walked in that darkness that symbolized the world I lived in dirty and dark that was what I usually saw maybe I was wrong but that was how I saw it. That's what I thought about it and that's how I saw it I made my way to the potatoes and once I got there I started to peel them and throw them into the first pot while peels were thrown by me to the other one. I done it slowly until I got 40 of them I left the pot with peels and took the pot with peeled potatoes that's metallic rectangular and a bowl I made my way to the magma creek and once I got there I butted the rectangular over the magma creek like a bridge allowing it to heat enough while I squished the potatoes in the pot making them a miasma. And I poured it all on and that hot metallic rectangular and with another knife I cut it out eight circles creating eight potatoes pancakes with that. I waited for them as they were shallow fried and then took them into my bow eating one leaving seven for the queen I rushed back to the door which was closed. I waited for a while for her with my bowl of potatoes pancakes. The doors opened and I left the room she was standing at the doors I showed her my potatoes pancakes she took one and eat a part of it need spices look how dirty you are boy go wash before we feast she said and I was dragged by some man to the bath where I was thrown in in my cloths. She who came alone looked at me, these cloths are dirty changed them she said, and left the bath so I took off my soaked cloths and bathed in a warm bath. Thinking about the things that happened to me just now I was wondering did I want her test or was she planning something more sinister after our feast. The palace of darkness Lilith's sanctuary and was full of male servants that were almost naked without any cloths they took my cloths somewhere and give me some new ones a golden pig gamma. 
her bath was luxurious similar to what I had at my dimensional mansion it was a huge pool filled with a huge quantity of hot water, unlike my golden walls here walls were red and full of symbols related to Eden, from which Lilith was outcasted I could see for example an golden apple, or more exactly an apple-like fruit the symbol of Adam's sin against God, and what exposed his lying nature to him indeed Lilith despised Adam yet loved him in a way and they or relation could be compared to the pair of the green siblings she wished that all misery would fall for Adam, and yet would come to save him if his life would be endangered. Lilith was perhaps one of these women that hate men so much that they cannot stop loving them cause the pain from that kind of relation brings them some kind of emotional pleasure, or maybe it's because every woman is like a flower of rose that is spiky outside and soft inside. Lilith definitely was a rose that kind of woman who loves you as much as much she tries to hurt you. It was one example where toxic emotions gave true form of an intersectional love. What would that mean for me I would definitely find out later, but for now I was enjoying my bath hoping that at least for now I'm kinda safe. But was I wrong I would find out eventually. The water was warm not too hot and not too cold everything was well balanced just like in her garden. Everything had a place here. After I finished my bathing I dressed myself in the provided golden pyjama, but I found out that my bag containing all my belongings were taken away, as well probably it was the reason why I was bathing now my possessions were being checked by the Queen of Lust. Dressed made my way through the red carpeted dark hallways to the place where Lilith was drinking a huge banquet room with a huge table. Ah oh, come come on boy. Look how cute you look did you like the pyjamas I prepared especially for you? Sit down you must be hungry the queen invited me to join her she was sitting on a golden throne having in front of her all the best delicacies this planet had to offer. Brought to her especially for her pleasure she was drinking some wine while her male servant seated me on a chair in front of the queen and the others were bringing in new foods my potatoes pancakes were standing far away. Do you know what happened to my bag I asked her politely I had it thrown away it was dirty and full of trash she answered my question smiling. I need to get it back I explained, is there something valuable in that pile of trash she said making an evil smirk, eat now. She ordered me so I decided to follow her orders, so I don't get punished. You must feel lonely here right eased her she looked at me very seriously, do you have some kind of problem boy? She said it, no I answered. Never mind she answered while giggling a little bit, I'm a forbidden flower wanna play. She asked me with a very soft voice. While I was talking to her a music was being played by the almost naked man that were her servants. They played this music cause the Queen of Lust enjoyed music she enjoyed everything that had a melody and harmony. The man's clocks were also a reminiscent of Eden so were the instruments they played the music on Lilith created her own paradise for her own pleasure. Her blue eyes were shining as the eternal which Lilith was watching me very classily observing me as if she would want to memorize my face. Why would she want to do that could be a good question to ask I eat the foods that were being gathered around the place to her surprise I eat my potatoes pancakes as well so she tried some of them as well not knowing fully why but not wanting me to eat them all alone. So she took few for herself without any hesitation as soon as I started to eat them. Well but was it safe to these her luck that wasn't I making an easy risk it would be revealed in some while. We both enjoyed our meal for a while, and I didn't worry her future requests in fact I started to feel sure of myself meanwhile the queen silently was observing me, intrigued by my strange behavior, as I eat it. I had my servants ram through to your bag, and they found some interesting stuff, you were the mole at that Dantarian complex, what were you looking for boy? She asked interrupting the silence, answers my queen I explained, and looked at her as she seriously was observing me, what kind of answers boy? She asked while eating some seeds and looked at me with her blue eyes demanding an answer to her question, why did these people need to die? I asked her looking straight into her eyes, why do you ask this, why would I care about people dying she answered smiling, what naive thoughts are queeing up inside that head of yours what is it that you're looking for boy? She asked me yet another question, while I was analyzing the hidden motives behind her asking me these, she looked at me amused childishly amused, but this could have been an act she could lure me into a false sense of security, and then try to strike me down with her hidden ace I did not know what she planned to do. You've become silent boy. 
speak now tell me about yourself she said, obviously amused. Very well my queen my name is Blaze Master, and it's not easy to explain what exactly I am. I'm a traveler that likes to get himself in numerous troubles I create these troubles by myself, and then make others understand why these troubles were created so easy in the first place I teach others, that there are other things important in this world I explained, oh so you are a missionary. You don't look like a priest the queen became surprised looking at me clavelly, mocking me while at it. No I'm not a priest in the virus I explained my role more obviously, and clearly wanting to explain to her my true reasons, and make my mission clearly understandable. A virus why virus? She asked me surprised with my answer not quite following my weird logic. I have freedom to do what I want without any boundaries, I don't have any authority above me I explained. Then you are simply a free man she explained to me, ultimate freedom is poisonous, freedom. Without any constraints is more dangerous than its lack I explained to her. Why? She looked at me surprised with my answer. She was really surprised by my words. Because ultimate freedom kills responsibility as it renders it absolute, you don't have to be responsible if you have no authority over your actions you can do whatever you want. But at the end the lack of responsibility makes you Lonelli you have no authority but you have nothing other. As well no one will feel compassion to you as well. No one will need you, nor care about you. Because in order to be ultimately free you need to abandon everything that could constrain you including your family and the society you need to be an outcast to be ultimately free and that means you need to be forever alone as you cannot take responsibility for anyone because if you do that freedom will disappear. I answered her question, how cute she answered and patted my hair a little bit. So at the end you are Lon Ellie she again asked me a question, I don't have emotions, I don't feel nothing, as it does and affect me I explained she sighed a bit and looked at me very classily she also jiggled a little bit considering me very childish and yet not you will she was surprised to encounter someone like me it was not you will for her because most of the man she meet tried to make an impression on her. I started to get my interest in her as well, as she looked rather attractive in her clothes, and easy to get but didn't feel quite secure yet to try anything. Actually to be honest I was thinking of getting her from the start, but I was very careful, as I knew her reputation. I didn't want to upset her so I made myself seem to be innocent however my lust which was intelligently being awakened by her seductive nature was strongly starting to get hold of me. I was not above making her mine, as any others tried I also wanted to play and fall into her trap I was like a fly that was being drawn to a fly eating plant, once I get on top of her I won't be able to escape. There was no escaping from that Lilith knew how to seduce males, and how to break them it was normal that even I was no match for her. I tried to cover my thoughts by engaging in conversation with but she knew what I wanted at the end I was no different than these that served her. That was probably the most said truth from all of the things, that I was no different I was the same. Yes I was the same as these that used woman cause in reality I did so too. She was one of the few that made me realize that I too was indifferent in this. That I was weak using woman and girls as a way of feeling self-satisfied, as a way to show that I'm strong that was perhaps one of my darkness weakness when I think about it. I always view myself as being above these that hurted, I viewed my actions as either tests or punishment and that I was given that authority. But it was a lie I made, as an excuse for myself there was no authority nor any reasons for me to do these things I did. They came because I was weak and unsure of myself so I made others believe me in things I didn't trust myself. When you're faced with that kind of knowledge it hurts cause you realize you're not as that good as you think yourself to be the whole illusion vanishes the lie that you want so badly to protect it no more. Indeed hurting others is an act of cowardice, when I raped my victims I was nothing more than a coward using my superior powers against them using the fact that I'm an immortal demon with vast majority of powers and trying to justify myself as being allowed to do these things. But it was all elite nothing more but a self-serving lie. Play's master was also elite to justify myself and explain my cowardice. That's why I wasn't a hero nor a great criminal I was nobody that made self-serving lies for himself in order to survive this was what Lilith without any words without doing nothing showed to me she showed me my true face the one I hid in the darkness. 
It wasn't that I was unable to love at the end it was me who didn't want to love cause I didn't like the fact that if you love someone you need to take the responsibility for that someone's well-being, and I was afraid of that responsibility cause it took away my freedom. That was my justification to what I done. But in truth if you think of it no freedom allows that to be done true freedom is then when we're ready to take responsibility for our actions and allow ourselves to be judged by them not hiding all the bad things. You're not like them at all she answered to the things I was thinking obviously being able to read my thoughts she shocked me. Why wasn't I like them? Since I done many horrible things because of my selfish desires. Yet she didn't seem to mind at all. I had definitely no right to harm these that were innocent, and still I harmed them yet she decided to justify me, why? I was shocked by it some that was something odd. She did that thought despite my shock, she really forgive me that since she smiled gently, and petted my head she somehow stopped looking that seriously scary, as she tried to appear before. I wasn't quite sure why did she stop what was the reason she stopped, you're like a foolish child she replied looking at me very classily, observing and mocking my attempts at understanding her motives. Yes she was so superior in this moment, she was a woman that always superior than any man that dared to come close in not. She would make them all burn in the flames of their desires. She was Lilith after all. Now she decided to play with me she would allow me to get closer to her and would have that done she was planning that from the start. As it wasn't humiliating for her she was a woman that couldn't be humiliated by any man, and she didn't view her nature and body as anything to be ashamed of or anything to despise. She planned to enjoy this proving to me that she cannot be broken not in that way or any other whatever I do I won't be more superior than this woman that was impossible for me now. I was like a fly led to the web in the trap I couldn't even sense once I would lay down I will be consumed. She was a spider woman that would consume me, and so my fate was already sealed there was no escape from this, and so she stands up and walked away I who was lured by her was already in her list, and followed her blindly through the dark corridors to the place I might find my doom, or at least fall her prey. The corridors were dark the carpet was red the stairs on which I was walking following her figure had golden edges. Everything was dark I couldn't sense where I was going my mind was clouded by the will to get closer to her to have her. I was under her spell now I was under Lilith's spell, there really was no mistake. Mind and reason stripped and taken away from me I couldn't see the reason nor did I wish to understand it anymore as if that reason nor my life didn't exist I lost it all in the darkness of my desires. My soul and my essence were stripped of that freedom to decide what I want to do for now that was beyond my control. No it was me who somehow didn't want to regain that control, why? Was that really Lilith's powers that sealed my mind my common sense away was she as that powerful? She was truly a woman to be feared the one that could take everything away the queen of lust dark which Lilith the eternal vampire and the one that punishes. The beautiful seductive which was sitting on her pink bed, inviting me to sit on it to I did that without a second thought without a thought I was so mindlessly lured to that trap. She behaved more provocative and rude without saying the word initiating some sounds that hunted my mind so horribly that I had to get her now. The bed was an classical design huge with a roof over it golden and silk that's how it was she was sighting and I lured by a sat on it too. She came a bit closer and innocently started to play with my head, or more precisely with my hair, as if she didn't know I'm here she gently mocked me and yet lured me closer was it a spell or my own hidden weakness, that was the one thing I wouldn't never understand I looked at her seductive beauty and her clothing that revealed to me her true nature she was not afraid of her body. I turned my head away as she played with the hair and gotten a little bit closer as an animal that is about to be tamed and not a wild beast she was luring me in the false sense of safety I meanwhile looked at her pink bed at the golden columns in the four corners of this bed that were holding the roof the bed was large and isolated from the outside world with a pink sheet that came down from the roof. She came danger loosely close to me and started to kiss me as I turned my head to her and watched her and started to kiss her back playing with fire I embraced her and started to kiss her neck feeling her breast pushing into me she kissed my cheeks and whispered to me bad boy I'll give you what you desire now she ran with whole her mic pushed me down on her soft bed. 
and came above me like a spider on top of an captured fly ready to inject his substance into it. She was ready to subdue me she violently pushed herself on me embracing me tightly not allowing me to escape. She started to kiss allowing me to infiltrate her defenses and break them to get in once she felt me she pushed herself harder and tightening up our connection her breath started to be irregular as I invaded her body and soon warmness entered her body making her moan as she felt that it soon got to the moment where everything culminates and the joy of the night ends as she was kissing me more desperately trying not to be hurt at all finished. It all came to an end the night ended but that wasn't the finish as she pretending to kiss my neck bitted me in it using my lower cautiousness as I wasn't expecting an attack after it she sucked my blood why I was ironically feeling secure and happily aware of what was really going on I fallen asleep tired because of night and become her prey my fate was sealed. Chapter 12 The Questions I was awakened by Lilith's servants by these men, that workers to obey every single one order Lilith give them, or else they would die I was awakened, as she was no more in her bed, and forcefully taken off from the bed, and led it away, as I was just trying to figure out what was happening I was forcefully being lead out of the room, and lead into these dark hallways darkness it appears was. Something Lilith especially liked perhaps it was because of the solitude it brings itself as pure darkness is nothing. Nothing to bother or no one to help is darkness that's why darkness almost always means loneliness being an outcast and living far from others side it was the one thing I and Lilith had in common we despised the society in its form but we did not despise life. We just saw gatherings of any kind to be way to corrupt blinded by their power and authority that it stopped to understand one simple thing just exactly why was the society created what was its reason for existence. I was led away in the dark corridor by four men slaves of the Eternal which the Queen of Lust they were leading me away somewhere even I didn't know where. However I feel no fear as that kind of situation this leading away to an unknown place, for an unknown fate was a thing I was used to after all how many times I was captured beaten and tortured I was made to get used to it after couple millennia that was the other part of my road the one I needed to endure. We came down the golden stairs which were huge and I was taken straight to the bathroom thrown into an shower cabin without allowing me even to take the cloths I was wearing and I said cold water came down from the shower it was unpleasant it was very unpleasant when my hot skin was touched by the icy water I feel a little bit like a dog being washed for his owner it was indeed very humiliating. I started wake up which was very unpleasant and trying to understand what happened last time I touched my neck were the biddings where now I understood I was a prey why and how did I survive. Slowly I realized what kind of dangerous this place was but I was getting to myself I lived so it didn't matter what kind of dangers awaited me I took off her golden pajamas and standed nude allowing the cold water to clean my dirty head and my dirty body it was purification that what it was it wasn't supposed to be pleasant but it meant my sins were being forgiven by the queen of lust and that was perhaps the reason why I still was alive I was happy for that I survived that means I passed this test of hers that was a great achievement because for now I was standing victorious nude but victorious so I allowed the cold water to touch my body now I was all alone in the bathroom no one was there so I could stand in that cold water as long I wanted and I standed not minding the chilling cold making sure I'm still alive. I started to think back what was my reason why did I came here what was I really after and I remembered my quest and feel ashamed I forgotten it. I remembered who is Blaze Master and for what he stands for and what was my duty I needed to find justice for these that were forgotten for these corpses lying lifelessly in that high scraper before it itself turned into ashes they might be gone but cannot be forgotten and that was Blaze Master's mission all along. So OFCOIURSE I couldn't give up. I decided to fight that was my sole reason I took this path the path of Blaze Master and Unique Hero. That could become a villain if it was necessary that could punish even these mad hidden behind the establishment for that kind of fighter was Blaze Master known as a criminal because that was the only way to be able to do it. I forsook in the society and decided to operate outside it couldn't therefore live in its bounds but I could see and get what others couldn't because they were bound to the system by their relatives jobs or other things I was outside of it that was the ultimate freedom. What bad sides it had didn't matter as could take all I had to take all I needed to be able to take all.
and still survive to take it, and remained unharmed as my enemies will use everything in their desperations. That wasn't supposed to be a fair fight, that was supposed to be punishment cruel hideous that was the way I was to be or at least appear. I felt better knowing who am I, and why am I felt better with this as I knew I could ache of everything, and succeed in everything, because that was the way, everywhere had its own path I needed to observe and find it once I find it'll know where to go. I got out from the cabin on the floor there was a basket with my old clocks washed up and my bag with a handwritten note on it, for a foolish child I dressed myself happy that I was able to regain my belongings, and, as I got dressed I checked my bag which was cleaned but had everything in the toil with the exceptions of the documents and discs I found in Dantelian skyscrapers which were taken out. Lilith probably had someone to analyze them so I took the bag and placed it on my arm, as I wear it always now that I was fully dressed and cleaned I made my way out of the bathroom into an unknown looking for Lilith and looking for answers. For the answers I knew I have to know the answers to the questions I needed to be answered for me. The questions that bothered me since the beginning of this journey, why did these people die what was the reason they needed to take that sacrifice what deadly secret cursed them to finish their lives like that. That was the things that covered my mind when I made my way through the dark hallways of Lilith's mansion. I was thinking about these things, and the same things I was thinking during my bath. Lilith meanwhile was sitting on her throne listening to her servants, that reported to her about different things she was dressed differently than last time, in a more modest costume a fashionable dress black dress with armor she had a huge but thin sword near her. She was now very serious sitting in the huge room her throne room, it wasn't a sure thing would she have time to bother with me but I needed to talk to her whether she had the time or not so of course I couldn't stop. So I entered the throne room where she was sitting and made my way along the red carpet to the far place she was sitting above all things watching me from above apparently amused that I had the courage to appear in front of her. She was gently smiling, and watching me, as I got up walking to her on the stairs, that were sculptured to make a way to her throne. Are you awake now boy? She asked, as I got close to her, yes I am, queen you had your servants stake out some documents and discs, from my bag can I know why? I asked calmly looking into her blue eyes very carefully awaiting her reaction she just smiled, and patted my head with her hand. Because they interested me she answered playing with my hair gently and observing me quite thoroughly. Trying to discover why was I asking her this question thought maybe she knew and actually wanted to tease me a little bit. So you had someone check them can you share what you found out with me? I asked again making her giggle and give me a kiss in a cheek which surprised me as I wasn't expecting one. Nothing can hide from you? You are so thrut, deal I will share with you what I know. I know nothing, I had my servants look into it once they get the results we will know something Lilith announced playing with my hair is obviously amused by my sight and knowledge as she didn't expect me to understand it so quickly. She expected for me to take some time with it, it was something unusual for her to be seen through so quickly and naturally she was amused. What the devil are you? She asked the question smirking and giggling. In the monster I replied what I usually reply in such situation making her laugh out loud amused by the answer cause it was so paradoxical that it became unbelievable, and yet true monsters do masquerade as humans so what was so funny with that? You aren't you ain't you're just a funny Lilith replied laughing so hard that I started to wonder would she die out of laughter. You are a funny one, definitely the most funniest one I ever meet on. Really I replied a little bit offended by her remark and her refusal to treat me seriously. I have you know many are afraid of me I announced but it made her laugh even more louder. Very funny and in retaliation trying to make myself look more serious in her eyes I embraced her and kissed her in the lips after I ended the kiss she growled at me in a very unhumane manner making me shiver a bit pushed me away and giggled you're playing with a forbidden flower boy she announced playing with her hair and giggled more amused with me. What a childish queen she only knew to that my remark and pushed me down from the stairs I fallen down to the ground hitting it while she laughed at that's what you get for calling me childish she explained her mobs for throwing me down I looked above as she was sitting in her throne having fun at my cost. Lilith the dark queen was behaving very childishly teasing me but she shouldn't be underestimated because from my own experience I know that strong demons like to appear weak to create a false sense of security before they really start to fight I myself used that kind of strategy 
Otherwise battles would be boring. Hey boy come up you left me alone Ellie Lilith continued to tease me I had no other option but to comply with her wish so I got up to where she was sitting and sitted down near her legs as she started to pet my hair like a pet yes for her I was a pet. It was an amusing situation and a paradoxical one that refused to be categorized in any kind of logic. I who considered myself free has become Lilith spec but it wasn't a normal situation it was one of these where logic should be discarded and one should allow for the flow of events to take hold of you so we played a little bit teasing ourselves. Aren't Yolan Ali here? I asked her and sit it on her laps which was a very brave and bold thing. Maybe she answered not answering my question and giggling because of that as it was her days again. So you're not afraid of me I asked her again and oh 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 she yelled at me laughing out loudly never adding it as she felt it was necessary to end the sentence. So what are you a child? I asked her teasing her more knowing too well that at this stage I couldn't get her to be more serious so I played with her inner child a little bit. In a child and God's child created together with Adam and equal to him she explained. Wanna know the truth? She asked me looking at me very classily. Sure I replied interested in what she will tell me looking at her who was very enthusiastic about something. I am the immortal God piece of storm wind and dead. I am married wife of Samuel the dark lord of dead. I am Lilith my house sinks down to death my courses lead to shadows these that go to me cannot return and seek the path of life. My gates are gates of death and from here I set off to see oh none who enters here will return and these that feared to posses me will descend to pit to suffer eternal punishment. I was created only to cause sickness to infants. If the infant is male I have dominion over him for eight days after his birth and if female for twenty days. However I swore to three angels that pursued me on the orders of God saying to them that whenever I see you or your names or your forms in an amulet I will have no power over that infant. I agreed to have 100 of my children die every single day. That was the price for my freedom now your turn tell me about yourself she ended her story I looked at her in shock and interested with her as she petted my hair. Come now boy your turn she ordered me with a more harsher tone. Emblaze master and eternal troublemaker and traveler a monster or a knight depending on different situations. I took the path no one chooses because I wanted to live and see things nobody else does and I decided to walk my own path and write my own story not hailing to any authority and trying to helping these that no one else even the angels cannot help I interfere with situations nobody else does. And I walk in places nobody else does that's who I am I am the eternal blaze master I explained my role to the queen of lust making her laugh out yet again. She obviously enjoyed this conversation so I was glad to that it wasn't boring. Thought considering the situation it was hard to expect anything boring to come out from this situation. After all I was sitting on her laps and playing with her we both had something in common I suppose both being beings outcasted by the society cause we insist on being what we are we don't want to get adapted. Throwing out living in the marginus of the society added such indeed that was something she and me had in common so maybe it was because of that that it was so fun to me or maybe cause I like dangerous woman. The storms with lightnings plagued the far away planet. This planet was an mountain one covered with green clouds an ancient temple site. Place where an ancient graveyard prison was located filled with mountains with no life on it thought it could have had life this planet was a special creation of these that was a hidden truth. The secret thaw was not supposed to be revealed was being stored in this forgotten part of the universe. The mountains were in fact a huge temple the planet itself was a temple. A system of ancient caves D.U.G.G. Out billion eons of years an ancient crypt storing something far in its deeps. This world was supposed to be abandoned and avoided it was supposed to never be found. The world. Surface was grayish green and the only form of life that could be found there was mold growing on ancient columns that were serving as the entrance to this huge shrine in the depths of it in the darkness that reached far away a locked grave was located a forgotten tomb of an entity that could destroy the entire universe. That was why the place was avoided that was the secret that was remained to be hidden. The secret so great and powerful that could shake the entire foundation of the known universe. The grave was a huge gate a stone dimensional gate surrounded by many candles and ancient spells. 
so powerful that even the mighty could not break them. The ancient inscriptions warn these that dare to venture here about their immediate doom, if they wish to violate the warnings. What was the secret? What was it? Do you wonder? Do you want to know? I won't tell you yet. The darkness that remained hidden in this grave should not be discovered, should not be known to anyone and should be avoided. For the sake of the universe, as we know it, it was destined to be forgotten an ancient power that should disappear from existence, the existence so veiled that it threatened us all. There are some things that shouldn't be crossed, some secrets that shouldn't be reveled. They should be left in the dark unseen in a place where they cannot cause harm. This ancient and forsaken world keeps such a secret from us, such dangerous powers, that it would be best for you to not know about it. The darkness was supposed to surround this grave for all its eternity, but a black ship was landing on the planet and soldiers were awaiting their lords, in the steps that lead to this ancient temple. They were awaiting the one that with his crazy ambitions could destabilize everything. The ship like a vulture prepared to land was going slowly down as if to catch its prey all thought there was no one there it still wanted to land in the place where soldiers were standing having huge ancient stairs behind their backs, they were awaiting their lord standing still not daring to move they planned to guarantee his safety knowing they will die. Soldiers mission is to die for the one who orders them these demons covered in armors and masks knew this very well, but they were ready to fulfill their roles as requested by their masters, who did not see their value, and sacrifice they were making for his well-being. True they weren't valued by him just pieces he can use in his game and maddening ambition to recreate ancient fear. That was what Antarian desired sitting in his spaceship and watching through the windows on the lightings that had it nearby his vessel. He did not feel any fear nor nothing else lost in his thoughts and desire to destroy everything he deemed to be false. The Dark Lord hated the lies and illusion he believed had taken over the world and viewed destruction as pure he needed to erase the weak line leaving nobody left as no one in his eyes deserved to be spared. They were all weak was what Antalian thought, weak bonds to be used in eternal game was his thoughts about the world that was around him. The Dark Lord refused to see positive things in others thinking of these as a mere act, as something false that should be denied entry into his mind. He lived in a world with no values filled with corporate greed he thought how big shark eat little fish, and despised such a world knowing that it will never get our idea of its filthiness, so he decided to erase all. As when all stops exists everything ends, and the world will return to its pure state of nothingness he valued nothingness very much, and that's why he wanted to turn everything in nothing watching as the world burns repents in his eyes, and suffers its final fate. The soldiers that were standing waiting for his master didn't know about that, they had no ideas about Dantalian's real desires about his real plans they didn't know about that. How could they knew about something as scary as that, that they were dirty in his eyes thought they were really ready to give up their lives for him? Why couldn't Dantalian see their qualities maybe it wasn't the world that he should despise but his limited vision? Whatever it might be Dantalian was ready to carry his horrible plan to the end, and the soldiers were ready to protect him with their lives because they were loyal to him paradoxically it's thanks to the goodness he didn't believe Dantalian was able to get this far with his evil schemes. And he was relying on the trust of these that he viewed to be beneath him was he even conscious of it or didn't he notice? Nevertheless he was ready to carry his plan, as the spaceship was going down landing preparing to touch the ground the background of the planet its lightings and very dangerous. Weather were something that made Dantalian feel better, and he enjoyed watching the destructive powers of nature, yet destruction was what he wanted. He desired it. The Vulture like spaceship finally landed and touched the ground Dantalian has finished his long journey the spaceship hit its wing, the soldiers prepared to great their lord as the spaceship was getting ready to let him out it did its function it brought him here. It opened its doors and created stairs for him so he could walk down the soldiers prepared themselves to great their lord as best as they could proving to him they are ready to fulfill their role given to them by him. The Lord was still sitting in the spacecraft allowing the soldiers to properly form as they did frantically. The soldiers started to form themselves on the stairs in this form one soldier stood on one step of this seemingly unending stairway made from rock sculptured in the cave temple. 
The Lord of Darkness and Talion finally slowly stood up and came to the spacecraft's door. As the soldiers started to see the figure of their beloved Lord, in the darkness of the spacecraft they started to salute him. The Lord smiling came out from the spaceship revealing that it was indeed him who came, and no imposters he came down the stairway made by the spaceship and entered the planet's grounds. He was finally here on this planet. So he smiled to waiting for him soldiers, but did not say a word to them. He who was the Dark Lord didn't to say a word to them because they were his soldiers, and even without words they knew what was the orders given to them to protect his life was their mission even if he didn't care about their lives. The Dark Lord made his way up the stairs being observed and monitored, as he did by his faithful men, who were ready to grab him if he would fall. The soldiers were ready to even carry him up if he would request that, but the Dark Lord was proud of his legs and did not request anything like that so the soldiers didn't make any propositions of that kind, because they were only there to listen to orders and obey them and not propose new things even if they could be beneficial for their master. It was the Lord of Darkness and Talion that decided what they do so there was no reason for them to propose anything if they wanted to make him happy it was not they obeyed his will without asking any easier questions. Because Ark Lord and Talion hated to answer any inconvenient questions and didn't care to answer to anything asked by them so there was no reason to ask any questions just obeying him was not. The soldiers knew that very well so they standed still, as he smiling with a false smile was walking near them every one of the soldiers were ready to obey his will if the order would be directed to them. So they awaited patiently any orders that could be given to them despite this. The Dark Lord passed them silently without even noticing them and not saying a word he passed them quickly, as he was planning to put his plan in motion he couldn't wait to reach that point. Chapter 13 The Gates of Achelion Blue and green are colors of life the blue is the color of sky and means that it's clean however sometimes white clouds create a mosaic on this blue sky. The white clouds that in reality are just water that evaporated from the ground to the sky but were stopped by cold and forced to fall down to the ground once more the life cycle. The water thus goes up just to fall down its endless journey reminds the fate of some ancient heroes that were unfairly punished by gods who were more powerful than the hero because they wanted to give more freedom to weak humans and water is that kind of hero as well punished for that because she brings life but without that it wouldn't come back to bring life as it was because of that curse it came back. So the blue sky is full of white water both colors traditionally mean cleansing and purification because water cleans dirt and that's why the traditional role of cleansing is always associated with water. Ancient rituals called baptism where you need to take a bath in order to clean yourself from all of your sins as if water could have that kind of power maybe it has everything is possible. Water however is also used for drinking, and is present in us in about 60 or 70 percent without it our bodies, whether we're demons or humans would die, it's essential in our material bodies. For water is used by blood which is a treasure that sustains our lives, or more exactly sustain our material bodies, that's why water is essential for our both races, and many others as water is an universal ingredient and its lack would really start to cause problems and sometimes means tragedy for many as the lack of water means death just the same as lack of food. Water is an essential ingredient and that's why it's associated with blue. But in reality water has no color and the blue color of the sky is created by the diffusion of light that hits the planet's surface in a certain angle. Thus the blue color is an illusion of light that was created by the light that was directed to hit the planet's surface in a certain angle. The same light that creates the illusion of the pure blue color is also necessary to create the green color that is present in all plants and also symbolizes life. The green color is created especially for the reason of creating energy from the light that falls down on the plant's leaf. The substance fills the plant and acts as its blood, without it plants would die. The green color is another symbol of life, symbol of nature and its purity, its innocence. The nature is always pure, clean and defenseless. It's always depicted in that manner so naturally everybody believed that of course nature too can be dangerous for life. I myself many times found myself being threatened by man-eating plants they can be more cruel than humans or demons because they don't have any consciousness plants react because certain substance created a certain reaction just like a machine. 
Nature can be cold it won't listen to cries, nor to threats it can't be scared it will slowly and quietly react. But the world avoids that kind of portray, and shows nature which is defenseless against us demons or humans because we want to believe this is the truth and that the nature is a soul pure thing in an impure world. It lies but planting new trees or plants at least allows us to breathe more fresh air and it can be relaxing as it allows us to forget about our problems or the civilization that surrounds us the dark platforms or evil ambitions they disappear closed and stored away from this virgin world of nature that surrounds me in Lilith's gardens as I was doing some chores ordered by her in the gardens. I was holding the shuffle and made it go deep in the ground cutting it and collecting some ground on the shuffle and I took the shuffle up and throw the ground away few distance away creating a hole in the ground. Took some flowers and put them in a small hole and burnt its lower parts allowing the upper parts the more colorful ones to remain in the sunlight. I was the OI in all of this being observed by the Queen of Lust, her serpents that were tying themselves around the tree in order to get higher just to get a better perception of what I was doing with plants independently I was also observed by the owls. As I was repeating the same thing over and over Lilith's gardens were being sprinkled by the sun's light as the celebration of life was taking place in this beautiful and enchanting place. The gardens of Lilith were an enchanting place and its beauty was being showcased in this place a huge area created by her and her servants so she could enjoy that from which she was outcast in her home was a hidden resented memory of the home she felt secure. Lilith wouldn't never admit that. She wouldn't never admit that but she sometimes missed that world despite being treated unfairly there may be it was because of that she created this garden. That could be why she loved life so much. So who was Lilith really should she be categorized as an ruthless criminal or simply a child that herself wished to be able to come back home she broke rules that were unjust but she broke them. The society doesn't like these that break rules even if the rules are unjust they should be obeyed if the rules tell you that you should die you need to die. Is it just yes for these that create rules such an answer is just as they won't die cause of the rules they themselves impose on others. They do not need to obey any rules as these that have rules can instead create rules for others to obey and others must obey these rules even if the rules themselves are unjust. These that have authority usually don't care what happens with these that are under it even how this is the truth not many want to believe in such coldness of the world. That the world is such a despicable and cold place, the place that uses weak to survive that's what the society is. Society use weak to survive and instead gives everything to some selected wealthy and influential figures these figures have all while the rest is allowed to die in order, so the influential ones get everything. That's the true face of society and the system logical and cold assembly of consciousness that is ready to condemn everyone who are deemed necessary to die. What are supposed to do these that are condemned to die for nothing what hope they have this is the reason Blaze Master exists. If you think a while you understand that the society works like a single organism it too has its blood that allows it to survive money. Money is the blood of the society it's the thing that allows it to survive it stabilizes its illusion of a reward for an honest work making us believe that these that have more money work harder however it is always the truth. It ain't these that have billions work less hardly than these that have a hound but as these that are lower situated work more hardly physically to their limits, while these that own more work less physically enjoying all the luxuries of working drinking fine natural cough for example a thing that is not available for these that aren't rich and decide to live in this platform world stabilization therefore is the one thing society really desires as stability allows to maintain its illusion that obeying rules will lead to happiness that you need to obey blindly all rules that are given. Lilith and me who are creating these stabilization in this otherwise perfectly stabilized world are deemed to be necessary and are considered to be viruses in this perfectly working organism and that's why we were outcasts. Thrown out and supposedly left to die but we won't die that easily. We won't be destroyed even if there are many that wish for both me and Lilith to die we won't even if they will be praying to God he too will not kill us and he realized his mistake and understands my reasons all has hidden purposes. The rain has started to fall to the ground as I was lost in my thought again it gives some coldness and it was refreshing after suffering from the heat while planting these plants. The opposites that exists are a very peculiar and interesting matter. 
good and evil darkness and light it has always coexisted with each other despite constantly opposing each other's. It's just like these two forces are forced into coexistence, as if there weren't any other way. Indeed there wasn't these powers were forced to oppose each other's as oppositions or contradiction are in the world's nature. So it was happening now coldness and heat are also two opposing sides of the same reality. The reality so what is the thing we call reality what is that we deem to be real two sides of truth reality and false are two values that constitute our world again the old binary code zero and one comes to mind as well as its alternative plus and isn't it so simple. How can the world be that simple you probably would like to ask that question if you could only take part in this HMM but it is that's how it is. Darkness and light are just simply the same sides of the same reality they need to coexist with each other despite being cursed to oppose one another it has to be like that cause that's how our world exists evil will always oppose good so heroes will always be needed can be assumed. It would seem that's just how things need to be done in this world heroes fight the villains I think we got just too comfortable with that idea that we view it like reality and it still doesn't need to be so color foul as I once mentioned reality likes to go gray all of a sudden. Reality is a thing that likes to be very complex so you need to have a deep open mind to view it in its true form. It's easy to get lost in all of these complex matters we call life one might simply avoid noticing all of the important matters that happen next to him. Of course I couldn't allow myself to do that I needed to understand the reason and significance of planting flowers and its meaning for the Queen of Lust as I was obeying her order. Yes even something so simple as planting this flowers had this secret meaning the one that should be unlocked and understand there was no mistake in that. Flowers are symbols that in essence symbolize all beautiful things that exist in our lives. Yes even our lives need to have positive things, indeed some values we hold dear that allow us to understand love and the meaning behind the lives of others. Blaze Master needs to understand these kind of things because he slash me as an teacher that teaches others about the meaning behind their lives. So it was no mistake I knew the significance of the flowers for the Queen of Lust and her love for all living creatures. Whether they were beautiful or hideous they still had value in her eyes she was observing me being entertained by the fact that she made me work. Above from her palace on the steps near some columns she was observing me as I was potted probably again in some kind of test. After getting so far with her I was reduced to be a servant of hers. Was that a test or morally her request what was she planning for me? How would I know? It's hard to understand someone that's more superior than you yes she was more superior than me she was the Dark Lord after all. Was there anything she needed my help was there any need for her to share anything with me were the thoughts that clouded my mind the ones I thought about constantly trying to understand her complicated mind and the reason why she observed me quietly not saying a word. The Queen of Lust loved life and hated anyone that threatened it. Maybe she simply wanted for me to understand the beauty of the world that surrounds me maybe that was her desire. So the question would be am I able to understand something? That seemed to be very simple that the world were surrounded with this very beautiful that flowers and all living things make an essence of what are we and that's why we shouldn't ever forget about their existence even if they're small decorations they're still signs of life. So was there anything that could threaten such a beautiful thing like life that could destabilize it destroy it forever? Was there such a dangerous thing yes there was the queen of lust already knew the danger but whether to tell me or not was something for her to decide and she wished to have all the time needed to make such an important decision for the fate of this world was to be in my hands no. It already was in my hands. It was in the hands of Blaze Master such a huge responsibility in such small hands like mine a huge burden wasn't it too much. Was it really necessary to burden me with that? These were also thoughts that were coming through her mind that's why finding the truth takes so long because this was it. This is it. The battle that was unlike any others I ever fought were all this and others world were at stakes the final showdown was to begin the most important battle in the universe all thought I wasn't aware at that point I would play a decisive role I was the main character. This battle wasn't to be easy this battle had all in stake immortality our world our values and all things that are essential for us today. Our culture and fundaments of this world were to be threatened by Dantalian and his mad ambition and evil presence unlike any other was to be released in this world these were things 
that Lilith knew, but she didn't know should she tell me give me this knowledge that had a terrible burden on it. Because there are things that should be kept secret and should be forgotten knowledge can be fatal. I was to become the main character in this Aquilar Dan serious dilemma of hers as she was watching me work and closed in her thoughts. She was thinking of all these dreadful things that were too scary to be even mentioned. These mysteries that were to be forgotten and left in ancient times, one history never to be told. She was thinking, and has been lost in her thoughts ever since I started my work in this sunny beautiful day. Planting flowers gently repeating the same steps over and over. The sun shining on the garden gives its warmth to us standing the beautiful blue skies, and the green color of leaves and bushes trees, and other plants this ancient and mysterious garden was full of. The secrets that bug the queen could however quickly destroy the streamland. The darkness locked in the ancient tomb what was it? What secrets threatened the world? What was the danger sealed by the dark lords in ancient times? The mysteries of the world the forgotten knowledge that threatens to destroy us, where is this story going to lead us? The queen of lust was still observing me her face didn't show anything, as she was somewhere back in ancient times that were to be forgotten. The serious problems that were too great for any dark lord to handle were to be taken care of by someone like me eternal troublemaker. Why me? No one would answer even if the question would be asked, and there was no answer to that, or maybe, because I didn't need any answer. I was Blaze Master and I was always involved in impossible situations so for me it wasn't something new or scary. It wasn't something I needed to be afraid of but something I needed to be cautious with. That was the secret she kept from me. The garden was full of plants and serpents, that were carrying on with their lives not aware of anything. Not knowing anything they were blessed because they didn't matter and couldn't be held responsible for anything that was supposed to happen. They didn't knew anything just like me weren't aware of things that were to happen. Of this crazy dance we call our lives. This dance was to begin. Suddenly the Queen of Lust straightened herself up, corrected her hair and was finally ready to reveal the mitre. The gates of Achillean boy have you ever heard of them? She asked and silently looked at me from above. The gates of the Kelian? I ask surprised not knowing of them, no I haven't heard about them, what are they? I asked wondering what kind of mystery the queen was ready to tell me, and what were the consequences of knowing such a thing I didn't knew. I knew nothing. Are you sure you're gonna reveal such matters? Asked a young dark-haired knight that appeared in front of me and her at the same time locating himself between us he was a young handsome dark knight looking, and he was taken out from some kind of sect he was dressed in and dark armor, that looked very refined. A handsome dark nobleman from some kind of fraction has unexpectedly appeared in front of us, I doubt this idiot will be able to comprehend the importance of this matter the refined dark nobleman rudely answered. The queen looked at him carefully, and then replied. That was rude Zabi I understand your master got my message, and he will attend our meeting very well once he appears we may begin, as she said these words an old figure has appeared the dark philosopher bells that have appeared in the gardens as the serpents and owls awaken started to be more cautious due to Thayer's sudden appearance. Thank you for your invitation, but let's get on with the business shall we reply bells that and looked at me and his servant. Dark Lord Philosopher the one that was once a mortal king who desired the powers connected to Infinity God's ancient nemesis, that is said to exist as long as Long Yakwa himself exists of course the old philosopher, that our ULS Mega civilization is just God's interface just like Alpha and Omega. The Dark Lord Belzeb and his servant Zabi were present in Lilith's gardens. I suggest you tell your servant to not bother my pet boy here she defended me, who now was her property and ally. Well or at least it's something I myself strongly wanted to believe as Elzetta walked toward Lilith and made a bow showing his respect to her and acknowledging that he is a guest on her territory and comes in peace. Very well. The gates of Achillean are the reason I requested your presence Dark Lord she expressed the reason why she needed the assistance of the Dark Lord Belzetta. Gates of Achillean are kept in secrecy and its location is known only to few members of the 666 organization these are myself. Samuel, and yourself we form the Dark Trinity explained Belzetta, who was explaining it probably for mine and Zabi's sakes, for whom this revelation was something new. 
These gates are protected by forces that even an interdimensional traveler of the Andes from Dark Trinity cannot enter. Thus, why this dimension is not accessible to the likes like Blaze Master here, despite his abilities to reach the source of this world, explained Belzetta, looking at me very classily, a little bit intrigued, a little bit disquisited, while his servant Zave behold only disrespect for me just because I was different, and Zave be considered difference a weakness that should be eradicated. His master was more willing to allow my difference to exist but he too viewed me as an weak being and again they were higher than me these were true dark lords that existed for billions of eons years already while I existed only for one eon. If you allow me my lady I will explain this matter to our servants they should know at least the basics of the problems we're facing now of course I do not expect Blaze to correctly follow the events but he'll try to make this as easy as my sophisticated knowledge can make. And let us begin with our education please not make my words go to waste. It began a long time ago billion of millennia eons ago, and 666 times, before yes this world this mega civilization, as you call it blaze was rebuilt exactly 666 times each time as we try to adapt and repair the mistakes that previously led our world to destruction trying to prevent dangerous events that meant destruction to this world. And cancelling our might, powers, and position you should understand already the true nature of this world yes life is an online game like dream of our connected consciousness of course you understand these basic principles blaze you do that's why you're able to exist and go as far as you want. You are able to make rules change the world to suit yourself now there's nothing wrong with that these actions have minimal influence on overall situation these can be ignored as are of minor importance there's many of your kind that tried to achieve something usually creating minor destabilization of the system that are also necessary our role is to maintain the system as long as we are able to maintain this society in its solution and to use it of course it cannot be an ideal place so viruses like you are necessary to provide entertainment you blaze provide some entertainment to jump off from the reality but you know your role the best or let's put it frankly I'm not interested in breaking your little bubbles even these kind of delusions are necessary these form the core of your existence the so-called fundamental values you so believe in. Let's start again this explanation yes we need to restart everything from beginning. We are the members of an Ark Lord organization referred to as 666 our elite organization is an representation of the most ancient and highest ranking Dark Lords. In the universe we are the ones that together control the society of medias and the reality. For more exactly the universally acceptable illusion of reality we condense and simplify things make them understandable and control them. We control information and we control the laws authorities governments planet entire galaxies together with God's inner face. We shape the society where the reason it exists in that for man shape and where the reason the civilization is at its level. You are aware of the fact that since ancient times gods were sent to guide men were the gods of our society dark lords that control and guide demons and humans to their fate we judge punish and reward create these values that people and demons need to believe we provide everything that is necessary to be provided that is our role. The eternal war is one of our tools that we use to control the world we go out for example for some treasure hunts and then are stopped by some heavenly army everything is fair if the armies of heaven are better prepared we flee if we are the stronger ones we get what we want it's just and fair as it is the natural law of the strongest. We are the strong that control the weak making them understand that serving the strong is what will lead them to happiness after all. Strong are entitled to their power that's how our world works that how it is and will be always of course we need ideas that strong protect the weak but in truth strong are not obligated to protect the weak however why kill something that can make money for you? The society is full of paranoical weaklings ready to kill each other for their position in our eyes but then again why not make the use of it no trouble is to kill weaklings the trouble is to make them work and gain money from it everyone can create bloody massacres but not many can properly invest their money and use these attributes for themselves. Let's make a comparison between Blaze here and Dantalian. If I were to judge their intelligence I would need to assume Blaze is the smarter one, and he at least knows how to make the best of his abilities. To think Dantalian wishes to wake up Yalemouth and bring an end to our reign he is the most ridiculous fool I ever meet Belzebub explained making a huge speech centering all our attention on him, as he proclaimed his wisdom and point of view on this matter. 
Bell's head up revealed his ignorance typical for Andark Lord yes it was something I was expecting knowing his reputation Bell's head up considered my values to be delusions but then again I too considered him delusional and blinded by his own greed and again something more evil and sinister was to be released to this world and from what he said a moment ago it threatened to cancel this world it was probably beyond his powers now that's a rare occasion when you find a Dark Lord the most powerful evil demonical being weaker than something it of course makes you think, I wondered what was to be released what will happen now. What was the mess I got myself in this time? It would mean I will have to request your assistance Dark Lord Bells what Lilith admitted. It's not something I can close my eyes to Dark Queen be assured we will bring this incident with Dantarian to a satisfactory resolution my Queen Bells had proclaimed and so the preparations to something great were announced. Battle was to be proclaimed, and a war with Dantalian to start and all was because of the documents that were in my bag this one thing shaken an entire alliance and was powerful to break down signed with blood. The Dark Lords were preparing to war with each other over an ancient power and its threat to the stabilization of their positions. Chapter 14 Galamouth Belzebub and his servant Zabi were standing in Lilith's gardens together with me as Lilith was standing above us listening and talking with Lord of the Darkness Belzebub, who tried to explain this mess this big secret failing to present anything of value except his own ignorance. However it was morally the beginning of his story, and as we were standing in this garden that was sprinkled by the sunlight, being observed by the owls and serpents Lilith's servants these at workers to abandon their humanity in order to learn how exactly they should live. The guest Belzebub was soon ready to begin his day of an ancient incident that changed all the entire universe. The power that was behind Antalian's maddening ambitions the true nature of the first hellish lord Galamouth. Belzebub looked at all of us silent for a moment wishing to make us endure waiting for his speech making it specially too weak of this effect of eternal wait. I was a bit impatient and was curious to get the answers to understand what exactly was at stake to know. I wanted to know it was normal that I wanted to know. To be sure to comprehend all that needs to be comprehended again I wanted to understand the things I thought I could understand but the Dark Lord Belzebub made as wait for his speech that would finally reveal the truth of this situation. The only thing I knew during this wait was that the skies were still blue and the sun was still shining this would not change so quickly nor it would go away. The shining sun would stay with us we hoped believed it would be forever, but there was something that could change that. Finally Belzebub started his speech, and the story behind this incident was to be finally revealed. The Dark Lord Galamouth, a true Ellie demonical being possessing an ancient power and hate for all of life and humankind. Once a human heart that got so disillusioned with the illusion we call life, that he started to view destruction as the only true value, and thus he wanted all to burn in fire and be destroyed to forever and he viewed humans and demons as parasites abusing all life but he viewed everything to be a parasite as well and dirty so he demanded the world will become clean he wanted to destroy all not just one place entire world all dimensions he wished to close this game and end this farce he was one of these that shouldn't know about the truth and he simply couldn't take it he didn't want to accept that the reality is like that he simply didn't possess some kind of backbone or common sense to understand the abilities this knowledge grants to one trapped, with all the bad things he saw centering his attention only on the bad aspects of this not understanding the good positive things of the situation, and what it made him with this knowledge he was a god almighty and all-knowing, but refused to acknowledge that, and considered himself being used. He was the first of the Dark Lords to find out the truth the first one to understand it and the one that passed this knowledge to us as we all were once his faithful servants that would carry almost every order given to us by him except one we didn't want it to end we didn't desire our life and power the position our reward for guarding this knowledge for going as far to end this was our world our illusion and we desired for it to exist always and ever and this power is ours and ours only no one has the right to take it away why would we allow anyone even gale a mouth to make it disappear? We all understand that we all gathered are the ones using this power shaping the world around us. Why destroy something we worked over billion of eons years something we devoted our time precious money? Lord Galamouth only seeked a way to make this reality disappear he couldn't understand didn't want to understand. 
He didn't see our works even that idiotic in their face of the source understood how much effort we put into this in this creation. The world is ours to rule we are the rulers of this world nothing cannot be shaped without us and we will not allow this to be destroyed. We will not stand by as everything is laid to waste this is our world. I do not understand why Galamouth couldn't use this power to create something for himself an illusion if he wanted he could create any life he dreamed of just like you blaze you use your powers this understanding to do whatever you want created a way a path for yourself even if this collided with my boosnesses it still was the best way to make use of this. I despise such fools, like Alamouth I hate him to kill Lawless just stupid to die with the entire world, if he want to I let him die I have no problem with that, but I want to live I have to live in Lord of Darkness Bells head of I have many important things, to do that's why I couldn't just stand by and blindly follow orders we all couldn't die, Lilith and other ancient members of 666 organization needed to act in order to save life. To make sure no one will be erased to make sure our booznesses that stabilize the life and our society exists we are the kings that need to protect all these that serve us it was not a selfish decision it was an act of self-sacrifice we could die but why others should we knew there are others that may not like dying that's why we needed to act take our heroic stance and defeat Lord Galamouth bring him dead if that's what he wanted. At that it wasn't all that simple the world was not divided equally we weren't dark lords but Morelli's servants, after knowing all this changing our lives he didn't reward us with anything not a single planet everything back then belonged to Galamouth. He was the one and true lord of darkness a title he didn't even deserve, and he despised his servants. Tell me how can the lord despise his servants he shouldn't he should always love his servants and guide them to understand his love sometimes love is harsh but you can't always guide being nice sometimes you do bad things and kill bad children that disappoint you. It's only natural for we need to see outside this ourselves. Sentimentalism that lead our former lord into hating life so much. Life is all about you can accomplish and gain understand this well everything has a price and if you have something give it away only after being paid for it otherwise it's just sentimental stupidity unworthy of and dark lord and these that are sentiment have no right to be dark lords and have authority. For dark lord is and dark god and just like the god who is the source of this world he too stands above all laws and authorities respecting only the authority of our God and Creator we must understand and carry that will of the society created by God and thus we maintain the system created by God using all tools given to us to create and keep the order. That's our Lefeli commitment that's the reason we cannot be sentimental and desire this world's death first we need to understand is this world useful if so then it's best to let it continue to be useful destroying vegetables with parasites. Stupidity a good gardener aims only for parasites leaving the vegetables to grow so they can be consumed later. We are the gardeners and so we need to know how vegetables look like and be able to find the parasites and destroy them. Not all demons and humans are parasited remember that some of them are useful for the society and they need to be nurtured and they need to be taken care of. Of course that's why this world cannot be equal after all why take care of and parasite it's idiotic only vegetables are useful only these can be eaten. However Galamouth was a bad gardener he couldn't tell vegetables apart from this twisting parasites he misses the knowledge offered to him by the source. He misses it, and since he did this grave offense we deemed him unworthy of this knowledge he didn't deserve so we needed to dispose him. And his tyranny and his maddening ambition we needed to put him away before he puts us and our dreams away before he destroys the world we so hard worked to create. He was the one that misuited his powers and started to threat the balance his research into the matter of death and his aspirations to make our world disappear were not something we wanted to agree to. He hated the entire world that was his problems not ours we didn't need to be sacrificed cause of his maddening desires just because he felt his life was unfair that was child's play idiotic naive and foolish thinking he could create whatever he wanted get what he wanted. If he wanted the world to be fair to him he could make it and still the only thing he did was hide behind his power and make us do all the dirty work for him. A coward he was truly a coward that was afraid to live and that's why he started to be a threat to us he became us less for the system. Had he begun to threat it. 
His existence was inconvenient to us if he only did what we all tried to do sustain this world things may have not be so tragic for him he might as well not suffer his utterly terrible fate. But when good of the society is at stake the individual's sentiments must be ignored and for the good of the system laws and society for justice he needs to be destroyed putted to rest once and for all. That's what needed to be done now and was to be done and there's no escape from this fate. How harsh and cruel it may appear it's just he needed to be sealed away lots for eternity so we all could enjoy ourselves and live our lives. Even if one's life is unfair or unjust there was written in ancient texts that are fundaments of our worldwise manuscripts that tell how life should be treated and I suggest Blaze Reddies and learn about these laws that make our lives happier they are the funding columns of our hierarchy. But this may be have to done in some spare time for now we have issues of great importance at our hands we need to make sure Galamouth will not be awakened because gates of Achelian are his grave and you can't have people walking out from Thayer graves, graves are symbols of death and show to us how fragile life really is even immortals need to learn this truth. Graves should be visited flowers can be planted on them but not devastated it's not how it should be these that devastate graves are cowards and that kind of person is Dantalian for trying to attempt something ridiculous as that. We members of the 666 organization use our entire might alongside gods to make sure this place will not be found that Galamouth's peaceful rest will never be bothered by anyone and so attempting to revive him is anti fans to our most sacriest and holy commitments to our loss and a terrible sin and offense to us that can only be punished by death for anyone that attempts something like that. That's why on behalf of my authority, as the Dark Lord Belzedab I declared Antalian being eligible for death penalty for his treason to our holy laws I hope this example will serve to ward off others from such kind of ridiculous attempt Belzedab made his speech and got bravos from Zavbi and Lil if I followed them and give my bravos as well. While looking at the silence of all gathered and trying to exactly understand what was exactly said by Belzedab. I agreed to the point of view that we are not parasites, that everything has the right to live and no one holds the authority over dead and live that was my fundamental value. While judging all thought I too killed sometimes these that wanted desperately to live sometimes our choices mean choosing someone's life over a life of another person sometimes we found ourselves in these kind of hard position where we need to betray someone to save someone else. So I understood why Belzebub defended his decision so feasty he had the right to decide the way he wants to live and yes he spent a great deal of effort and time into creating and shaping this world and the society he had the right to profit from the things he created. But I didn't like his parasites vegetables comparison people and demons aren't parasites just some cannot understand simple things and need to restart the soul does not die with the body it continues and its existence can be restarted at any time mine as well if I would choose so nothing except the fact we will exist somehow for all eternity is per name and everything changes and so we do. Galamouth wasn't like that too he just in my opinion forgotten who he was and why he made this effort to get there. He needed to be reset but he was the most almighty and apparently killing him was impossible so he was imprisoned in his grave for an entire eternity. Now he wanted to get out to punish these that dared to betray him and he schemed over it for millennia of time only by mere chance was I able to discover this and alert them anciently as even I was not aware looking instead for something else for punishment for the loss of life of these that didn't know and were erased restarted into a new game we all know is all life. So Galamouth couldn't accept that life is a game was all I understood at this short moment. Maybe sometimes it's a truth to scary for these that treat their lives just a bit too seriously. Life should not be treated too seriously it seems it's better to follow as Elzetta putted backbone to think straightly and accept all possibilities then you will never be scared or lost you'll always find your way out from just any kind of trouble that may be created. Do you know what is right to choose that's why thinking and collecting information can be useful gathering knowledge and trying to understand even something you hate or don't want to understand even something like that should be understood. Adlis analyzed. Comprehended it as he did. Galamouth's crime was that he didn't wish to understand the most I could call crime of any Dark Lord they simply don't wish to understand nor they want to comprehend the troubles of others Dark Lords are egocentrical beings centered only on themselves 
as are all rulers, and every politicians I made contact with while well, most of them they're blinded by their positions, and paradoxically it renders them as less sometimes despite the fact they're the ones making all the laws. It's how it is the grieves that fold his heart must have have been unbearable, and thus grieves turned into darkness to monocle ambitions and these maddening desire. To end all that was created all what he deemed to be false and what he deemed to not be ideal in his eyes. The grieves he had were the ones from his unfulfilled ambition from the times he wasted, or couldn't use from all these perspectives that were untrue. Because he understood the world was a game he understood that it all was a lie created by an lonely universal being that started to exist after Big Bang. A single entity that didn't wish to be alone created a perfect dream in which it sleeps a game we all know to be our lives. Since you know what I'm just stating here do you understand it, comprehend it, or view it merely as a fiction? What's your reaction when you read these words? Could you accept these that are far away and live on a small not advanced planet? These that read it I ask you could you accept that your entire life are a lie? Why do you smile read it with not believing eyes? Do you think I'm crazy out of my mind now? Don't look so stupidly in these letters I'm asking you this question what would you do if you found out all your life were just a dream? Would you think you could accept this? No. Why? To have everything you worked your entire life to be considered false to understand just how much time you wasted to achieve things and good that have really no meaning that everything you see is just an ordinary lie. Tell me please break the barrier and tell me forget the situation you and I are in forget how things are. Just forget it there are no boundaries between us you are also taking a part in this so make an effort and answer in your head maybe you'll hear it and magically it will appear on this pages made from paper. Of course you. And I understand what Yale Mouth could feel in that time we know why he wanted to destroy the entire world he just wanted to end some lies. You see truth is not always good not all should be known to everybody because then life loses its mysticism and it stops to be fun to be alive people who know everything understand how us less they are and that's why they want to die. You see life is a serious game that needs to be filled with things you and sometimes I can't understand Gail Mouth lacked it he couldn't see them and he understood everything and yet in reality knew nothing. How paradoxical don't you think so too? Yet in my opinion I think he needed to open his eyes, to see some things I saw then he would see what he wasn't able to see being hidden and planning to destroy entire life. Waste it was simply a waste of time the world gives many opportunities that can be used if you can't go one way there's always a detour, that's how life is that's how it's all is. So why give up and forsake everything why waste every second of your existence to end it for me it was something that was beyond my abilities of comprehension. It's hard to understand that kind of stupidity yes it was stupid even for me something that even I wasn't able to accept and so I was simply struggling to comprehend that kind of decision to understand that someone might be in this kind of denial of this was indeed too much for me it was too much so what was I to do what was the thing I needed to do? To fight this threat was an obvious answer there was no other way it was time to fight no one else could change it. So the battle with Galamouth would take place a battle from which there was no escape that was to be my fate and duty. To defeat that kinda enemy to destroy the threat that could erase everything I'd done as well, my entire path everything I standed for I couldn't just walk away and leave it to others I needed to act. This was Blaze Master's battle and I wouldn't back down from it. I simply couldn't back down from it there was no way I was going to do that. So it's time to go to battle it's as simple as that because that was it. This battle with that kinda enemy was to become my challenge of test that would prove that Blaze Master can achieve even the impossible and so a great trial awaited me a test which I needed to pass there was no other option available because failure this time meant that everything I'd done to this point had not been important that every smile given to me had no purpose no value that everything I promised to others was false yes I needed to protect these at life so I were supposed to protect. That was my duty as I was the Lord of Chaos the Eternal Troublemaker and Traveler the Architect of the Universe Blaze Master. That was my title and the position I healed in this world and it was time to prove it to all that trusted in me this time I was to fight for all of them. Blaze Master's decisive battle was to begin. I knew that this time would come the time that all will be butted in a trial. 
The time wall of which I stand for will be put on and wait it was the time to stand firmly with believe go to battle and show my courage it was the time where everything would start to mean something new, where everything could be gained or lost. A hero's battle but I was not a hero still would I prevail, and when this battle? Chapter 15 The Dark Procession The darkness surrounded everything the dark desires to finish everything were the ones Vantalian had because of his maddening ambition he was ready to forsake everything in order to prove something that everybody knew was wrong. But was it really the desires of Dantalian the ones that pushed him as that far? Or was he Dantalian merely a puppet controlled by Gala Mouth because this had no sense? Why would Dantalian risk everything he worked so hard to obtain? Did Dantalian have a reason to hate life so much? He was kneeling down in Gala Mouth's tomb a grave that was supposed to remain hidden for all eternity. Nevertheless he was still there. Why? What was his reason why he prayed in his dark prayer in order to remove the spell? The mystery of this adventure the secret thing Dantalian was after was definitely not the thing Galamouth would grant. For Galamouth only seek destruction and would not grant anything to anyone he was selfish not thinking about others and about the pain his action caused to others. Galamouth viewed himself as the one that was lied to the one that was wronged and he demanded a sacrifice for his suffering. Unaware of that Dantalian still prayed and step by step he slowly cancelled the spells that blinded Galamouth trapping him in his grave slowly all 666 billion force barriers and curses disappear discharging some electricity while at it has the barriers one by one through different prayers were removed. This while he was surrounded by different candles all around him symbolizing each barrier and burning as long as the barrier lasts. This darkness was only brightened up by these candles that were either lying on the ground, where attached to columns levitating powered by some unknown power hanging on from the ceiling and surrounding the grave. These small warm lights were the only witnesses to this unusual event, to this maddening dream that was to become a nightmare slowly bringing up the candles were unable to remove the darkness from the grave and from Dantalian's hearth, while themselves being filled by Dantalian's dark prayer one by one because in reality these candles were the guarding spirits which only reason of existence was to keep Galamouth sealed away for all eternity, and because of that these spirits were now dying. These spirits could only make a crying noise as they faded away killed by Dantalian, in the same manner as these civilians at his skyscraper they also suffered unfairly died in an unjust manner, because they were at that place, and they were no longer needed this was to be their reward for their fateful service, once they realized their fate they could only cry, and that's why the candles cried in Gollumouth's tomb they cried not being able to say anything. To protest as they didn't know how to they were being created only for the purpose of suppressing Galamouth, and so they didn't know how to use their powers in order to protect themselves, and despite possessing powers they were still powerless beings that didn't have any consciousness felt pain, that they didn't understand made noise hoping it will stop but Dantalian ignored the noise and one by one he killed every single one. Crying candles or fires that not only lighten up the place, but also felt it and observed it they guarded it while not being able to understand why they simply existed, and now cry cause of the agony giving up a voice unheard of anywhere else a voice that only a soul in agony can make a sound that will make you tremble once you hear it. Not having any tone it was the sound of the void that tried to say something. But it didn't even know what to say when it finally dared to say anything pushed to it by the pain of slow disappearance it wanted to say, stop, but it didn't even knew that was the word that meant it cause it even didn't understand that so it reacted in the only way it knew until it slowly disappeared and another soul took it place repeating it over and over. The soldiers not showing any fear monitored the sight of the ritual for them death was their job these demons that wear masks and were dressed in dark armor never showed their faces they were ready to kill anyone that would dare to defy their masters for such was their role. Some of these soldiers were standing next to the column and others walked around with their loaded guns observing the Valkyries as they walk on the ceiling these monsters that were to look like women were being brought to protect the Mad Lord as well. The machines and many more while filling the planet, and slowly spreading in the tunnels this was to be the force that will or at least should stop anyone. The darkness of the tunnels filled up with spider, like robots, that together with the soldiers, 
We're patrolling the area for any intruder sending out light beams they cheat the surrounding area. To catch out any disturbance the soldiers used their flashlights. They too were preparing for battle that would come to them sooner or later. But honestly do they really believe something like that could stop me did they believe it was as that simple to stop me and the lords that were to come with me? Nope it wasn't because all was at stake our armies have gathered as well as Lilith's servants were preparing for a procession that would take us through the town to Necromantis. Bell's head of Zmain's pass S craft which will take a part in this mission. The Queen of Lust ordered her servants to prepare a ride worthy of royal heads they were monarchs. After all each gathered Lilith, Bell's head of Zavebi were in fact lords that rolled, and in Zavebi's case, where being rolled by other lords only I wasn't a royal monarch I was an outcast. Something that shouldn't maybe take part in this, but I was present in Lilith's gardens and at least in Lilith's eyes I was a valuable member of this group this alliance. While our rights were being prepared Lilith talked with Bell that of Zavebi took part in preparations, and I were left alone. I once more gazed my eyes upon this garden and this mansion I was guest at this place. That is a symbol of Lilith's desires these were also the doors that allowed me to see her true self the one not many were able to understand the fearful which had indeed a more human side as well she was not an cold bewildered beast but in fact a loving and caring mother and gardener. Lilith loves life, and she only wished to make others understand that life is precious it was indeed the very same thing Alamouth didn't quite get. Life is an experience that allows us to make choices we ourselves pick paths to walk on. This was the message Lilith cared to deliver this one thing, cherish your life and joy to the fullest was the thing she taught me, and perhaps she made me understand that in weak, but also very busy and it's not the power that allows me to win but my busy mind that was the thing my pa seized it was my greatest weapon because thanks to it I learned how to make things go my way. The source of my powers are illusions I make, and the role play I give myself into because all the truth is a lie. I watched the serpents and the owls going on with their lives ignoring our presence I looked once more on some bloodied corpses of these that defiled life and thought could conquer her these that were lying now lifeless, these were the ones that finally undertood how ignorant they were, but it was too late or was it? Lilith could have been merciful for them, and then they are suffering even if this looks horrible this is what remains, but they may have been freed and allowed to go into light and start anew. The queen didn't bother to look at the corpses all gathered ignored the fact that this beautiful garden could be someone's grave from a grave to a grave was our destination ironically. Lilith's gardens were created in order to celebrate life, and paradoxically the corpses laid to rest in undignified manner allowed worms, insects and bugs to survive as the flesh from these rotten corpses were to be their meals and homes. Things that where once humans had begun to decompose to Mercil's chemical reaction took place eradicating the bodies and changing them forever. This happened while roses red roses were blooming a bit next to the hideous sight of an rotting corpse or many corpses being tied up to the ground by some wines by plants that seemed to devour them nature can be hideous and deadly. I once mentioned it but in tie. The skies were still blue and clouds slowly made their way traveling on the blue sky. But the day was coming to its end, as the sun was going slowly down soon evening would come, and our procession was to begin in the night. We calmly made our way to the gates of the garden being guided by Lilith's servants that were guiding, at holding a single candle with a burning fire on it similar are to the ones that were at Gallimouth's grave a mighty event the dark procession was to begin a rare sight, when a dark queen makes her way through to her towns, in all splint hour, and might these events are strong symbols to the local populace of the world they really live in, and the powers she posses servants. Dressed as white monks with hidden faces, were gathering to start the procession and lectic that would carry us was being prepared, as we slowly made our way the power of the Dark Trinity. And religious cult the forbidden ritual was to take place in mystic occurrence in front of her followers the manifestation of gods, that was the true event that was to take place Lilith was in fact a gods of beauty life and seduction of innocence and despair, and of human fragility love. The power of the dark trinity needed to manifest itself in order to signify the fact that a battle that could change the entire fate of existence was to begin. When you think of it gods were always centers of religions and it's always demons that became gods humans always look to gods for protection against demons forgetting that most gods are in fact demons from which they seek protection now the paradox of things. 
Life can be a bitter irony and it gives us hard moral choices even I wasn't spare of these cause and not devoid of my human feelings despite the fact it would be more easier if I was. But I couldn't become a full monster I needed to posse some humanity in myself otherwise I couldn't be a good witness otherwise I would be simply no good that all there is. I was thinking about these things as we slowly made our way to the gates that were both the entrance and exit from the gardens a huge gate made from gold and wrapped by wines these gates lead to the temple these gardens truly were. I looked at the walls made from the bushes and the owls that gathered on the walls the serpents that were accompanying us in that march as we slowly not saying anything in complete silence made our way to our destination. A magnificent spectacle was about to begin a true glory of these that called themselves gods was to be shown. Slowly day turned to night as we were getting outside the garden by the golden gate. We saw something that was amazing for me at least how and billions of monks dressed all in white holding a single lighten up candle and a huge lepic that was being held by them to carry us the queen took my hand as I was her possession and lead me majestically and slowly to the golden lepic itself slowly her bare foots were touching the ground as we walked up to it and went into them slowly followed by bells at a band safety once they joined us inside the lepic was being lifted up and the procession begun we were sitting in it as it was being carried by monks in a huge unending procession with majesty unseen before to my eyes. I would never believe I could be a part of this but I was carried there as will it spe- Slowly the procession moved from her gardens and took the path into the town we'd begun our long entire night lasting journey a journey a billion candles that were held by monks sign candle hold by a single white monk servants of religion were marching carrying their gods and did I really deserve to accompany gods in such a way traveling among them and their glory washing as we passed the dark and gloomy forests looking at the full moon and many stars at the sky I realized how little I was as I looked at the monks that were carrying us the monks created a road of light lightness led the way for the darkness it was ironic to see that but it was true the monks that were marching symbolized light and the lords were the ones that bring the light to the citizen of this world. I looked at the queen as she sitted seriously all members were sitting seriously not saying any words not wanting to spoil their glory moments they really were gods we passed the forest and were on some kind of field I was bewildered looking at the scale of this event seeing that a single being can command such armies that is truly fearsome indeed even if they're humans there's so many of them walking in that proxy and they walk carrying a single candle a single light and candle. The psyche's not bothered by the event however still song their songs, and where in reality the orchestra that gathered to play for the procession carrying the Queen of Lust that passed them slowly walking through the field amongst marched like soldiers they were soldiers of faith and truth they were Lilith's army ready to die on her command but they would not do any actual combat they were only necessary to transport us to the ship that was their main duty and the reason they were gathered. And so we slowly neared to a town, as I could see the town's lights from afar we were being brought to it so the population of the town could witness the glory of the dark trinity that was being carried in the lectic by the white monks that walked in that dark procession a procession of sinners man that lost to Thayer lust the color of Thayer habits was a joke a tease the queen made for them because in reality the sinners were carrying Thayer sinful gods and that was a hitty out truth. But Lilith was not afraid to reveal herself and was expressing her joy that we entered the town where we could see lights being in every windows and people standing on the streets everyone wanted to see this dark procession become a part of the moment and so some thrown flowers at our procession others yelled and hailed trying to catch Lilith's or anyone's attention even I who was carried in that lectic was viewed by the town's people as someone very important. As I was in that lectic being carried to the destination it was pride in it, and I could see the red leather filling, and golden ornaments it had again and apple and serpents, owls insignia of Lilith's power and authority. Ancient inscriptions that were carved inside, Elias Defunex that has it, Confucius Empars Nominate Patriarch Exteos Nominatum Rise Chias Tomen Citrus that has it, Rebain Accurus to these that bring Patracnate to the darkness and light we dash and in servitude the motto of this occultistic group of religions created in order to serve the gods. 
We were being carried through the town streets being observed by many that became excited because they felt attached to us traveling inside the electric. They felt attached merely by being on the same street as they looked from their balconies, roofs, windows, or simply standing by the street. These people felt attached because we were mighty. However, they would ignore us if we would be simple beggars. Isn't it shocking? These simple civilians can be more worse than any dark lord, as there. The ones that ignore these that need help the street's lights glowed as we passed them as the procession made its way through the mazes of streets of this town. The darkness and light again can tasted shadows of shapes things that are harmless during the day become scary once the darkness covers them that's what I saw being carried in that lectic. Opposing sides of the same truth buildings being covered by street lights that were supposed to make them. More recognizable in reality giving them a more sinister unknown look change in something known into something that wasn't recognizable. The mysteries are in fact truths that were once known but became forgotten that's what it means secrets are things we know but forget at some point that's why we need to rediscover them. The procession went through the town giving it a very mysterious feel because the town suddenly became something special because of that proxesian because of the simple fact that the procession took part in the town suddenly it itself became a special place. Suddenly these trees, buildings, streets people and demons became special because they were the witnesses of this unique procession. Was it a strange truth that we all were special, because we became a part of a very unique event a new battle was about to begin of game, that could turn all the tides on us our mission was to stop the one that desired to stop us it was all in one simple question, do we deserve to live? Was the question being asked, and the outcome of this battle was to decide that my own test for survival, they say that in order to survive you need to have a will to survive I watched from the lectic being carried in it at the people who stand it in their windows did they have the right to live? Our victory or loss would answer this question but was it all right to take their lives into our hands without telling them anything? Didn't they have the right to know about it? We were being carried by men dressed in white walking on the streets they didn't knew anything as well was it all right to hide the truth from them? We left the town finally, and entered some fields the fields were empty there was no one at this late hour as the procession proxies however during the days many farmers cultivated these lands in order to produce food some of which I eat at Lilith's these fields that were a factory during the day were empty now because it was night and these that worked on the field sleep not knowing anything meanwhile the proxesian quietly made its way through the fields and went into the forests into the darkness made by trees the scary hideous shapes of things that were harmless during the day weren't able to fill with fear hearts of these that went into procession because these monks knew that the most scary things were inside their heads and that's why they walked in that procession carrying the queen of lust and her guests the darkness that was inside their hearts could have been more scarier than the shapes trees made in that dark and huge forest and maybe that's why these monks calmly marched their way not being bothered by this darkness the huge procession made its way through the dark forest not being afraid of things that don't scare them during the day. Finally we reached the huge lake in the center of this dark forest there was a giant blue lake full of water that gave life to many of the forest's inhabitants. From above the lake pipes touched its surface and were literally drinking the water into a huge flying fortress remaining a huge yellow GG a gray and ominous spaceship was hovering above sending billions of pipes to drink the lake's water it was a huge flying fortress and faced the imperial palace of Lord Belzetta and his main and only flagship. Necromantis was flying above the forest as our procession reached its final destination all was already clear now we all knew where will all of us be going after all a battle has just begun a true battle has just begun. I watched that the spaceship astounded as I saw it for the first time. Meanwhile crazy storms disturbed the planet on which Dantarian was making his dark prayers. The planet full of caves that created different tunnels and mazes these mazes were being filled with soldiers that used their flashlights to search any corner they could find battle machines some of which I knew from the skyscraper and the flying ones that attacked me on the platforms everything imaginable and inimaginable was being prepared to fight. Dantalian's secret army that was being developed by the destroyed filia of the Blood Children Company was about to be tested in that new exciting war one that had no boundaries. Blaze Master was the one that will fight this kind of battle now was the time to put everything into test. 
The caves were being prepared with different bombs and deadly traps and ultimate warfare. Lakes of magma were being digged out that wasn't supposed to be a simple battle, that was to be an all battle, and I was ready to welcome. Chapter 16 Necromantis before we can continue with the story, please answer me one question. What does the word home mean to you? What is home? What does this word mean? This simple phrase to be at home, what does it mean? Home traditionally is supposed to mean a safe sanctuary, therefore everywhere where people can feel safe can be called a home. That's good, but what else does it mean? A home means also a family and what is a family? A family is an element of the society, so home can also mean the society you live in. For example, you live in a town, and a local family at our society is your home. Okay, so now my question, what happens to home once the society rejects you? Can these that were rejected by the society say that they have a home? Can you say that? What is home? How many people or demons find themselves rejected, and therefore are unwilling to accept, that they still have the right to home? The society is a brutal machine, that controls everyone even these authoritative figures that think they are in power to control it. Home is a very simple idea, and that is contrasted with another simple idea called prison. So what is the difference? Some think that it's all about safety, but shouldn't they look more into the issue of freedom? The difference between prison and home. What is this difference? Can it be that for one's home is others prison? Is this possible? What makes these things possible? What do you think reading this sentence? What is your opinion on this particular issue? It's probably very hard to accept this fact for you. Well it's not easy to write about it either. It takes a deal of effort into putting these words into sense for you especially since English is not my native language. Oh come now you did then think, that aliens or demons use English at their native language? It's a language that has many others I taught myself. But it's not the issue here, I just merely wanted to entertain you with this little detail. Let's go back to the main subject at hand, what does the word home mean again? And then again what does the word prison mean? Let's think about it for a while. This time I'm gonna give you a lecture about this. This is essential information after all the ones you need to comprehend. We know that the home means freedom. What else does it mean? Home means society people and demons that are around you, they live with you. You don't need to like them for our purposes it's an author around you and you make interactions with them. So what else do we put in it? Some people and demons would say love, all this feeling, that ties you to it, that makes you a part of it, because of it you don't feel getting, you view yourself, as a part of something. There were sentences written in here that explained how badly people and demons want to feel attached to. It's the deciding factor behind our all actions. These that are thrown out feel, that they do not have the right to live. That their existence is unneeded. Ironically these that are unneeded are later put in prison. So that's the main difference between home and prison. In prison you can find these that are undead in our homes. Sometimes however these factors can be unjust because someone can be born unneeded and waste his entire life making himself needed but ending being thrown out anyways. Is that scary? Nope you yourself allow that look around you please. Can you see it or are you unwilling to face it yourself? These things may happen around you, but it depends from yourself or whether you will take any actions to stop it. But remember these that help thrown out themselves become thrown out, have this in mind, in order to save you, yourself need to make a sacrifice. That's how this cold world works, this should be remembered. Prisons unlike homes don't need to guarantee safety, they exist only to keep these that are thrown out properly registered. Because if prisons wouldn't register these that are thrown out they could join the society and these that are thrown out cannot rejoin society it's a treason for you. The society as well as that upset needs to fight with parasites and will use all means effective. But in truth parasite is just a label and a label doesn't necessarily describe what is truth but only what is popular belief. That's why prisons are such cold places to be but then again our entire world as we know it is rather cold blooded. I give you the task of choosing your life's road. It is for you to decide whether the place you are in is your home or prison. Please think about as you are reading these words written here. You're always were supposed to try and think about these things and understand them. You are being imprisoned until this game ends. 
until an air fight decided whether we had the right to live or should we die. Necromantis was both Belzebub's home, and a prison for many of these that were captured by his armies. These were unfortunate, and became his slaves, and were used as labor, or simply for entertainment purposes. They lost even their dignities and lives, but if they were alive long enough they could be freed from their or the land advance. That is if they were smart and ought. The small pipes from Necromantis were drinking water, suppling the ship with water to use as its fuel, for drinking, washing, and other purposes, that were simply unknown for me. The sky was dark on it a huge spaceship was floating which I could see only, because of the fact that I couldn't see any stars. Some lights were flashing down to us, as we were standing on the ground, waiting to be beamed into it. The lake was making some noise as the water was being sucked into the pipes. No it doesn't mean the lake was alive it means that the water was sucking into the pipes and that's what made the noise, a calm wind was blowing through the night giving it a strange feel we were being observed and guarded by monks, these that halted a candle a single handle in their hands. Suddenly a light came upon us and we felt that we were being taken away sucked into the ship. Suddenly a huge flash and I, Lilith, Belzetta, with his servant found ourselves in the ship, in a huge hallway at our passage in which I could see some silhouettes of demon servants of Belzetta, that came to greet us Lord Belzetta started to lead our way, and slowly we marched behind him and saved me, to our destination the commanding center. The interior of the ship reminded a dark temple clouded in darkness with only huge fireplaces on both sides lighting up delicately the darkness. These spots that stored the huge fireplaces were a special ritual sides each one guided by two servants. These spots were being placed on both sides near the walls of this huge corridor. And we walked into the middle of it while the servants standed both on the opposing sides of the pot with their backs to the wall. They all hailed Belzetta, and here Belzetta was the Midas God. This ship was his temple. As we walked into the corridor the ship was taking its pips and slowly going up. We left the corridor and only after we left we could see how huge the spaceship really was. We found ourselves in a huge dark temple that was also a prisoner's camp. We saw slaves transporting different materials to different platforms while of course being created by the guards who guarded the prisoners. None of the Dark Lords cared to look at the slaves, and, as one slave was being dead beat and not even Lilith cared to react Belzetta in fact didn't even notice it all thought the screams that came from the upper platforms were being heard, and despite the distance I was able to see the tragedy that happened above. The ship smelled with blood that smell was something I didn't like. Many people and demons died on the path we ourselves were walking, as the platforms on which we made ourselves away had fresh blood stains next to the old ones nobody even cared to clean that up. Since the platforms we walked on were being made, like prison bars, actually there below I could see prison cells, where prisoners were being locked so they can work for the ship. As I saw below I saw an unending maze of such platform cells, and many slaves that were victims forced to work for their oppressors some of them were being stored so long that they even forgotten how freedom looks like. Others were being tortured by the guards for not obeying orders, or refusing to work in this inhumane conditions this was indeed hell I saw even Ero being raped by two guards just above us on platforms just above our heads she was screaming to the guards and begging for help. But even Lilith didn't react this was Belzebub's spaceship, and she had no right to do anything, because now she and myself were being guests. The guards didn't even stop when they saw us, and both saved me and Belzebub himself were not being bothered. The girl died during the raping and she was thrown down by her oppressions into the deeps, and fallen into some lower platforms, while other slaves were transporting something. Nobody cared to witness the tragedy of this girl, and ironically I was the only silent but bounded to do nothing. I was forbidden to act on my own accord, as I was with Lilith I too had authority over myself now. I feel how humiliating this is to have authority over your actions being taken away, and reduced to be in nothing, but a force to witness as someone other's tragedy. We walked through the platforms and saw how many slaves were working repairing the ship that was their prison and home as well. Some of them forgotten already how it is to live in dignity, were no longer bothered by the fact they were treated as trash. 
I saw another girl that was being raped, but that one silently allowed for it to happen after she was raped. She got some loaf of molded bread, as a reward, and walked away, as if it was nothing as if nothing happened. She became a whore, after so much abuse, and didn't even care about it. Because who would be foolish or not, to try to save her? Even I couldn't do nothing this time I was powerless. Sometimes it's so hard to be a hero and heroism gives nothing. I simply was powerless it was not an excuse, but cold reality. Besides I didn't know that both of the girls deserved to be saved, as I saw only one side of the picture. Someone might easily make a mistake not all prisoners or slaves were innocent, and these innocent that died here were being freed. Belzebub didn't pursue their souls and allow them to reincarnate in another place away from the spaceship. This was hell, Belzebub is the Dark Lord that rules in Hellish Federation this was it. That's why this place was full of Lilith, but was it more shocking to me than what I saw in the gardens? Technically it was the same but also very different. Seeing me troubled Lilith's head came down to my own, and she whispered to me, Clear your mind from any eerie thoughts, forsake emotions. Don't forget the truth plays, or you will go insane and, as she did whisper to me she patted my hair slowly trying to make me forget about the images I was witness to. The truth that everything here is illusion lie even if this is the real world. The truth that pain does not always bring only suffering, but sometimes freedom in the loving arms. Of death our mother that does not ignore anyone's suffering. She comes, and takes us when the time is right, frees us, and allows us to start anew. She was right for everything I was a part in, was indeed a test for me I was being observed by God, and he analyzed how capable I was how much pain suffering I could bear to see and would it make me lose my faith in myself, himself, and the world. Indeed this was the very same test Galamouth failed. That's why we walked on the platforms filled with blood in this prison-like ship where strong were abusing the weak. What would be your reaction if you would suddenly found yourself on Necromatus? If you could hear what I was hearing. These screams, see the slaves walking, and working with all their hopes lost, as they were sometimes here for a billion of years. See dying man in front of you being thrown down just to make way for us. This was indeed a scary sight. What would you do if you were a witness to this? Sometimes being a hero gives you nothing, that's why I'm a monster. Because being a monster usually allows me to help these that cannot be saved by heroes. Who knows maybe someday I'll save them, these slaves, but for now it wasn't my job. For now I couldn't be bothered to do so, because there was something more serious than needed to be dealt with, and that's why I was at the scary place. Walking through these platforms we left them finally, and went into a corridor and stairs, up. We were walking up in the stairs to reach our final destination. Belzebub's commanding center, where we would devise our strategy. Witnessing this however leaves a stain on you, as you realize how useless you are this was what I realized despite my powers I wasn't able to do anything. Now I the mighty blaze master was being the weakest. I couldn't save anyone, I couldn't even decide anything, that's how weak I was. Not being allowed to I simply was not being allowed, and yet I didn't feel it was even an excuse. What should I do? Was I right doing nothing? Or was I simply a coward? Can you please tell me was I being a coward? Then because I didn't do nothing to prevent these tragedies, I allowed the strong to abuse the weak. Does that mean I'm guilty? Am I the same as these guards that raped that girl? I thought of myself as being the same cause I allowed it while not being able to do nothing. Maybe it was a lie. That I didn't help cause Lilith told me not to. No she didn't. So was I afraid. What was the thing I was afraid of? Why didn't I do nothing? I was being afraid of this, that I didn't do nothing. I silently observed these tragedies I allowed these lives to be treated like that yet I was there. I knew what I were there a coward. Yet Lilith didn't despise me for that. She gladly looked at me, but I didn't know why. I felt something strange this disquissing smell of blood was another thing. That was being under able I don't know why but Lilith was very close to me all thought earlier she walked two steps ahead of me I didn't know why. Also surprisingly Lilith talked about me I don't know why thought, I didn't hear all just my name being said by her was she worried thought I was fine, kinda well a bit fine a bit not. Where was I? What happened to me for a while I forgotten about it, darkness did I fall. 
I fall and I stop talking and fallen. I felt I was falling, but what happened? Hey, why did I fall? I don't know, it was dark now, very dark. Nope, I saw lights, three lights. We were in a room somewhere. Lilith was beside me, we reached our destination. When I don't remember how did we reach it? Lilith gently patted my hair, and smiled, why was she smiling at me? Oh there were others and even Belzebub and Zave be looked at me. You don't like blood you? Said Belzebub smirked and expressed, don't worry it happens to everyone, don't strain yourself startled, as I heard these words, and regestered them in my mind, happens. What happened? Where am I? Why am I ground? I shot past the queen who was sitting next to me smiling gently smiling to me, SHH it's okay, you just lost consciousness, for a while, troublesome boy, you're such a child HIHI you fainted caused some blood she giggled, and patted me on the hair, I told you to stop troubling yourself boy, oh my you're such a little kid that wants to play a big role, and villain, or a hero, seeking. Attention being afraid of being left out forgotten, what am I supposed to do with you? She embraced me tightly, am I supposed to take care of you now, troublesome foolish child, I can't believe that guy played such prank on me. Sending to me a person that, thinks of himself as an incredible monster and reality being a simple lost child. God you know how to make me irritated, oh hh she sighted heavily, as she embraced me, and then let it me go. You see Dark Lord, that's exactly why I couldn't leave this one, the spec constantly needs some kind of attention otherwise he does something stupid, a bother, but strangely and not bothered by it little it's explained to Belzebub, making Belzebub smile and laugh even they'd be laughed at, cause for them this situation was very funny. Why am I a pet? I asked surprised wanting to know, why they treated me as someone lower than themselves, despite me being involved in this too. You didn't think you hold the same rank as us? What ignorance, you're only here cause Lilith decided it. You're just her pet, so we have faith that as her servant, you will do everything you can to prove that you're worth of it said Zavebi, as he smirked to me, being amused that I dared to say anything. Worth of it? What are you talking about? In her servant since when? I didn't say anything like that she treats me like her pet, but I do not belong to her, I have no authority over myself I admitted expressing my anger a little bit, by being treated by the Masmerelli Lilith's puppet. Watch your hum, your words are heresy, you are in presence of gods remember that. Zaveva angered by my words expressed it by trying to threaten me to be silent. Wait Zavebi, don't your eyes fool you this pet is something more than just a simple servant is he. What's the catch queen? Why did you allow him to accompany us in the lectic? Belzebub smirked, as he asked Lilith this question. She also smiled and expressed joy, because of the fact this question was being asked. Your wisdom is incredible my lord, yes Blaze is not a simple lost child, you should hear of him he has his own reputation, and is himself very interesting Zavebi has power might rival you. His knowledge might be much more sophisticated, who is he? Well think of it a little bit, Play's master is the witness to the source, and its judge his true authority lies with God, yet his true mission here is to observe us, I realized it once he came into my gardens I knew who was the one, that was sending him I wouldn't allow any angel, to come to my place, could only be approached by a demon, but to be in depths of darkness, and yet to have a hearth clean. Being able to love using darkness, to help others, it's like becoming a villain in order to save people, allowing yourself to take blame for others being despised for you. Isn't it a form of ultimate sacrifice, insane, becoming an insane judge in order to show others that their lives are important? Play's master is a demon and criminal a terrorist he committed many crimes, destabilized many lives just to prove that there's something more important, that there is a path that others might take. Many people found themselves just because he became Thayer the Lion. Many found things that they believed they lost that was impossible to reach. A demon will torture punish, but sometimes people want to be hurted cause being a victim is easier it also makes you think about yourself. All good warriors learn on Thayer mistakes but Blaze Master is unique from one more reason he himself is the exact opposite of Galamouth, a foil. This boy that is on the ground is capable of defeating Galamouth, that's the weapon God has given us, as long as Blaze Master will cause troubles we will be able to seal up Galamouth account of chaos, 
that manipulated things so swiftly that he was able to outdo us in many battles Lilith smirked at Bell's head up, as I realized I wasn't a pet, but in fact a key to seal Galem out for eternity. So our creator didn't abandon us? How generous of him, so Blaze Master is the key to sending Galem out into his final journey. These are great news in these critical moments very well. Then as he said he has no authority over his actions luck these tombs boy bells that have expressed this will on me. But to assume Blaze Master alone can seal Galem out is nigh that only Dark Lords can kill a Dark Lord therefore, while Blaze Master causes troubles and disturbances, we must swiftly defeat the confused enemy with a huge well-organized military offensive, and to prove our might, while giving Blaze Master in all time to find our enemy and confront him, once he messes up with his logical chain we ourselves will become the sphere that cuts through his veins and delivers a final blow to his heart. Bell Zedub made his speech revealing our plans or initial concepts of the battle. The battle that was to come soon. So I was the key to defeating Galamouth. I was an accessory in order for all of this to end in a successful manner. Chapter 17 Mazes of Blood Everything has its place and order. That's how this structured world works. It demands that all that lives knows its place even these that supposedly don't have that should know about this. Though sen it sounds scary well nobody cares. Nobody ever cares about these that have to fight in order to survive because if someone lives an easy life, why should he care? Does it even matter are you related or not? Even marriages fall apart because some people get bored. Sometimes these that could shine are not allowed to because they're not given an all time. I was in Bell's head of spaceship Necromantis observing the dark room, filled with lights from these super high-tech advanced computers and girls with boys sitting on them, and typing different variables these programmists were Bell's head of servants recruited from his blood children, slaves, and these that decided to join him willingly they all worked for the Dark Lord the room was a giant sphere, in which we were residing, and the computers were placed on walls with programmists, who were demons levitating near their computers. They were clean, and Michele dressed in white cloths mostly looking as young adults, or 14 to 26 years, all thought in reality they were much older. We were located in the center where Belzebub was showing something on his holographic map. Explaining in details his complex strategy to which only I was not obligated to listen, cause I would be sent on an individual mission, like a mad dog, that is to make a mess, that was my job. So there was no need for me to take part in that easy conversation. Meanwhile where was I? As always I was lost in my own thoughts, and for a while not in this world I was thinking about this universal truth that everything has its time. There's time to be happy and times when you need to be sad, times for cherishing things and times for regrets, even times for peace and war, and this time it was it was time to go to war, to fight a terrible battle. Meanwhile I started to pay attention to what was happening in front of me as things started to become quite interesting. We should agree that we need an strategy that will encompass all our efforts and streams. Zabi officially proclaimed his point of view encouraged by the fact that all the important gathered including his beloved master paid attention to him he felt so mighty and incredibly powerful now. Yes yes my servant is right we need a concrete plan that will allow us to succeed Lilith observed him and made an evil smirk and all chit chat him waiting for a concrete proposition. Lilith expressed it with a voice that hinted some boredom with the situation. You see the beautiful seductive queen was getting bored with talk that lead nowhere. Hayes is a fatal advisor we need time to devise a strategy that will cover all complexities of this terrible situation Bell's head of expressed while I was getting an impression these high authoritative figures didn't know what to do. Why don't we plan a direct offensive in sectors 67 and 400 if he too they'd be proclaimed very confident of his wisdom. We should center our attention on sectors 23 and J86, near the Joaquin River Lilith six planes showing they are strategic meaning, while I was confused, as of the importance of these sectors, in that kind of situation. It's strange when suddenly numbers and letters are more important than life, it's strange, but somehow something as strange becomes reality we live in a very strange world that makes these kind of strange things and reality. Indeed the sector here is of strategic importance to us my lady Bell Zedub expressed looking at the circle Lilith made showing some mines these were mines that stored some kind of mystical and very precious resource of course I didn't know what was it nobody told me nothing after all. 
That's how it is. If you're not in a certain circle you're bound to be ignored or thrown out and some information are not able for you to know. That's how it's always been. It's how life becomes complex because there are ones that are allowed and others that aren't. I focus more again on the surroundings and how it all seemed to float in the air as if this room was an entirely different world. It was fascinating how this place was different from what I saw. I saw how technology is incredibly compact, advanced, and well-placed order and place, and yet there was some place for chaos in all this structure. The lights created a symphony, and I felt the programmists played and symphony directed by bells that I could hear this music, and I felt that I'm suddenly in some kind of opera house and not in a command center. The lights and darkness took me to a very different place, and I was a very different stage, as I hear this different music, the music created from the surroundings, and the devices turning on and off a true alley magical world a distant past connected with distant future. I had the memory of fields decorated with white and red roses the white roses were above the red and the land is on some building attachment to some sea, and a war from grey photographs it was a distant past. Peace is precious, but there's something more precious than that it's called honor I saw a man standing in front of a gathering in some senate saying that it was my memory from somewhere it was an old grey movie, I wonder who said that? It must have been a very wise person I said it despite the fact that what I said was ignored by the mighty dark lords that were busy discussing their own goals. I returned to the room stand up and started to locate where Gallimouth's tomb was located since a very strong dark energy and unnoticed teleported to where I sensed that energy I left the Dark Lords, in their debate, to fight Galamouth alone. Entered the Dark Temples, and suddenly found myself attacked by Dantalian's forces, they were shooting while hiding in the darkness I entered this deadly trap the fight has begun, suddenly not entirely knowing where am I. I found myself fighting with an enemy that couldn't be seen. As he punched me I fall into the ground, and suddenly felt my back being stabbed by someone I used an electric attack, to paralyze my attackers, and killed them with my laser sword slaughtering them one by one but this was not the end cause as soon as I killed he any invisible attackers Valkyries fallen onto me these bewildered naked women wanted only to feast on my blood I burned them all with my aura, and realized that I were in the maze complex, inside the temples, where Galamouth was imprisoned. I looked around and I saw a complex of caves it was very dark, I concentrated while in order to locate where this dark energy was coming from it was dark and very disturbing, as I looked at the burned corpses of the Valkyries that attacked me it was enemy territory I decided to go into my ghost mode in order to move freely as other Valkyries were feeling the blood of their comrades being spilled. I winked in the direction of the aura through the maze looking very carefully at this ancient prison temple killing Dantalian soldiers one by one making them suffer pain of being killed and not even knowing what's killing you I simply cut at them through with my bare hands they were falling screaming while lying in blood and dying once the blood in them boiled them alive a worthy punishment for these that dear to stand in my way I quickly made my way being merely a dark shadow thieving them as their bullets couldn't hurt me I made them die in death's hair. I materialized myself and slaughtered them making my way through them I was the hunter that was hunting them down while I made my way to my destination killing his pleasant and I really enjoyed it fulling the grounds of this temple with the blood of the soldier cutting them in the darkness I was merciless and killed with the speed of light that's why I called myself the blaze master. They were dying a bloody death. Death is a natural part of living and agony is a part of my job. Whenever I fight him always without mercy, killing, and sometimes raping my victims, you may consider it to be very harsh but in a demon a true monster, after all. So I cut a ember in them, and quickly made my way through this deadly maze. I left a trail of blood and death hair. As I made my way through it. Darkness was always a part of my existence yes I always existed in it being left and forgotten. Back on the platforms I used to live in a world that was covered in eternal darkness, because this world was an utopia, or at least was supposed to serve as an utopia a dream like paradise where people don't die, get old and weak. But of course that was only wishful thinking, because an ideal world is impossible. Greed and evil intentions have always existed everywhere, and of course they too find their way to this high advanced intergalactic utopia. We were able to understand all secrets of the universe with the exception of one thing, 
from where evil does take its way in our hearts. It's a simple logic I told you about plus and evil exists cause otherwise good wouldn't be able to exist that's all. Meanwhile I was attacked by four androids in a dark hallway that was lighted up only by some candles that were hanging on the wall. In place of their hands they had daggers, as one of them launched an attack on me which I evaded very fastly the three started to shoot at me behind my backs the bullets were fat but I was faster able to elude every single one with my speed and technique I sent some lasers to them but they were stronger and started to attack me all four at once. I repelled with a force punch and throwed them all back, and then cutted them all with my laser sword flying above them cutting them as they were all below me making them explode in a spectacular fashion. I then made way to my destination. Walking again in total darkness of which I was so used to and unafraid after what is there to be afraid. What's? So scary can anybody answer me that question? Darkness in reality is nothing so of course there's nothing to be afraid, there's nothing to despise or nothing to run away. But sometimes it's also nothing to love these are the things that I thought about walking through these halls. Nothing to love but also nothing to lose and also nothing to hang on to that's true as well so that's the whole truth about darkness. Darkness means nothing so feeling darkness means feeling nothing. That's exactly how it is this is exactly what Yalemouth felt and because of it he wanted to destroy the world cause he felt nothing and view that nothing is worth to be left alive he wanted to achieve a total destruction and ideal state of nothingness this is what he dreamed of this was his one and only true desire this was it. This was crazy a fight with the speed of light and few moves that could decide about my death or life. I couldn't allow myself to hesitate risking dying I thought I am immortal. I run down walls cutting down the heads of the soldiers that walked on the ground in the sight hallway as they didn't even knew what was going on. Burning them alive and leaving only a bloody stains behind me were rotting corpses. Corpses that were being eaten by flies and worms that gathered and surrounded every single one, consuming them and laying their eggs in them. Meanwhile small armored Vishakles were going into the hallway which I run in lighting up their way with their laser sensors looking for any kind of hint of intrusion they were mission search and destroy they were small. Rectangular tanks with iron cannons the latest trends in evil defense technology manufactured in Dantalian's factories and he had many of them strang LEDs that produced these weapons didn't even knew they would be used in a plot that could erase everyone out from existence the dark armored soldiers that were slowly walking behind the armored vehicles didn't knew about that too not aware that they were protecting the one who wanted to kill them. But why would they care or be interested their orders were simple and not destroy every intruders that will show up just like when they killed the people in that high crater we made contact I sent an electric wave before even the tanks were able to fire making them explode lighting up the darkness as soldiers made their way shooting with their lasers and dying one by one as I came out from the darkness and slowly walked to them and simply sliced them as they surprised. Tried to shot me down with layers I made their lasers go back and hit them wounding them very intensively and then cutting them and killing one by one they were screaming in agony filling the temple with screams and scaring other soldiers as they weren't able to understand what was going on wondering what kind of hideous monster is hiding in that darkness. I was again enjoying myself, as it was much more amusing to me than the blurring debate I described earlier, and again I killed them with the speed of light, as I again left the hallway, and went into my light speed mode trying to get to Dantalian as fast I could in order to prevent this terrible tragedy to happen. I couldn't allow everyone's existence to be erased. I couldn't bear to allow something like that to become reality. That's why I needed to pass the maze with haste to enter it and kill everyone opposing me as soldiers were literally dying not even knowing they're killed it was a sudden and a very terrible death as both soldiers were talking and one of them was pierced through suddenly on the eyes of the others and suddenly the other was pierced uh, and both bloods were boiling inside them killing them instantly. So I was doing it again fighting and creating pain, how interesting. Don't you think? The smell of blood was filling the temple, the same smell that was so disquisting to me when I was on Necromantis here however the killings was being done by myself. The soldiers panicked and shooted everywhere they heard a noise since they knew nothing about their enemies. Isn't it so obvious in order to fight you need to first know with whom you're fighting understand your enemy and make an eye contact? But how can you understand a monster? 
Is that possible? Well no you can't that's the whole idea a monster cannot be easily understood it shouldn't be understood otherwise the monster stops being scary that's how it works. So of course the soldiers didn't knew with whom or what they were fighting that's the best part of it after all. I left the hallway and found myself walking a path that formed a bridge on some kind of cliff I was outside walking on a path and looking at the green sky that was traveled constantly by lighting the caves were red below a long way down and the path small I needed to be careful not to fall down as I looked in the dark deeps and slowly made my way to the other side. The planet was abandoned despite the fact it was suitable to living the environment was poor and degraded. I could hear the storm as suddenly I was attacked by the flying machines that once attacked me on the platforms I quickly rushed to the other side as these flat sharp flying machines were hitting the path and exploding making the path crumbling as I was running on it the machines were trying to hit me of course but I quickly sent some electric shocks destroying some of them as I quickly made my way to the other side. Again entering the dark mazes where I couldn't see anything I went on some stairs going up killing the soldiers that were walking down them. They died quickly as I rushed and passed them ripping them to pieces. It was really a true live massacre that I was performing. The soldiers didn't have any chances. Suddenly a huge explosion rocked and I saw the caves trembling and fell torn. This I realized the maze I was being in was being exploded so I needed to rush through the stairs and leave them before the staircase will collapse and my body will ruin making myself run faster. I went into another dark maze as the stairs behind me collapsed, and everything went in flames I was safe in the dark corridors, and quickly pushed some stone blocking the entrance of corridors. I explored the mazes thoroughly being cautious of any traps that might have been hidden and could interfere with my mission. The darkness of Galamouth started to be clearly felt by me as I made my way to the final destination of this story soon very soon everything will culminate. Rushing in the speed of light I didn't even feel the time passing me minutes or moments were absolute as it was a different kind of sensation, a different kind of feeling to which a different kind of measuring should be used as I saw the world to be blurry looking for where Galamouth's tomb was to be located. I was indeed putting myself in a very different dimension thought physically I was still there the feelings couldn't be translated on paper or in your world's language. Instead I was in an upper level of consciousness, as I used my entire mind to understand where Dantalian was hiding where should I go. I needed to find that place quickly. For the sake of the entire universe, that needed to exist because should the world pay for the disbelief Galamouth had? Was that just? Of course it wasn't, no it was not just. The world had no reason to pay for that there was no reason in making it pay for the disbelief one person had even thought that person suffered greatly there was no reason to erase everybody out of existence that was not just and I the blaze master couldn't accept that. Blaze master's role is to fight these kind of battles to make sure everyone can exist and have equal chance to become what they want that's my mission and my only desire to help others understand what they want, and to do whatever I like, and because of that I too couldn't allow Galamouth to complete his plan I had to fight there was no other options but to fight. This was not the time to hesitate so I rushed using all my powers through walls in this darkness, to make it to arrive just in time to save everybody and myself there was no other option this was the most important battle I would ever fight. The duel that could change the fate of the world and God himself. That's why I needed to play this game. The darkness of nothingness and illusions that bind us to this world make lies. People and demons forget who they are and get trapped in the lies of its own creation. The society the beast that was created in order to help them in reality enslaves them binding to lies. They themselves create falsifying everything even love forgetting its true meaning. They become merely machines not being able to decide about their lives. They became unhappy with them wishing to die. This was the same what happened with Galamouth the very same pain that pushed him in that death payer he just simply was unwilling to believe that despite the evil there is also good because everything has two sides and exists in you all nature that's the truth of this world everyone has good and bad sides and for once he will be remembered in a good manner for others in bad depending on which side they knew him or her the best that's the most universal truth there is. So why didn't Galamouth see his good side was the question for me, and could it be ever answered I still rushed. Finally in a ball of light I entered the room that was the destination of my trip, the dark temple, 
where Galamouth was being putted to rest sensing mind presence Dantalian stopped his prayers, and stood up as I materialized he was slowly going down the steps. The temple was dark filled with some kind of MYSD and columns, that were standing everywhere similar are to the room Willis had I slowly made my way to the man dressed in white suit he was Dantalian he too made his way to myself expressing amusement, that I made it so far, well well you must be the rat, he said, and made a very evil grin, as he was walking towards me, I'm glad we finally get the chance to meet one another Dantalian expressed his false desire. As he slowly walked closer until we were just few feet away from each other, Dantalian my name is Blaze Master, and I came to put an end to this madness I said to him in a very serious tone, as we were being observed by the remaining candles that were Galamouth's guardians, madness what do you mean madness Blaze? They'll tell you about real madness you see madness is when you have nothing to hold on to when you realize that everything you make is us less this is madness. People are living in a false illusion a dreamlike state they call reality this is madness they believe they hopes matter their lives are important right to the very end when they're eaten by some kind of bunch of whores who think they have the right to destroy everything this is true madness that we live in a such an acceptable world allowing these kind of things to happen this is madness dear blaze but I'm trying to put it all back in order Dantalian calmly expressed his maddening desire his crazy ambitions that took over his sanity. I will build a new world utter a new and truly pure society where these lies will no longer have to exist. This is a part of a new era ceremony. Don't believe this liars I'll set up Lilith, Samuel, Maphie so they don't care about our well-being. They don't care about us. No, no, no. We who have powers cannot be morally reduced to being slaves of some bureaucratic figures. No, dear Blaze, we Form the new order we will unite this conflict-stricken world and create an eternal unity we will unbind the chains that enable us to do that we will not be disabled from this the meaning here behind this event is a fundamental matter for us it's a shine of hope for these that are left out from today's world Dantlin enthusiastically proclaimed his plans and desires that filled his head as I was trying to understand what was being said to me and what about these that were killed in your skyscrapers I asked interested in his opinion their sacrifices for our new world order I looked at him with disgust. Hump world order doesn't need sacrifices I proclaimed to him, and so the awaited battle was to begin the fate of the world was in our hands. Chapter 18 Dantalian Standing in front of ourselves looking at each other we were observed by the lights, guardians of Galamouth, that didn't knew what was happening and aware that their fate was decided in this single moment, as we looked at each other with our conflicting opinion. Dantalian was amused that I dared to show up, that there was this courage that allowed me to come here, but in my opinion he didn't understand the situation which he thought was his creation, while in truth he was merely a servant of it. Dantalian was a business man, that always tried to do what was profitable. And for him creating an entire society just for him was a priophyte of idea. How many times were put in that situation, where someone mad wants to create a world over which he would hold authority. Interesting idea they all want to be rulers thought they know nothing about trialing and responsibility for taking lives of others in your hands. Dantalian can deem people working for him to death, yet here he was saying he done it to create a new better world for them. They all did, people that worked in your skyscrapers are dead all of them, together with their dreams and families, you can deem them to die. You said it was a sacrifice. For what? You say you want to create an ideal world? For who? No one but yourself. You say the world is mad, but you yourself made it worse or did you forget that you take responsibility for everyone that worked for you? Don't look at me with that face that tries to tell me that for you the word responsibility means nothing. Your crazy plans don't explain your words have no justification sacrifice wasn't a series so why did they all need to die Dantalian? I asked him once more this terrible question, that was the reason I thought it myself, in this whole affair. He looked at me amused, but also a little bit annoyed by the fact, that this topic was being raised after all, why would he care about some people dying? Why would someone as important as him need to care about something trivial, as that? People die cause they're mortal, after all death is a part of their existence their immortal workforce, that should be exploited, my dear Blaze. Why should that be a problem that few of them died? After all dead to something they themselves cannot avoid or escape, even if they wish that, immortality was given to these that know how to make a good use of it, that know the value of money the one other thing, 
that exists as long as we do our money, the blood of our society that makes it do everything we command the money gives us power. Power to decide about everything plays, and just because we have money we can do everything establish something new, and then again ruin it all over because we have the money, it's the money that allows us to do everything in this world. Dan Talian smiled and looked at me with some kind of pity, as if he was the smartest man alive telling something to a complete moron, I wonder what give Dan Talian so much wisdom to think of himself like that Dan Talian obviously viewed himself to be some kind of god, and you know technically he was right, but you know gods should be responsible for other beings and Dan Talian lacked this kind of responsibility. You sound like an incredible air, but in reality you are simply a selfish coward, you will honestly view human beings as only an workforce. Every single one of them means more than your crazy visions of the so-called new world, and despite the fact I'm not used to playing a heuristic role it'll tell you that every single one of them is worth fighting for, and that's why I'm here I said it answering to the cries of the souls, that were trapped in these candles, and these that died in, that skyscrapers. Dan Talian looked at me seriously annoyed by the fact there was no way to buy my hobby DNs. Unwilling to understand there are demons that can't be buyed by his money, thinking there are more important things in this world than just money of course thinking about these things would be a waste of time for him. Why should someone care about other things than money, after all we lived in a money hungry world actually I could understand why Dantalian was like that, after all this world always promotes that kind of lifestyle, so no wonders people and demons get headaches from reality desiring more and more points just to prove they are more worthier than others. Thinkings that way they will be more adored, or will have much bigger influence, and when they find out it's all a lie, then they want to make a reality at all cost risking awakening a terrible power they wouldn't even be able to control. So you came here to fight Dantalian said this instead looking at me in the manner suggesting that obviously I must be retarded. Who do you think you are? God. Dantalian asked me very angry, and he was becoming very bored with this conversation. The conversation after all didn't go, and he planned I wasn't that stupid to listen to him. The same question to you, do you view yourself as God? I asked Dantalian making him laugh so hardly that made me wonder did and he go more insane than I thought he already was. And what is God in your opinion? Are you totally out of your little mind? There is no God in this entire universe only demons that pretend to be him, these that have money pretend they are gods this is as simple as you see it before you. The whole concept of God is sickening, wake up the only God you'll ever see are the points you get on your credit card, there's nothing more beyond that Dantalian voice his own disbelief in the conception of the world that is not based solely on greed. Look around, if God exists why does he allow existence of these that defy him, why does he allow all this injustice to take place? There is no God and there never will be just an old mad ancient demon pretending to be him every religion that exists in this chaotic universe comes up with its own definition of the so-called might power, the guardian of universe, eternal fire, or, as you call it God. These are all lies created by weak people looking for explanation why they have to suffer an awful attempt at comforting themselves by saying they're tested. Just listen, as it sounds him being tested by the mice power him as that special that him being tested look. But these are morally lies illusions and truth they suffer cause that they roll to work suffer and die otherwise they would be dead already. They are slaves fit for using like that you must agree. That slaves exist just to be exploited I mean common hello I use your little mind Dantalian proclaimed his own wisdom and completely selfish logic ironizing the belief many people had Dantalian tried to explain to me that their beliefs had no value. Of course it made me mad it would make everyone mad he just said that dreams and ideas meant nothing in his perfect world a terrible thing to hear. To live without dreams and ideas, living without religion or culture means living without a soul, it's alive without nothing a true darkness, because then you really feel you live without nothing I wonder how many readers would agree. There is no God. Only money. How blinded can you get, you truly don't get it. Don't you get how much suffering you yourself created. No I think you totally understand what you done don't smile you should cry, this place will be your grave, but before that tell me. Don't you have any regrets? I asked him expecting some humanity from him, regrets are you serious? I have none, tell me what does it even matter for you? 
You are a true punisher why, or wait is it a per above making me confess my sins? How noble of you. Yes you are a true missionary there Dantalian started to mock me, making fun of my attempt at understanding him. Don't mock me okay, I'm trying to make you understand just how mad you really became, you appear to be a smart guy, and why are you doing this? I asked him again this question hoping to get an honest answer, listen this does not get us anywhere. I think we both can agree that by mere talking we both won't achieve nothing Dantalian answered my question and suddenly I was attacked by Tal's and Black Needles the same attack I used to rip off Dantalian soldiers at the laboratory back in his skyscrapers jumping away I was able to avoid being cut backing off far away to the wall of the temple but Dantalian jumped after me and hit the wall as I was able to avoid his punch making him make a huge hole in the wall come now is escaping the only thing you're good at Dantalian asked being a little bit disappointed. Making me send him some lightings at him as I standed near some column, Dantalian took an defensive position and created a huge wind that flowed so hard and made me fall on the column and roll over from it sending me way back. As he slowly walked after me he sent his some powered blades creating them from his hands cutting my face making red blood cover my face. Suddenly he made the entire temple tremble, and stones were flying into my direction hitting me, and causing pain so unbreakable I wasn't able to concentrate to counter it, I felt every single one hitting my legs, hands, head, and every other part of my body I fallen down on the ground, and sent some stock waves along the marble floor making him paralyzed, as I was able to get up and wipe my face, I sended him a power wave that pushed him somewhere far away only to be attacked by the Valkyries that unbeknown to me were gathering on the ceiling and waiting for the time to strike as they sensed blood. One of them jumped on my back and bit in my neck grabbing me in a way that enabled me to move as I felt my blood being slowly sucked by it. I tried to make a move and quickly burned her with my aura as the burn colors fall of me I needed the other three and quickly cut it their heads off as they were sitting next to me waiting for their chance and I thought it my hand on their corpses and burned them all one by one with my power making sure they won't regenerate and attack me later. After that I made my way into the column in maze looking for Dantalian, but before I found him the little tanks the same that attacked me earlier found me first, and I was forced to waste some time playing with them as they were trying to shoot me down I sent an electric wave making them explode. Unknowingly for me I was being observed by an alien who was standing next to me near a column, what a waste you dispatched them so quickly Dantalian smirked and ironically concluded looking and waiting for my reaction. Dantalian was amused with this whole mess he created making me wonder what was he up to. Dantalian didn't use his full power instead mocking me and observing my every move and yet he was Dantalian a dark lord that should be feared so the question was what was the thing he planned. Dantalian looked very amused and he was standing near that grey column standing on grey marble floor in his white suit just as if he was the light that will make this grey world shine which made an interesting illustration to what he said. So what are you up to? I still plan to get a concrete answer from him as I looked in his eyes seeing no empathy for anyone a trait worthy of and Dark Lord. Dark Lords are others blinded by their greed capable of using anyone and throwing them away easily they become like that because of an obsessive lust for money, power and authority. Despite the fact they call themselves gods they rarely deserve that it will sometimes even mocking it. You know I would be nothing without God, and without his mercy so why don't you stop mocking him okay, whether it's his avatar, or his creation the world, or himself don't dare talk about something you don't understand God helps these that need him, and is capable of accepting you and gale a mouth. It's both of you that picked another path as the whole idea is to allow you both to create your own world to write your own story so if you're both unhappy well blame yourself Dantalian cause the world around you is the one you yourself created with your money it's not God's fault and I know he is here I answered Dantalian making him understand his lies he looked at me and smirked again do you know what? You followers of God posses and he the obsession with him you know that? Oh so he's here now doesn't that sound interesting, and what of it? Do you think it does even matter, your god is a creation of multiple religions and sex a device that is used to blind them all well at least I'm not and blind hypocrite, do you know what the world hypocrite means? 
It means a person that lies to himself thought he's not aware of this fact. Yes my dear Blaze this word is a fitting description of yourself. But you know there is a certain aspect of this that I like. The way how they all make money out of this. Sometimes these Dalusians can be profitable. Dantalian mocked me answering my questions not feeling any kind of remorse. Can I tell you something? I asked him politely not wanting to make him mad at least not in this. Short while since I got him to talk with me hoping that perhaps he might stop this all now. Sure talking is the only thing you're good at Dantalian answered still showing his contempt for me. You talk about the world with so much hate and contempt, yet you yourself don't know it hiding behind the walls you yourself create. You are one of those people that have great influence, and yet you blame others for your own mistakes. I think it's a bit pathetic I admitted evilly smirking Dantalian looked at me very curiously. Interested in the message I was trying to deliver but he still did not guess at feeling a bit offended by my remark looking at me in that way making absolutely sure everything goes accordingly to his madmaning scheme. Dantalian's vision of a perfect world consisting of big corporations controlling every single aspect of life, demanding complete obedience to Thayer brands, not liking any kind of originality that was not accepted by the powerful committee the so-called board of directors. The society is based like that there is always a committee consisting of some kind of minority full of business people with aspirations similar to Dantalian's. Wanting to shape the world like that to wipe out future and every single thing that could make us think that perhaps we're being lied to by them. That's exactly why culture is important, because it allows us to see things corporations would love to forget. For example that every single being has its own dignity and the right to live but corporation and the society compromises this law. After all if we couldn't kill other live beings there would be no meat. However compromising it more we allow killings of poor to be made as well just as Dantalian admitted we the society allow them to become slaves we also allow them to die being forgotten. It's because of our ignorance society ignores the fact that strong are beating the weak standing there but not seeing anything. Ignoring cries we ignore a part of ourselves in order to remain labeled as strong and important because important don't care about these that aren't important and allow them to be destroyed cause it's okay. Importance to the world means you're fit to be alive and nurtured by it in its womb. Less important have less luck as they are simply thrown out. Nobody cares this is happening pretending they don't see anything not knowing the criteria is wanting to stay on the good side of it. They're simply overprotective of their positions not wanting to accept that this position is not the only important thing. Doing everything to make sure they will never fall down and despite their all efforts they fall down anyway. They witness how their nightmares become reality and become more desperate to not allow it to happen actually making things more worser and worser. Everything ends in a single moment, just like that their life's careers it's a punishment for not seeing the cries of the weak and abusing them. The role of the punishment is to punish and it's supposed to bring torments to one soul. That's exactly the way it works so of course it dwells in one soul bringing out the things one would like to forget. Making them more intense allowing it to be more painful we the demons are the masters in this so no wonders why are we so disliked. No one likes to be tormented, punished or tested even if it's just. Responsibility is the other word no one in the society likes because what does this unpopular word means? It means that if someone gives his life in our care we should make sure that he won't have to lose it. It means that we're obligated to care for these that have faith in us. This is exactly what this word means but no one likes to be responsible in this world. It's more easier to condemn others to die. It's so simple to use them. So why shall we care when they cry in despair? My mission as Blaze Master is to force the society to care and am allowed to use all means I can. Even if some of them are any Siri well I'm a demon a true monster, and besides this world never give me a reason to stop being who I am so I will choose this path knowing to well what kind of road it is. I will choose to be myself even if Dantalian's vision would be realized making me a scum and an eternal fugitive, that's exactly what I've become in his eyes a mere disquisting criminal, but in the eyes of these that are oppressed by people, like Dantalian, for these are not a criminal and a savior, and because of that, because of their hopes I will walk this path. Because I the blaze master are God's judge, an unmentioned hero. The darkness of eternity and light that shines eternity to things that exist alongside each other. Culmination of all desires. 
God will be the witness of this event, and desires that push these events into fruitation that's how it is, that's how it should be, and that's how it will be. Because we all exist created by God, and are under his observation and obedience. The battle that will shape the whole eternity will be begun once Galamouth will open his eyes as his darkness was filling the temple even I already realized that Dantalion was merely stalling for more time. The darkness was preparing itself to fight the light. Soon very soon everything will begin, and I didn't knew how to stop it. Chapter 19 The Beginning of the End the war has begun in the defense of our world two powerful armies made their debut. In this battlefield the dark necromant is full disguise with rockets falling down to their destinated targets. The seeds of war were being planted in this unholy ground. The greenish skies were lighted up by salps of different kind of ammunition. Thunder was also being heard. Dantalian's army as ordered defended their positions being under attack by an army lead by three dark lords. Dark Lord Belzedop, Dark Queen Lilith, and Dark Lord Zave be a faithful servant to the Dark Lord Belzedop, all that dear to rise will be wiped out. The grounds and the skies were being filled by an armada of spaceships, under the command of the 666 organization that were sending missiles on the temples destroying quite easily outposts held by Dantalian's army there was no mistake an army lead by the three Dark Lords swiftly was defeating their enemies. There wouldn't be no one bold and ought to oppose it and withstand it. The soil that bared no fruit was falling with blood from dead corpses a disastrous price being paid for loyalty to the wrong man. These that were once demons or blinded woman and man became merely corpses in just few minutes. The ancient ruins were slowly being destroyed crumbling and being blown away by missiles Valkyries and soldiers caught in these plasmic explosions had no chance to survive. The armada of spaceships lead by Necromanta slowly made their way closer to the temples blowing away any kind of interference be it enemy robots or simple soldiers thinking they could destroy an enemy war base with just their laser guns and chaotic scramble to just survive has begun as the ships under the Dark Alliance slowly near the temples. Soldiers of the opposing side knew to well what kind of fate awaited them should they be captured by enemy. This was war and its crew might save be leading and our army into the temple slowly walking on the stairs the very same stairs Dantalian was walking made his time to make sure man, woman, demons slaughter man, woman, demons from the other side. There was no mercy to be given to the army that served Dantalian thought the army didn't knew what was being done by their beloved leader they died not knowing it too. For such is fate for these that dare to betray the world. Again simple soldiers paid a price for their leaders blindless, they be without mercy killed and ordered to kill everyone, that served Dantalian agony and this pay were being again heard in this temple. The temple which for many became a graveyard. Slowly walking through the dark corridors the young looking D.A.R. Angel was being a bringer of doom and solitude to these souls in agony. The sounds of falling bombs for the temples, as everything was being destroyed for the sick of the world. Things that were hidden shouldn't be found that's why this military operation was being prepared with special caution back on Necromantis, many men and women that sitted near their computers looking at the monitors were guiding the soldiers lead by they've be giving him details important to survival and victory. The modern warfare of arms and intelligence is strategy to counter all these the aliens. The skies were being filled with smokes coming up from ruins that just moments ago were hitted with plasma bombs making a huge plasmic explosion where air became a toxic fusion joined with heat that was able to cook everything in the range of 145 meters and had energy to blast itself in the range of 732 kilometers from the targeted hit in just few seconds making a spectacle worth watching as it create a blue plasmic bubble before breaking and spilling over slowly to say peering changing into smoke. Letting only ashes to tell their stories to these that might want to listen to them someday. Near the planet's orbit two space jets were in pursuit of a small armor fleet trying to escape from the planet. While the armored fleet was well organized the two jets had more advanced technology at their support and unlimited resources at their disposal. So they neared to the small fleet and shooted it down with the Ryan cannon eluding its attack destroying all the jets enemy had at his disposal. Maneuvering fast in the debris they themselves created using it to mask themselves and attacking from surprise victory was at hand as the enemy jets exploded one by one just as other divisions surprised that they were being attacked. 
Huge battle machines were destroying the small flat ones that attacked me many times making sure the army which was under their protections was not being harmed a true alliance of machines, demons, and humans that worked together to destroy their enemies a cooperation Dantalian's army couldn't count on as his soldiers were panically trying to save their lives and were being cornered just in the very moment they felt a little bit safe. Meanwhile they've be cornered this small division in the temples and ordered his men to throw plasmic granites, and marching onward using the confusion this sudden death created. The soldiers fold the temple mixing themselves between the columns in a way that an soldier shoot in front of him and was shooted from behind by the enemy soldiers. Chaos and confusion smoke fold the paths carved in these ancient caves, but it was no smoke it was a greenish gas that poisoned Antalian soldiers, who were yet again dying in agony. While small robotic spiders made their way to confirm safe passage for the soldiers lead by Zavebi. In the dark sphere like room on Necromantis Shroud and in darkness the programmists were checking all variables and informing Zavebi about the conditions allowing him to make decisions that were optimal for his soldiers. The sounds of battle for the temples making only more confusion and chaos the very same chaos we all already got back assumed the chaos of an unseen death coming from places no one would expect. The hallways were slowly filling with corpses from both sides, blood was everywhere its smell was overwhelming as Valkyries gathered to feast on corpses they too were killed with laser guns joining the corpse piles. A greenish gas filled the dark temple and murdered enemy soldiers, as it was the invisible murder which took my place, Dantalian's men were slowly falling victim to Thayer Master desire death and agony was Thayer fate. More and more vessels landed on the planet, and from it like from some kind of soldiers were harching out and going in pursuit of their enemy hoping there was still someone left to kill. This was a brutal war that knew no remorse, no mercy this was a vendetta for breaking an old rule ancient law that was established by the mighty Dark Lords. Zaveb destroyed some tanks and pursued a Dantalian to the place where I was battling with meanwhile Belzebub and Lilith finally took their first steps on the planet watching on the troops and enjoying the sight of the massacre feasting they rise with all that blood. Everything is going according to our strategy my lady Belzebub admitted fascinated with the smell of blood and the agony that came from the temples. Lilith herself enjoyed the sight thought was a little bit anxious to go in battle. Why are we waiting my lord, let's have some fun, before it's over Lilith expressed her intent to go in battle and kill slaughter, and enjoy the suffering. Indeed these old bones could use some warming up, may I lustiest Queen Belzebub asked in a courtesic manner, please be mud use the Queen Express and Belzebub send it a huge wave on temples while killing Valkyries that were inside. Splendid my lord A.H.H.H. Splendid Lilith congratulated Belzebub, and soon both of the rushed into battle killing the unfortunate Dantalian soldiers, that had an odd bad luck, to meet them, Lilith especially enjoyed the slaughtering of man, as she always hated man, who defile woman loving to make them suffer eternity, Lilith was an ecstasy comparable to the best orgy as ever known be able to kill. Be able to slaughter is what Dark Lords love, because blood, pain, and death pave is what they create. Making up delusions and lies for these poor souls that take God so seriously. These that have no common sense become fair slaves the world is a cruel place, and will use everyone who can't decide about himself these might even perish no one cares, but breaking old laws and trust bounds between Dark Lords is uncommon and cannot be acceptable, such kind of rude behavior will be punished with death. So what is death I feel we discuss this topic forever, but let's begin once more what is it? Death can be reward, but it also can be a punishment depending on the situation. Yes everything is always dependable on the situation. There are good sides and bad sides of different situations and that's how this world works. So the question really is what is the good side of this terrible situation? Is there a good side to it? Well in battle there is always a chance to choose the battle for me as a test as every kind of battle gives me problems that I need to solve that's how my world works it's full of problems I need to resolve so I analyze my decision try to understand it. Looking for anything to use as a key in order to open the doors that are shut it. Once I find as I realize how to resolve my problem battling isn't different you have problems you need to resolve and you need to find a way to do it as simple as that. Everything is as simple as that. This complex world can be a very simple place, if one decide to look at it at a certain angle. 
So the question remains when did this world become so simple that it is as simple as that? The world always seems to be complex well not to worry it's all an illusion the complexity of the world is an illusion more it's a perfect why we ourselves are engulfed in a perfect dreamlike state we exist in and not even know about. We're nothing more than simple players playing our games there's nothing more beyond that or maybe there is. Maybe it's not about what is lied to us that is important but what is true. We are here where we always will be and we're not alone. We live in a world which itself is a m a n i f i s t a t i o n of God instead of looking some here far away we need to only realize that God is already here right where we are in equipments we use, people we talk to, in air we b-r-e-a-b-e and in the food we eat, in the water we drink. Everywhere we know of and even in places we don't know so how can we talk to God it's an ought we do talk that's what matters to you I see the world is God's game and we're all INVTED to planet WTHOMTNE charges. Meanwhile we were standing in FRON of a Stantalian and I when suddenly he had exploded like a balloon filled with water his blood spread everywhere as the most terrifying spectacle was to be gone as in this moment dreadful Lord of Darkness Galamouth was awakening the temple begun to fill with his darkness as all the candles died away the spectacle of the dark horse has begun. The power slowly poured in the remains of Dantalian's body and his flesh as well as the corpses of these that died. Lord Galamouth was reborning himself on my eyes from the parts of flesh and blood of these that had died. The dark sacrifice has fulfilled itself as the temple was being destroyed by the dark whirlpool Galamouth was restoring his presence a scary screech was being here the ground trembled the wall broke away and suddenly the structure of the temple has collapsed to form something that had no structure no shape the anti-god spell was being invocated. Many eyes observed me from that whirlpool, as I sensed a power that was rightfully being feared by the Dark Lords the temple was no longer standing only some kind of plane. I realized it was blood in which I was standing the gruesome spectacle revealed to me the dreadful secret of the wall the floor of blood laid to some kind of stair on which an altar was standing. It was the altar of destruction and behind a person Manashedo was standing he was Lord Galamouth ready to complete his desires the powers of calamity has gathered in this one place in this dark whirlpool of church. The dark Lord Galamouth stands on top of it the darkness and blood were going to him folding him inside and out creating a shape he will use and he was planning to fulfill his evil desires on my eyes. The dark Lord standed like a priest that would celebrate a mass. But this match wouldn't bring celebration of God's present but indeed was supposed to be a program that stops our world function his hands tried reached the heavens in the same gesture many priests use mocking them I could not see his face nor anything more related to him. The blood started to turn gray and go faster to him he was feeding and all the dead that died during this battle the blood seemed to make him stronger and more powerful as his powers rose to an incredible level. I never seen the creature that would be so diabolical and feared in my entire existence this creature who was mocking the actions of a priest was planning to bring two men destruction to this world and these were his prayers he invoked in an unknown to me language red orbs gathered around his head as something was watching this strange figure dark birds flew from everywhere but they were not birds they were morally shadows a bird like beast this was really happening. On my eyes as even I couldn't believe the whole calamity of these events this was no longer normal. The trinity of birds sat on the gala mouth two on his arms and one on his head they have taken their place to witness this horrible struggle between light and darkness this terrible epicentrum of darkness. The blood engulfed myself but the blood did not harm it was as if it was protecting could that be Dantalian and his men these that died realizing their mistake the blood created a safe wall for me keeping me safe in this confrontation. The blood that surrounded me did it from its own will the world around me was going crazy. As the dark mass was taking place the destruction of the world were just moments away the dark figure took his hands higher to the sky resembling the cross. The pain and suffering of the world was in his hands and the birds of Ragnarok were his judges. As I watched this horrific spectacle I myself was shocked to what was going to happen the darkness for the temple and suddenly the dark ray went into heavens and manifested itself in a higher mega civilization now everyone everywhere could see just what was gonna happen. The dark birds surround me and the blood flying from everywhere they wanted to feast on my soul and on my flesh they were making terrible noise telling the souls of these that died to abandon me and allow me to die but the blood did not disappear it stole its ground so the enraven birds attacked the blood 
but it did not disappear, as it couldn't not be destroyed by these angry birds, and his master the birds were flying around me mad, and screeching to have my soul. The soul of the only living person they thought they could break the will of billion of souls. The dark figure joined the attack, and pointed his dark hands towards me trying to break the soul's will. But the souls stand at their ground not afraid of Gallimouth's wrath. They were not afraid to be killed since they were already that Gallimouth couldn't take anything away. And so the Dark Lord looked at the blood not realizing why the blood is simple matter dissuade him. And not wanted to become a part of him he then again took his hands into the skies wanting to realize his dream of total destruction. Everything shaken, and the birds were circling around the blood still attacking still trying to, to eat my soul flesh, and everything else they would eat my dreams, and all the hopes I had they wanted to bring only suffering. The dark figure was standing, and enchanting his prayers in that language words I couldn't understand, as I looked at him trying to understand his motives. But he didn't appear human at all he had nothing of himself only a dark creature that lost itself in his desires he was no longer alive and wished only to die. When I looked at him I felt sorry he was no more just a wicked creature of seized with his darkness suffering cause he could not find any peace he couldn't reset himself and go away. He was stranded in this one desire he viewed so holy that was his obsession and his power that turned him into this an ancient lord as Belzebub said he had to write to call himself a lord he was nothing that's not being able to properly speak. This creature in wrath taunted only to put everything at end. The dark whirlpool got more intense a fire and suddenly everything turned into a hellish fire it started to get unpleasingly hot the dark birds changed into firebirds and still tried to attack me but the blood refused to let them pass. The blood that contained the souls of billions that suffered in the steadfast mass was unwilling to perish just like and so the souls decided to protect me while Galamouth tried to cook making the temperature rise I tried to resist the heat unwilling to give up before I get the chance to confront Galamouth about his motives for hitting life. The dark strings came from what it seemed to be his fingers, and tried to attack the blood, but where Red Pelg once just let he touching it he screamed in fear at that unpleasant contact. The Ferelli eyes were observing myself, and the blood wondering how can I still resist it could not understand this the sky above us or at least something that was supposed to be the sky started to change color and break like glass literally something that reminded glass was falling out of it breaking it was the world its memory parts of the god's consciousness that was falling I realized when one of the fragments almost hit me and saw in it some visions from someone's life. It was my life from before there was a cat, bicycle a town bed. It was my former life before I became place master I saw myself from the times that were already forgotten in my mind. I saw what I was and what hopes I had was it God cheering me up in this hard trial everything around myself and the blood burned it was no longer the template has become something. That standard bay out time and space just like my mansion I no longer knew where I was the blood surrounded me and the dark figure attacked the blood trying to break the souls stop their efforts and make them disappear but they would not disappear. He was aided by the army made from the Ferelli birds that were trying to destroy our union I myself gives them some power so they could stand their ground finally joining the fight. This move and great Gala mouth more as he started to use his all his power but the bloody wall did not disappear instead it became taller and more stronger as more souls joined our struggle Gala mouth screamed trying to scare me and the soul his scream was not that of a human nor a monster it was something that couldn't be described and should be heard but would you survive if you hear something as that scary has scream made my body cold despite they were being so hot because it was a scream that carried an unknown sorrow to the world, a painful desire to end an existence that is so tiring. The world around me was nothing more than fire yet, Lord Galamouth, for some reason couldn't attain his desires. His grand desire to destroy everything couldn't be carried on into God's program cause in reality he was the only one who desired it. Once he realized it he started to scream in the same manner as candles screamed, and suddenly without any warning or explanation everything faded away turned into light, and disintegrated into nothingness. Galamouth realized his error, and stopped existing he defeated himself alone without anyone's intervention. Without any need for me to become this story's hero. Nevertheless my presence was next easy for all of this to end in that kind of manner. It was thanks to my presence that Galamouth realized how futile his attempts were. Everything slowly faded away, 
and started to lead up to another storyline, and another adventure. In this fuse he comes of that terrifying scream Gala Mouth realized that in order to fulfill his desire dying was necessary because in reality the world will not die. Whatever you will do, you can't stop its existence, and so I was teleported by God back to the platforms and aware at that time what happened, remaining participants were removed back to their places, as if nothing happened thought we were having a clear memory at least I had. The memory of one of the strangest battles I ever fought the Mithiri Elm of this universe, and the meaning of life. Chapter 20, The Meaning of Life But was Gala Mouth's decision to disappear right? Was it all right for him to end his sorrowing existence, in the end he did not realize anything. I myself couldn't realize anything as well, as I woke up myself from something that appeared to be a sorrowing dream, and yet I was certain in this what happened was real. I was the witness of the first fall of Gala Mouth. The platforms were my home from times beyond my memories, from moments I already myself cannot recall. It was as if my existence was always tied to this place. This world was something I choose to, making my decision to go this path my entire eternity, as if it was a punishment and yet reward. This was my personal hell and heaven where I got my punishments and rewards my personal sanctuary and hiding place. This place allowed me to understand the importance of God's actions and importance of my own existence. This was my home. The world and its all realities are my home. That's why I never found a need to have a small fraction of this world to call my own. So my story that you're reading now can be interpreted as a presentation of my world and my reality. Yes Gale Mouth and this incident was merely an excuse to show you my own reality. To have you introduced to the laws that work in this world. In the world ruled by God, I just merely wanted to show you that what you perceive as reality is also a part of my world. The world that is ruled by God. Gale Mouth's incident might be viewed by you as something that has no logic, but think in this world in describing you logic works quite differently than what you normally view by it. Cause let me repeat once more, this is a world ruled by God, and he is the creator of the reality you, and I are in. So let's take some time in this chapter, to describe what happened. Okay? You see the manifestation of Gala Mouth was merely a manifestation of someone completely lost, in what he perceived as lies of this world. It's material structure that was shown to him, as being worthless. Yes I asked you once here. What would you do if you would understand that the world you live in is a lie? You never answered okay so think about it. Every single of you might have taken Gallimouth's place, because in reality he is not a single person, but in fact a compilation of sadness and sorrow, people who do not enrich and their souls have. You see Gallimouth only become the embodiment for the sorrow, that's all. He allowed his body and soul to sink in griefs and regrets created by the material world the anger of being used and thrown away, the insecurity created by the loss that do not protect the lack of prosperity despite one's effort, education that does not grant any jobs, the society that manipulates and plays with people and demons creating rules, laws, special procedures that mock everyone in their ordinary lives, and of course the lack of responsibility in these that create these rules and special procedures were the things that ultimately created Gale Mouth of course learning it fully had its own tool as well. It's like constantly spitting in one's face, let's face it someday they're gonna snap and want to kill the one spitting them. But it's interesting is it just to protect the one spitting and not the ones being spit to death. Whether it's a big world called Mega Civilization, or a tiny world called Earth we still live in the same worlds, we all have special social organizations that say they will protect everybody. They have beautiful statutes, great letters, that proclaim how everybody has dignity and free rights, but when it comes to solve real problems, they are unwilling. The procedures that muck the victim of sex abuse putting her, or forcing her to stand on the same side, as the one who abused her. HMM so that's what protection means? She should be now put in court cause she was a victim? I didn't know it was a criminal offense but having the abuser to stand on the same side as the victim, now that interesting. I guess the court should arrest them both. It will actually decrease the number of sex offenders. What girl will want to go to court after being abused just so she could be mocked by people who are to defend her or threatening is good as well? Instead of truth let's create lies, 
that can be sold to big media corporation to the system of corporate liars and whores. I think it's a fizzing description as the actions of some social institutions don't serve to protect anyone. But if that is the case, then what is it that they serve for? Could Galamouth's birth be avoided if we all earned responsibility for our actions? Of course I can only criticize you now after I give you an account of my own actions. Of course you can criticize me as well. That's what's called a debate. As I'm not a citizen of your world, my truth won't be noticed by the leaders who rule you, cause they will view my book as something that it's not worth their retention. After all we're talking about a strange story written by someone who views himself as a demon. People will think it was written by some kind of madman. But funny thing, I never considered myself completely sane. Yes, I'm an insane demon trying to confront the world of sane humans. Let's see how long I can last, okay? Or maybe it will create an countermeasure where all leaders of this world suddenly start to do what they promise they will. Now isn't that scary? This book is a heresy for forcing powerful leaders to do that. Yes, it should be putted on a blacklist. I heard Earth had such a device once where all the smart books were putted and you could burn all these at the year to read them. Now I wonder how many of our readers that hold high positions and are disquisite by these writings would jump in for an occasion to have these smart authors disintegrate in fire. Being a demon putted in the world out by angels doesn't that put me in danger. So what do you think? I yet again provost this question, knowing too well there is no possibility to answer me how can you answer to a book filled with letters. I know this, and yet I force these questions on you. I can only imagine how annoyed you are. But let's make things interesting there are few pages left, and I will use them all. To say what I want, and have to say. Because I the Blaze Master am on a mission to tell you a message and am simply using one of the most strangest and interesting incidents I was ever involved in as an excuse. The question is, should Galamouth die? Or maybe we should die for making him what he was? Yes he was our creation. This a mind-blowing conclusion I bet. To say that you're the reader is responsible for Galamouth's obsession, isn't that true? Maybe it simply means I have no respect for you who read this. Maybe I'm a demon a true monster that is not afraid to say what is needed to be said, and I'm gonna make my point even if you close the book now, it still will be here on its pages. My truth and views from my perspective that are my very one, and yet I still insist on sharing them with you. Life is all about understanding who are we and living so we won't have any regrets. It shouldn't be obstructed by procedures and their creators, who obviously, at least in my demonic opinion have gone insane. We should be able to understand what true love and happiness means, instead of creating symbols and merchandise we want to sell to the love-hungry and happiness-willing people, and yet the big corporations, like the AZ way out. So what do you think about this whole incident? What was the world you saw from my descriptions? Was it worth your time? Well your journey with me is coming to an end. I will exist in my world and you will go back to yours for now it was the only place our different views could meet, thought probably our selves cannot meet, and yet if you could talk with me? What would you ask? Would you praise me? Course me? Or maybe use this opportunity to ask the real important question. HMMMMMMMM what is the important question? Come on figure it out. From ancient times people look in skies searching for gods, believing them to be something more worthy than themselves. Yet gods just, as all human leaders have many faults we all have, they can have a big ego, and too much pride. They can be dumb and unwilling to hear our cries, they just as human leaders can simply abandon us for dead, but they cannot understand why we persist in surviving, and believing our lives matter. The darkness they engulf themselves makes them blind to the things that are our happiness. These that lock themselves are unwilling to open their heaths afraid of being ridiculed by the world they themselves create and so they live far away with their might, not being able to understand why are they still unhappy. Galamouth was such God, and all he really desired was to just be happy. But he himself could not understand what happiness means, and therefore he locked himself in the illusions he himself created, trapping himself in the grave of hatred he himself created, and that's how he became the creature that I saw back in the temples. 
The story of Gala Mouth is a sad story, of falling so low that they can't get up by themselves unable to accept anyone's help they want to die. Gala Mouth was once a man leading a normal life, when he discovered a power that was unlike other. Realizing the truth he viewed it as the most horrible lie ever made, and yet the life we share is not a lie. The bound we share with this world by being its part is not a lie, cause we're still are here, we exist despite all, and we're the ones writing the stories of our life. We ourselves will decide what kind of path we will take, and the system nor others cannot obstruct us as they or cries will mean nothing more. We shouldn't be enslaved by others' stupidity and refusal to believe what is the truth. We all should grasp our lives in our hands trying to do what we want and live in a way we can be happy. People, demons, or angels are not born to be slaves, but to be happy, and we should make these that do not understand it, understand it. Because if you believe in yourself you can create a quite different world around you. One that is more happier than it seems. Galamouth didn't understand that he felt that he must destroy everything seeing only bad things. But the souls were opposed to that desire, and so they defied the god Galamouth thought he was. They defied Galamouth's reasoning for destroying all life. That's what really happened in the short while of our confrontation. The battle of the reality is what you should call that confrontation. The confrontation of realities and conflicting desires a short-lived war of souls that was fought just a while ago was now over, and so I opened my eyes. To the music coming from huge billboards where TV programming was shown, I was back at Mega Civilization listening to this happy music, trying to understand what happened. Was it all a dream, or was it reality the green grass was below me, the same one I used as food from time to time? Above me stars were shining and in front of me lights from different houses, shops, and other places, the lights of this futuristic metropoly. People and demons were talking minding their business just as it was in the visioning, they walked to their destination passing me laying below a tree. They didn't even notice me above spaceships were going to their destinations as if nothing happened. Of course the citizens of this cosmic metropoly just like all living everywhere else didn't know what has just transpired. Busy with their normal lives, how could they understand? They were mere steps away from this appearing completely. A week has passed since I started this journey, and in a week it all ended. It was already over, Gamut disappearing leaving this world. Perhaps now he would learn something about himself. The song was being played from above loudly thought no one was bothered by it in the place everyone talks all the time, and here there is no night and day just eternal darkness brightened up by some lights that always shine here. The darkness of the universe and the created lights were a fitting description. This world was an emotional state of a poet playing its song, as I stand it up and change my perception of it making my way into another undescribed destination I rejoined this society of travels people that go somewhere. Looking at this civilization with my eyes, looking at its stairs and its ancient construction, futuristic utopia that might never be realized was in fact my home. The path which I shared with millions walking the same roads all over and over and above me spaceships billions of them going in quiz. A true celebration of life, happiness and joy. The electronic music, children playing with their cell communicators and the television that broadcasted at the same time in this place and in people's homes all thought no one knew about the things that happened in this week. I knew these things and I know it all, this is the knowledge that was being shared with you. The darkness and light exist near each other it's our choice to choose the path we want to go. The media of this world didn't mention Galamouth but described Bell's head of visit Lilith and the pan love commentators discussed its political meaning thought in reality they knew nothing about what happened. For me it was however an evidence that something did happen and as always I was a part of it. The one who was allowed to take parts in these events, and to fight for the world as that is my role the one, who is known as Blaze Master. Life went as us you will, not bothered by the things, that happened to me during this week. Just as if this, week didn't even exist. My pursuit of the hidden mystery of the universe. For which people and demons working in Dantelian skyscrapers were sacrificed, was now over. The knowledge of the dark sacrifice made up to this point. The loss of life provided Galamouth with an sorrow and pain to allow him to reconstruct himself once more. 
However the souls were not being obedient and not as to die in order to fulfill his evil ambitions. Even Dantelion had something he wanted to accomplish in this world, and despite the fact he betrayed the Dark Lords, he too was merely a victim of the darkness, that intoxicated his body soul and mind, making him merely a puppet of Gala Mouth's will. This puppet however had a mind of its own, and was ready to defy Gala Mouth's ambitions. Dantelion too didn't desire to die, he just wanted to create a better world for himself, thought he used idiotic means. Tempering with an ancient dark power brought his doom but even after dying he was able to atone for his sins, helping fighting a battle on the appropriate side. Once he lost everything Dantelion understood the true value of life and why it should be protected, and that's why he joined the souls in that wall created out of blood. Despite supposedly being Morelli Gollumouth's food, they were able to organize resistance to Gollumouth's will, and it's them who really defeated the Dark Lord. No one else, Gollumouth was defeated by these who died cause of him, in a sacrifice that brought him back to life. That's why he screamed, and couldn't do nothing, even thought he was aided by his Ragnarok birds. The battle was already lost for him, in the moment it begun. The world's will to survive was more powerful, powered by these that were unaware of what was happening, not knowing, you two took part, in this battle, and helped to defeat Galamouth, all thought you were also the ones who created him in the first place. What happened to him, was the one thing nobody knew, was he trapped again in some graves by the Dark Lords. Did he finally die, and will reborn, as a new being? Is he hiding? Galamouth's death was obviously a fact in this reality, and there was no sign, no evidence he could survive, but hey what did I know at that time except the fact my role was over? Was there anything else for me to be known? I merely watched the stars, shining above in this eternal darkness these stars were younger than me and will die sooner. I am the being that exists all eternity, while some disappear, or are replaced I still belong to this one place, that is everywhere. As I walked through that path that was shared with others even I realized this journey was now over. What else to do, find myself something new observing, and looking around I was hunting for my new job. Epilogue Everything has its beginnings and ends, something is being born, and then again, far away something dies that's how things are in this world so of course it's no surprise that the story came to an end. There should be nothing more to say, than why do I annoy you with this? while letters that you still did and Trey are still lying written on these pages made from paper. Why did I persist in writing this story onto that paper? What was my reasoning that persuaded me to tell you about this story? That has nothing to do with you? Reading it won't change anything, or is this sentence not true? Galamouth wanted death and destruction, and it was granted at least for him, he died destroying himself it was now over. The story is already over and yet, who am I the person who writes these things to you? What's my motivation for doing it? Do I even have something that motivates me into doing this? From ancient times, people always write books, people, and demons write books that try to tell something to these that read them, and for this these books are being burnt and labeled as being harmful or inappropriate. Books are not allowed to be read cause some that hold authorities are afraid of losing it cause of few letters that confront the lies they make. Everything is a lie and illusion made by the system, that tries to play with our lives, making these that think insane. The system always tries to be viewed as the big brother, a being that protects us while instead this is morally an irony, the big brother does not protect anyone thought he sees even these letters, that I write in my books. Is he afraid of the demon, that might went insane, and decided to write some truth? Is that scary? Demon should try steal souls, condemn people to hell, and not tell them the truth. Indeed demon, that will tell the truth is more scarier than the one that will eat you. Atlas the system wishes to make these demons like that and sometimes I allow myself to become something like that. The big brother tries to take place of God, he will never become God despite how much he tries. The whole truth of this writings can be summarized in one sentence, money will never become God. However in truth no one can live without it, if he insists in existing in the society, he should remember that money is its blood. Money however shouldn't be worshipped like God, money is just a tool. The truth can never be protected by a lie, but sometimes lies can buy you some bread, that's why people and demons will outweigh go for lies, that are profitable. 
and can buy things. People and demons want only to survive, so there's nothing new in this revelation, so why did I put it here? I'm curious are you annoyed that I still write thought it seems I have nothing more to say. But you see I have to end this in a proper way, complete abstraction of forms that are constructed, or supposed to be constructed in a certain way. But the text is supposed to be an abstraction written in a way that tells you nothing a waste of time. But then some of your time can be wasted soon everything ends, and no words will be written in this form. Perhaps they'll create another form that will tell you something new about myself, or perhaps gale a mouth as we do not know some things. We know nothing, but maybe we received all necessary information, but cannot understand the things we were given. Or maybe perhaps we don't want to understand the reality we're so engulfed in because we're afraid of it. The reality that is living its life goes into every aspects of our lives. By a simple change we change everything, and yet we should pursue that change in order to become something new make things happen that should be our desire. Whatever we want should be important to us despite that we live in a world that creates other importances throwing us away and distracting us from pursuing things we truly desire. Big Brother wants to for us these things we desire. Isn't it something that you should find hilarious that we surround ourselves with people, demons and institutions which goal seems to be directly obstructing us in reaching things we desire? Why must society and its hilarious regulations obstruct us? Why numbers are more important than people? Why we allow ourselves to be treated like that? We honestly believe that if we survive the happiness will come to us maybe it's time we stop and think about it. It's time to stop believing the lies told to us by big corporations or all by these that serve the big brother. No more should we be blind for other people suffering. And yet why do I feel these great ideas will remain written here and not understood by others? Why can't we change? and abandon the society. Cause without it we couldn't organize and build anything we're too lazy to appreciate happiness and true freedom that's why we will always allow ourselves to be locked in cages created by these that lead to us but these that create places to our survival can also take away these places and condemn us to death. As for them our lives do not matter were merely serial numbers on a plastic plate we were HMM all thought I us you will steal my plates and numerous from people and demons I killed briefly assuming there's identity if needed. Because I myself am not catalogized anywhere, I do not own a number on a plate because Blaze Master is a wanted criminal. When checked I show the numbers of someone else or kill the checking ones but even so they still perform these checkings despite the fact they might die. I was not bothered by anything of sorts now that I walked, I was merely lost in thoughts. These thoughts I described you here was what I thought about as I made my way through this futuristic and immortal metropoly the sign of the society that never dies. The society that is ruled by God and yet still defies him. We want to embrace him and his knowledge, yet we find is not so profitable. And turn away. Liars we are than we lay the God. We tell him we need him, and yet we turn away when he needs us not noticing his cries. God is a being that is abandoned by these that were created by him, and so God sends his signs in hopes one day someone might notice him, and try saying few nice words asking him, how are you for instance? Only few barely notice his existence his real self that is around us and watches for all eternity. Eternity is a long time waiting for few words directed to him for all eternity is a painful existence. So he creates distractions that distract us making noticeable his actions, but not himself we are not so powerful to notice him cause we have minds clouded with forms and shapes, and yet his existence does not need any form, nor any shape he can control them all while making sure his reality remains unharmed. This is who is he, and this is who are we. We're a part of him as we exist in the world he himself created, and yet we are not him literally. Were the result of the algorithms he inputted a creation of fusions, static, and shock first was the impulse, and the rest made history. In one moment dimensions and time were created as things got an older and trials have gone in the right way, and in the wrong way. In one reality there was something, and in another there was nothing, and therefore, plus something, and were created. Two realities that created first dimensions. Many billions of eons or even eons of billions passed, and the first signs of life were created, 
Many more billions passed and life evolved and society started to be born, and after many eons again we reached this level. We made a giant leap into the darkness, that created us, finally reaching this times where cities exist in the darkness of the universe, and nobody is bothered by it. Not many people remember other times, and these that remember are usually listened by few and so I know this message from a far away place will reach only few. I hope this knowledge which was given to you from the witness living Bayound stars can become useful for you. I'm glad you took part in this journey and you got as far as did now it's time to say farewell and see you next time. Best regards Blaze Master the Count of Chaos living in Mega Civilization.